Chapter 701, Luminous Judgment Although a master-level monster had appeared in the crowd of monsters, Jiang Fei did not dare to use the dragon's bane anymore. There were simply too many small monsters around. If one of the smarter monsters picked the dragon's bane up and fired it at Jiang Fei, he would not be able to survive the attack. Even without the dragon's bane, Jiang Fei would be able to easily kill a master-level monster. After getting rid of the small monsters, Jiang Fei began attacking the master-level monster. After signing multiple love contracts, the pizzazz skill not only boosted Jiang Fei's attack speed, but also his movement speed. Therefore, Jiang Fei could shoot while moving backward at the same time and he was still nearly as fast as most bandits at their full speed. After two minutes, the master level monster was knocked down by Jiang Fei. Unfortunately, these monsters only gave experience points but not equipment. After approximately 20 minutes, Jiang Fei suddenly heard some noise from behind him while he was still attacking monsters. D asterisk M in. There's an invisible monster sneaking up on us, hit it. Block it, everyone, be careful, it's an assault. Hunters, use your light bullets. Zoom, as the light bullets were fired, around 50 invisible advanced elite monsters appeared before Billy Boy and the rest. These small monsters had ignored Jiang Fei and snuck around him to attack the main engineer Moreland. Fortunately, Billy Boy and the rest had a lot of battle experience. They had set up traps at important locations. Therefore, these assaulting monsters were discovered as soon as they got close. With the effects from the light bullets, the invisible advance elite monsters instantly lost their disguise. Meanwhile, Billy Boy and the rest began to attack these advanced elite monsters. Although the monsters had slightly higher levels and were somewhat stronger than normal elite monsters, there were only 50 of them. With four against one on average, Billy Boy and the rest could still handle these monsters. Phew, Jiang Fei turned around to glance at the situation behind him. After realizing Billy Boy and the rest had everything under control with the assaulting monsters, he resumed attacking the monsters in front of him. As time went on, the monsters approaching Jiang Fei became stronger and stronger. Billy Boy and the others were also no longer lazing around. Invisible monsters would sneak up on them at intervals. A few waves of monsters at a time. The battle became increasingly tougher. As the monster's capabilities increased, Billy Boy started losing some of his members. A few of the warriors and knights were killed by the small monsters as they did not recover their health points in time. After all, they were a group of PvP players. Although these battle-type warriors and knights had a lot of health points, they had very poor defense. It was a difficult task for them to become tankers. In terms of their defense attributes, they were much weaker than the professional tankers. Fortunately, the assaulting monsters did not appear in every single wave. They would only appear once after Jiang Fei had cleared four or five waves. This gave the clerics time to resurrect their dead members and ensure that Billy Boy and the rest maintained their battle power. However, it was not a sustainable method. After each fight, Billy Boy and the rest would end up in smaller and smaller numbers. It would not be long before they were completely wiped out. Not only did the pressure on Billy Boy's side increase, Jiang Fei was also feeling overwhelmed by the sheer amount of small monsters with stronger capabilities. When there was only one hour of the battle left, Jiang Fei was already facing 500 advanced elite monsters and 18 leader level monsters. Although there was still only one master level monster, it was level 80 and had also been increased from beginner master to intermediate master. At this point, Jiang Fei could no longer keep up with the rate at which the monsters respawned. These monster waves did not appear according to the rate at which Jiang Fei killed them. Instead, the waves followed a fixed schedule and would respawn accordingly. Therefore, Jiang Fei was soon surrounded by three waves of monsters. A thousand small monsters surrounded Jiang Fei. While most of them could only stare blankly at Jiang Fei as they could not reach him due to their limited attack range, the monsters further away from Jiang Fei gradually lost aggro on him and instead charged toward the drilling machine. D asterisk M in. This can't be. Jiang Fei panicked. If a few hundred small monsters charged toward Billy Boy and the rest, 
coupled with a wave of assaulting monsters, they would all die. Malicious Amplification Luminous Judgment In the moment of such emergency, Jiang Fei activated the strongest skill from his righteous hand equipment set. Luminous Judgment Summons a holy light to attack all enemies in a 500-meter radius around you. Deals 50% of your health points as damage every second for 10 seconds. Cooldown time is 6 hours. Guided skill cannot be used under invincible state. With malicious amplification, luminous judgment's damage was doubled. Jiang Fei was able to deal 100% of his health points as damage at every second. In total, 10 seconds allowed him to deal nearly 1,880,000 damage to the group of monsters. This was Jiang Fei's only AoE skill. With his high health points and malicious amplification, the output of the skill was not any weaker than the seal curse spell. After activating the skill, Jiang Fei knelt on knee. He held his right hand to his chest while his left hand was pressed on the ground. A holy light engulfed Jiang Fei and then shot toward the sky. In the next instant, the piercing light expanded above Jiang Fei's head. Beams of light started blasting at the small monsters surrounding Jiang Fei. Every single light beam dealt around 180,000 to the monsters which affected the monsters significantly. Although the small monsters did not stop attacking Jiang Fei, he had purposefully manipulated them so that only the normal elite monsters surrounded him. The stronger monsters were all pushed further away and could not reach Jiang Fei at all. As for the monsters who were able to attack Jiang Fei, they were of much lower levels. That, coupled with Jiang Fei's high defense, meant that none of the monsters could injure Jiang Fei significantly. As such, Jiang Fei was able to unleash his ultimate skill without much concern. Such guided magic spells normally could not be used without proper defense. However, as Jiang Fei had the Cauldron of Spirit, the 100,000 spirit points allowed him to recover health points at a very high rate. Therefore, as long as Jiang Fei was not killed in one hit, his health points would fully recover instantly. That was why he could cast his spell without a care for the damage he received. After two seconds, the small monsters started to die. After all, some of these small monsters had already been attacked by Jiang Fei and did not have a lot of health points left. These monsters died after receiving two hits from the Holy Light. Once Jiang Fei's ultimate skill had been activated for five seconds, the small monsters started dying in large numbers. At the end of the 10 seconds of guided attacks from Luminous Judgment, nearly 2,000 of the small monsters around him had died. The only two monsters remaining were two master level monsters. Come on! It's your turn now! Jiang Fei was not very concerned about the two master level monsters. Based on his capabilities, he could even fight six master level monsters simultaneously. He was forced to use his ultimate skill earlier because a large number of small monsters were moving directly toward Billy Boy and the drilling machine. Chapter 702, Akatsiri's Abilities, D Asterisk MN Guild Master, what kind of skill is that? Why is it so much stronger than my seal curse spell? Little Rain exclaimed when he saw Jiang Fei's ultimate skill. Clearly, he had been caught off guard by Jiang Fei's ultimate skill. Little Rain was not the only one who responded that way. They were all flabbergasted by Jiang Fei's sudden ultimate skill. It's the set effect of my equipment. Jiang Fei answered while he attacked the two master level monsters. That's wicked. Little Rain murmured. Although he had the seal curse spell, the five minute casting time was very annoying. Moreover, he would not be able to move while he casted the spell which made him very vulnerable. It was incomparable to Jiang Fei's skill which could be activated at any time. However, Little Rain was not aware that Jiang Fei's ultimate skill had a six hour cooldown time. Although Little Rain's Seal Curse spell had a five minute casting time, it could be used consecutively as long as he had sufficient mana points. Therefore, both of the skills had their own advantages and drawbacks. Under Jiang Fei's Barrage of Arrows, the two master level monsters were killed one after the other. After receiving yet another huge sum of experience points, a few players in the group had leveled up. The tens of thousands of experience points meant very little to Jiang Fei. 
However, those were large sums to the players at level 67 or level 68. Although only a small group of them leveled up, the remaining players were very close to advancing to the next level. I hope more of these monsters appear. I wish we could do this for a few more hours. Billy Boy said and laughed. Screw me! If we were to do this for a few more hours, I think it would be the monsters wiping us out instead. Jiang Fei rolled his eyes. After killing the two master level monsters, Jiang Fei could finally take a breather. After all, Jiang Fei had very quickly cleared all of the small monsters with his ultimate skill within 10 seconds. Therefore, there was still some time before the next wave of small monsters appeared. After five minutes, a new wave of monsters showed up. However, this time, there were very few of them. In total, there were six of them, but all of them were Lord level monsters. Bulsh Asterisk T. Is this a joke? How could this quest possibly be completed? Billy Boy and the rest were dumbfounded. Six Lord level monsters could not possibly be defeated by a group of 1,000 players, let alone 200. Continue to protect the target. Prevent the assaulting monsters from sneaking up on him. Leave these monsters to me. Jiang Fei nodded. This level of difficulty was what he was prepared for. The waves of monsters earlier were far too easy for him which only made him feel more insecure. Darn Nephilim, how dare you ruin our plan? A level 85 advanced lord said. He was dressed like a god's apostle from the Luminous Vatican. Verger Glider. It's you, you evil be asterisk starred. Although they were far apart, one of the monsters immediately recognized who Jiang Fei was. What? Verger Glider? Kill him! The god's apostle immediately became furious when he heard Verger Glider's name. Although Verger Glider was a well-known individual in the Dark Faction, most of the people who knew him were players. Only the Nephilim NPCs were familiar with him in the Dark Faction. Most of the other races like the Beastmen race, Spectre race, and Dark Elves did not know Jiang Fei very well. On the contrary, although many of the Light Faction players knew about Verger Glider, Jiang Fei was not as famous due to the greater number of popular players in the Light Faction as compared to the Dark Faction. However, in the eyes of the Light Faction, Verger Glider was an infamous person whose name had nearly become the unspeakable. Mentioning his name alone was enough to aggravate the people in the Light Faction. Jiang Fei had committed nearly all of the imaginable crimes, including wooing the saint, stealing from the Pope's tomb, hijacking the Moon God's bastard son, as well as going against the Divine Light God. Therefore, whenever Verger Glider's name was mentioned, the people from the Light Faction would only respond with three words, Kill. Kill. Kill, this is tough, Jiang Fei said as he examined his opponents. Out of the six lords, none of them were females. This meant not a single one of them would show Jiang Fei any mercy. Although Jiang Fei was confident in fighting against four of them, he did not think he could take on six professions which complemented each other. Akut series, stop watching the show. Help me out here. Jiang Fei finally decided to let Akut series help out. Akut series and Isabella were complete opposites. While Isabella was definitely an attacker armed with skills to kill, Akut series' attack power was not even close to normal lords. As an intermediate overlord, Akut series' skills were all disabling skills. Most of them were even single target skills. Therefore, Jiang Fei did not let Akut series help out earlier. She would not have been able to help much when faced with thousands of enemies. How many of them do you think you can handle? Jiang Fei asked. Two or three. If I'm lucky, perhaps five. Akut series laughed. Oh? Really? Jiang Fei was stunned. Akut series was far more confident than he had expected. That does not depend on me, but him. Akut series pointed her finger at God's apostle. It depends on him? Jiang Fei was confused. That's right. I can only control one opponent at a time. If he is strong enough, I can make him kill the other five. Akut series said and laughed. Oh? Give it a go, then. 
Jiang Fei was overjoyed. Originally, he had thought that Akat series could only control enemies by making them lose their consciousness. He did not expect that she would be able to make the enemy fight his own teammates. All right. I'm going now. Akat series looked at Jiang Fei flirtatiously as she disappeared in an instant. Kill Verger Glider. Don't let him get away. At the same time, the six lords started charging toward Jiang Fei. He he, right then, God's apostle could hear a flatarcious giggle next to him. The hidden Akat series suddenly appeared next to God's apostle. Someone's sneaking up on us. God's apostle responded quickly. However, unfortunately, he was faced with an intermediate overlord. Do you think him pretty? Akat series asked God's apostle in a flirty tone whilst blowing him a flying kiss. A visible mark of a red lip could be seen flying toward God's apostle and entering his body. Pretty! Very pretty, the serious-looking God's apostle's face was suddenly filled with admiration. Kill them all! Akat series voice turned cool immediately after she had succeeded at controlling God's apostle. As Akat series had completed her mission, she went back into hiding as if she had never appeared. Her appearance and disappearance occurred in a single instant which meant that the other five enemies were not even aware of what had happened. I will fight for you, my lady. Although Akat series had disappeared, God's apostle had been charmed. His eyes turned blood red as he summoned a holy sword and struck the luminous priestess next to him. In an instant, the defenseless luminous priestess was suddenly struck by her own boss. The teammates' betrayal had left the other members in shock. They had no idea what had happened to their boss, God's Apostle. Chapter 703, Angel of Revenge, You All Deserve to Die The God's Apostle who had been charmed by Akat series had bloodshot eyes. He did not care about his teammates as he started gathering light energy for his next attack to kill the luminous priestess he had just assaulted. Boss, are you crazy? The warrior on the team stood in front of God's apostle and interrupted his casting. You ought to die as well. Although the charm the God's apostle's casting was interrupted, he was not injured as the warrior did not intend to hurt him. However, as the warrior had interrupted his casting, the God's apostle's aggro was shifted unto the warrior. The God's apostle whom Akat series charmed was similar to the light-based magician. However, unlike other light-based classes, the God's Apostle did not have any healing or supporting skills. Despite that, their attack power was not any lesser than the craziest fire-based magicians. Big Boss has gone mad. Let's suppress him first. One of the teammates called out. I will go against Verger Glider. The rest of you can help out over there. As the assassin did not have any disabling skills and had too high attack power, he did not bother trying to counter the charm god's apostle. Instead, he charged right at Jiang Fei. D asterisk him in. No wonder this girl has the succubus blood. She uses her beauty for evil. Jiang Fei was amazed by how Akat series had managed to keep five of his opponents busy in an instant. As the god's apostle had the highest level, his team members had to work together to suppress him. Otherwise, they might even be killed by him. The assassin was the only one who charged toward Jiang Fei. For Jiang Fei, this was a golden opportunity. After all, killing a lord was only something that required two minutes of Jiang Fei's time. Shuffle! The assassin activated his invisibility state before entering Jiang Fei's range of fire. Bang! In the next second, the assassin appeared behind Jiang Fei and attacked him. Minus 75,286, critical hit, assassins were indeed the class with the most explosive damage output. The first attack after entering the invisibility state was a guaranteed critical hit. Therefore, the assassin was able to reduce Jiang Fei's health points by one third. Great, you are out now. Jiang Fei smiled. In the past, Jiang Fei would have been terrified of such high damage. However, things were different now. With the Cauldron of Spirit, as long as Jiang Fei did not die from a single attack, he would not die at all. After turning around all of a sudden, Jiang Fei did not bother to distance himself from the assassin. 
he immediately pulled his bow back and fired an arrow at his opponent. Assassins did not have disabling skills like bandits after all. Zoom, Jiang Fei's arrows rained down on the assassin who could not dodge his attacks in such a close distance. The assassin instantly took more than 10 arrows from Jiang Fei. The Heaven's Breaker Twilight Bow had a special effect. After the first arrow hit, the target would be affected by a sunburn effect. Then, all other arrows would be automatically adjusted. As long as Jiang Fei fired in the approximate direction, he would not miss. After Ruthless Barrage had stacked 10 times, Jiang Fei's attack exceeded 250,000. Even a level 80 intermediate lord would not be able to handle such damage. Although Jiang Fei had not transformed and was only using his normal attack, and on top of that the lord had a very high damage reduction against normal physical attacks, Jiang Fei was still able to deal over 100,000 damage with each arrow. For someone with 15 million health points, 100,000 damage may not mean much. However, Jiang Fei had an incredible attack speed. With 8 arrows fired per second, the assassin was losing his health points very quickly. All of a sudden, the assassin was left with very little health points. Plus 3,500,000. Just as Jiang Fei thought he could easily kill the assassin, a green light engulfed the assassin. In an instant, a green-colored number appeared above his head. The assassin's health points had been fully recovered. F asterisk CK. Right then, Jiang Fei remembered that the fellow had not come to fight him alone. They came in a group. There was still a priestess with healing abilities at the back. Although the luminous priestess had been assaulted by God's apostle, he had quickly recovered his own health points after God's apostle became occupied. Now that she saw that assassin was in danger, she immediately started healing him. D asterisk a minute, this won't do. As Jiang Fei did not know if there would be another wave of enemies, he did not dare to drag the battle on. If the battle continued this way, he would not be able to kill the assassin until the priestess had run out of mana points. I must kill the healer. Jiang Fei decided. He gave up on attacking the assassin as he charged toward the priestess. Stop him! Assassin shouted. As he did not have any disabling skills and he could not kill Jiang Fei. He could only request for help from his teammates. Hammer of Sanction! Just as Jiang Fei was about to reach a firing range from the priestess, a light hammer fell from the sky and knocked him to the ground. Stop him! Priestess, get back! Right then, Assassin had caught up with Jiang Fei. Don't worry! He can't get past me. The knight laughed. In the light faction, the most abundant class was the knight class. They also happened to have a lot of disabling skills. Divine Shield Jiang Fei activated the invincible effect to get rid of the stunned state. Divine Dispel However, as soon as Jiang Fei activated his Divine Shield, the Luminous Priestess dispelled it. Darn it! Seeing as the Luminous Priestess had gotten further away from him, Jiang Fei became infuriated. Don't even think about getting closer with me around. The knight stood in front of Jiang Fei and said, F asterisk CK. It's a tanker knight, Jiang Fei rolled his eyes when he saw the opponent's equipment. When he saw the sword and shield in the knight's hands, Jiang Fei knew immediately that this was a defense knight. This type of class had nearly non-existent attack power. However, they were famed for their tanking abilities. Moreover, they had a lot of disabling skills. Indeed, after a quick exchange of attacks, Jiang Fei had been affected by a bunch of speed reduction and movement limitation skills. He did not even have an opportunity to chase after the Luminous Priestess. Do you think you can stop me like this? Jiang Fei laughed coldly at the Luminous Priestess who was 200 meters away. Young fellow, nobody can kill the target I am protecting in front of me. The knight laughed. Although he did not have much attack power, he was very confident in his ability to protect others. Let me show you how I will kill the priestess. Jiang Fei laughed coldly as he activated the Merfolk's Vengeance's special transformation effect. Angel of Revenge In an instant, a figure of a Merfolk appeared above Jiang Fei's head. 
the mare folk began singing a holy song and transformed into a beam of light. Immediately, a pair of glowing wings formed out of water appeared behind Jiang Fei's back. Under the state of Angel of Revenge, Jiang Fei's attack speed and attack power were doubled. His attack power had instantly reached 500,000. However, although his attack power had been increased, Jiang Fei still could not kill the assassin or the knight with the Luminous Priestess healing them constantly. Moreover, the Luminous Priestess was beyond his 200-meter attack range. Jiang Fei could not directly attack the Luminous Priestess. Chapter 704, Kill the Boss After activating the Angel of Revenge, Jiang Fei fired at the assassin. It looked as if he was putting in all his effort to lower the assassin's health points. The priestess focused completely on healing the assassin. Seeing that Ruthless Barrage had been fully stacked, Jiang Fei began to execute his plan. Righteous Fury Minus 361,520, minus 362,472, two lines of over 300,000 damage appeared. Righteous Fury did not deal very significant damage. The over 300,000 damage barely affected the two Lord opponents who also had a cleric supporting them. However, Jiang Fei was not relying on the skill's ability to kill either of them directly. Instead, Jiang Fei used the skill to activate another effect. Righteous Fury instantly deals 200% of your health points as damage in a 20 meter radius. In the next 10 seconds, you can resist all disabling skills. Cooldown time is 5 minutes. The disabling skill resistance effect from Righteous Fury was unlike the invincibility effect which can be dispelled. It was a passive additional effect which cannot be removed and was exactly what Jiang Fei needed. Malicious Amplification Jiang Fei activated his amplification skill yet again to double the damage of his next attack. Dusk's Bow Jiang Fei suddenly turned around to lock down on the priestess who was 200 meters away, whilst completely ignoring the assassin and knight near him. Jiang Fei had learned two ultimate skills. The first was Ruthless Barrage, which was the main skill Jiang Fei used to increase his damage output. The second was the Divine Marksman's skill, Dusk's Bow. Dusk's Bow, locked down on a single target in a 1,500 meter radius. After five seconds, a strong piercing arrow will be fired. All targets along the path of the arrow will receive damage equivalent to 20 extra attack power. Cooldown time is 1 hour. With the long distance attack range and lockdown effect, Jiang Fei was confident he would be able to hit the priestess who was 200 meters away. Moreover, since the Dusk's Bow had a strong piercing effect, the knight would not be able to block the damage for the priestess. The five seconds to charge the skill was rather long. However, Jiang Fei was resistant to disabling skills after activating Righteous Fury. Therefore, the knight and assassin could not do anything to him. Their disabling skills were all resisted by Jiang Fei. Moreover, they could not possibly kill Jiang Fei in an instant. The priestess soon realized that she was in danger. Although she tried to run out of Jiang Fei's firing range, the Dusk's Bow had a shocking 1,500 meter firing range. The slow moving priestess could not possibly get far enough within 5 seconds. D asterisk a minute. When the knight realized that Jiang Fei could resist disabling skills and that he could not stop Jiang Fei from using his ultimate skill, he immediately ran toward the priestess. Although the priestess could heal from beyond 200 meters, the knight's skill did not have such long range. You won't be able to escape from his firing range. Run toward me! The knight shouted as he ran after the priestess. It's too late! Jiang Fei laughed coldly. If the two had started running toward each other when Jiang Fei started charging his skill, the knight might have been able to get close enough to the priestess to cast Protective Blessing. Although Jiang Fei attack power was very strong, he did not have the chaotic damage activated through his transformation. Therefore, without the ability to ignore invincibility effects, the damage resistance effect from Protective Blessing would be sufficient to keep the Priestess alive. However, the Knight and the Priestess were too far apart and the Knight's instant reaction when Jiang Fei started charging his ultimate skill was to disrupt Jiang Fei instead of running toward the Priestess. On top of that, 
The priestess had also ran in the opposite direction to escape Jiang Fei's firing range, thus causing the distance between her and the knight to increase. Therefore, the knight could not cast his skill on the priestess in time. Die! Jiang Fei shouted angrily as a golden beam of light shot from his bow. I'm here! Don't you even dare think about it. The knight suddenly jumped in front of the arrow. This was one of the drawbacks of traveling magic and arrow attacks. If someone wanted to sacrifice himself for a teammate by blocking the attack, he could. Bang! Minus 18,401,523. Although the knight had very strong defense attributes, Jiang Fei was able to land over 18 million damage. Although the knight was able to survive the attack due to his strong defense and high health points, he had very little health points remaining. As the dusk's bow had a very strong piercing effect, the golden arrow did not stop when it hit the knight. Instead, it pierced through the knight and continued to move toward the priestess at a high speed. Holy words, shield! The priestess immediately cast a shield on herself. Minus 19,578,146. 3,200,000 3,214,584 absorbed, although the shield absorbed over 3 million damage for the priestess, the priestess had a much weaker defense than the tanky knight. Therefore, even with the shield, the priestess received nearly 20 million damage. Ding! You have eliminated priestess Socrali. Obtain 32,580,000 experience points, ah. Damn pagan, how dare you kill Socrali? The knight was infuriated when he saw that Jiang Fei killed the target he was protecting. Don't worry! You're next! Jiang Fei laughed coldly. While the Angel of Revenge was still active, Jiang Fei quickly raised the heaven piercing twilight bow in his hands and fired at the knight. Ding! You have eliminated Paladin Lismark. Obtained 42,150,000 experience points. The badly injured paladin did not even have time to defend himself as he was killed by Jiang Fei on the spot. It's your turn. Jiang Fei laughed as he looked at the assassin who was running after him. For the glory of the divine light god. The assassin shouted. He did not care about Jiang Fei's attacks and instead focused on his own attacks. As far as the assassin was concerned, their team had no hope of surviving. He could only blame the archbishop in charge of assigning them the quest for providing wrong intel. They had not expected their opponent to be Verger Glider. Verger Glider was unlike any other common player. He had successfully wooed the Saint of the Light, stolen from the Pope's tomb and stolen the Moon God's bastard son, on top of going against the Divine Light God. A criminal like him could not possibly be eliminated by a group of mere lords. However, it was too late for them to regret their decision. As the teleportation point only worked in a single direction, the group had no way of escaping. Their only choice was to fight Jiang Fei head-on. Ding! You have eliminated the Shadow Assassin Vasara. Obtain 29,830,000 experience points. In less than a minute, the assassin was killed by Jiang Fei's arrows. D asterisk M in. Our guildmaster is beyond godlike, Billy Boy and the rest were dumbfounded. All they could see was that Jiang Fei had single-handedly killed several lords of over level 80 with ease. How Jiang Fei accomplished the incredible feat was beyond their understanding. Chapter 705, Al Assassinate Jiang Fei at a Lost's Now that Jiang Fei had killed half of the lords and one of them had been charmed by Akat Ceres, how the rest of the battle would go was pretty clear. Firstly, Jiang Fei worked with the Charm God's Apostle to kill the Lord with low health points and low defense. He then moved on to kill the tanky warrior and finally the Charm God's Apostle himself. In an instant, all six of them were killed. Jiang Fei finally sighed in relief. There were ten minutes left of the four-hour defending time. Jiang Fei predicted that there might be one wave of enemies left. Besides, he had saved his battle form for this very moment. Even if the Luminous Vatican sent an overlord, Jiang Fei was confident that he would be able to put up a fight. Very soon, a white light flashed before the teleportation point. The final wave of enemies had appeared. Indeed! Jiang Fei nodded. 
As there was only one enemy this time, Jiang Fei figured that it must be the big boss. Archbishop Athenus, Celestial Race, Intermediate Overlord, Level, 97, Health Points, 170 million, Attack Power, 145,000, Remark, one of the members of the Luminous Vatican's religious judicatory. This guy is quite tough. Jiang Fei frowned. If he was a normal intermediate overlord, Jiang Fei would not have been concerned as he had the battle form. Coupled with the cauldron of spirit, Jiang Fei had very high health point recovery rate. Jiang Fei would be able to fight against most intermediate overlords without an issue. However, it was unfortunate that the Archbishop Athenus was a member of the religious judicatory. These people were specialized in killing overlords who went against the Luminous Vatican. Therefore, their battle powers far exceeded the common overlords. Jiang Fei had met many intermediate overlords before. The weakest among them that he had met would be the Navia Queen's two closest subordinates, Clark and Ralph. These two had less than 100 million health points and only 90,000 attack power at most. They could barely compare to the Archbishop Athenus. Verger Glider You are guilty of terrible crimes. Archbishop Athenus shouted angrily when he saw Jiang Fei. Eh, Jiang Fei was speechless in the face of Athenus' rage. Although he was a hero amongst the Dark Faction, he was the most hated person in the Light Faction. Instant teleportation was a common skill of overlords. Therefore, after shouting angrily, Athenus appeared right before Jiang Fei. Zorid wasn't able to kill you the last time. It'll make sure you won't escape this time. Athenus shouted loudly. At the same time, a beam of holy light appeared and was thrust at Jiang Fei. Be careful. Akit Ceres who was hidden nearby suddenly stood in front of Jiang Fei, taking the damage for him. You are asking for it. Jiang Fei's eyes instantly turned a bloody red shade. The scene that unfolded reminded him of the time when Isabella died. One of the Luminous Vatican's overlords had wanted to attack Jiang Fei. However, Isabella had blocked the damage for him, causing her death. Although Akatsiris, who was also an intermediate overlord, could not be killed by Athenus, what happened still reminded Jiang Fei of the painful past. Hatred filled Jiang Fei's heart as he entered his battle form in the next instant. Previously, Jiang Fei was helpless when Isabella and Ariel died. However, today, he was no longer the weakling in front of the overlord in the past. After the black mist around him dissipated, Jiang Fei completed his transformation. The pair of intimidating wings flapped behind him, making him look like a demon from hell. Unholy Desire 3x Boost Fumes! A black flame engulfed Jiang Fei which seemed to reflect his anger. Shadow Clone Three exact replicas of Jiang Fei appeared next to him. Each of the clones had their bows aimed at Athenus. You deserve to die. As Jiang Fei shouted angrily, the four bows began firing arrows at Athenus with an average of 32 arrows each second. Humph. A bunch of insects, Athenus did not even care about Jiang Fei's attacks. Instead, he continued to exert pressure on Akat Ceres. Although they were both intermediate overlords, Akat Ceres was a classic disabling support. In terms of a solo fight, Athenus was capable of fighting four of her. Therefore, Athenus overpowered her within a few rounds of attacks. Although Athenus overpowered Akat Ceres in the fight, he paid a hefty price for underestimating Jiang Fei. As Athenus underestimated Jiang Fei as he was not even close to reaching the overlord rank, Athenus did not care about Jiang Fei's attacks. However, after one second, Jiang Fei's ruthless barrage had stacked up to three times. Coupled with the 3x boost from Unholy Desire, Jiang Fei's attack power had reached 750,000. Most importantly, Jiang Fei's attacks dealt chaotic damage which harmed his target's health points directly. On top of that, Jiang Fei had three other clones. With 32 arrows each second, Jiang Fei reached a frightening 24 million damage per second. Even Athenus with 170 million health points began to fear such destructive damage. Darned! I have underestimated you. Although Athenus lost around 50 million health points in three seconds, he did not panic. 
In an instant, Athenis teleported out of Jiang Fei's attack range and healed himself by over 20 million health points. Although Jiang Fei's arrows could autocorrect within a certain range, Jiang Fei would still miss if Athenis was out of Jiang Fei's 60 degree angle of attack. Most opponents would find it hard to dodge Jiang Fei who had such incredible attack speed. However, for an overlord who could use instant teleportation at will, dodging Jiang Fei's arrows was not a difficult feat Akat series, work with me. Jiang Fei shouted as he controlled his three clones to shoot at Athenis from different angles. At the same time, Akat series began advancing against Athenis. Against the same rank, Akat series charm skills were no longer effective. However, she could still use other limiting skills. Very soon, Athenus' attack power and defense were lowered. His movement speed and attack speed were also greatly reduced. Most importantly, Akat series was able to use her ultimate skill which increased her opponent's cooldown time for skills. As such, Athenus became very passive. With the extended cooldown time of his instant teleportation skill, he could no longer dodge Jiang Fei's arrows at will, which significantly increased Jiang Fei's damage output. Darn Pagan. I can't believe you have improved so quickly. For the future of the Vatican, I cannot spare you any longer. Even if I die today, I must kill you. Athenus shouted angrily at Jiang Fei. Chapter 706, Uncovered Treasure, Verger Glider. Die! As Athenus shouted, he stopped attacking and instead started singing a holy song. This holy song is very familiar. As Jiang Fei understood the Protoss language, he could understand the lyrics which Athenus sang. In fact, he had heard the same holy song before. Jiang Fei had not heard the holy song when the ex saint of the light lay in his arms. Instead, he heard it when Isabella was being resurrected. At the time, the Luminous Vatican had sent people over to stop the resurrection. The level 80 Lord Famous had summoned the divine R Judgment Sword through the singing of such a holy song. A mere level 80 Lord had been able to severely injure the pinnacle overlord demonic Nanda Isabella who was at level 99. Although Isabella had very little health points as she had just been resurrected, the divine art was proven to be very strong as it could break through a pinnacle overlord's defense. Now, the divine art was not being activated by a mere lord. Instead, it was being summoned by the intermediate overlord Athenus. Its might would surely be much greater. Therefore, even Jiang Fei did not dare to take it lightly. Although Jiang Fei would only drop equipment if he was killed, Akat series would disappear instantly as she was bound by the deadly attachment contract to be Jiang Fei's pet. Therefore, once he died, she would die permanently. If Jiang Fei and Akat series were gone, Billy Boy and the rest would not be able to defeat the intermediate overlord. If they died as well, nobody would be able to revive Jiang Fei. Not only would they all fail the quest, Jiang Fei would also lose his dragon's bane and the four cauldrons of the ancient kingdom as he could no longer return to the quest map. Jiang Fei could not bear the loss. Therefore, he had to take action immediately. Zoom! Jiang Fei continued to fire arrows at Athenus. However, despite the archbishop's quickly plummeting health points, Jiang Fei could not interrupt his spellcasting. Judgment Sword was similar to God's Wrath which provided resistance against most disabling skills. Therefore, unless Jiang Fei could kill the Archbishop before he finished singing, Jiang Fei would not be able to interrupt the spell. Might Divine Light God, hear my summoning, wash away the evil of this world and spread light throughout all of humanity, Archbishop Athenus sang very quickly. He was reaching the last few notes of the song. However, he still had over 50 million health points. Jiang Fei could not possibly kill him before he sang the last few notes. D asterisk am in. Am going all out. As Jiang Fei had heard the original version of the Holy Curse, he knew there was insufficient time for him to kill his opponent. Therefore, Jiang Fei decided to take on a gamble. Malicious Amplification This was the skill Jiang Fei would use right before he used his ultimate skill as it could double his skill effect and attack damage. Nephilim King's Eyes, Banish. This was an additional ability which Isabella had acquired for Jiang Fei through removing the fourth prince Curtis' eyes. 
Although Jiang Fei's race had changed, the additional ability still remained. Nephilim King's Eyes Banish banishes the target so that the target does not receive any damage but cannot cast spells or move until the end of the banish period. Remark can only be used on non-player targets less than 20 levels above you. Success rate is 30%. With the boost for malicious amplification, the Nephilim King's Eyes had a 60% success rate. However, there was still a significant risk of failing. However, at this point, Jiang Fei had no other choice. If he allowed Athenus to use the Judgment Sword, Jiang Fei would certainly die. This divine art was similar to Jiang Fei's divine marksman skill, Dusk's Bow. They both locked onto a target with a 100% accuracy. Moreover, it dealt sacred attack which meant it could ignore the invincibility effect of divine shield. Therefore, if the skill was used, Jiang Fei would definitely be killed. Although Jiang Fei's token of the God of Crafts from his class rainbow equipment provided him with the Undying Aegis effect, Judgment Sword was not a one-off attack. Apart from the destructive damage in the beginning, there was a continuous damage effect. During this period of continuous damage, all healing abilities would be stopped, including Jiang Fei's automatic recovery from the 100,000 spirit points. Otherwise, Isabella would not have nearly died from the skill previously. That meant as long as Jiang Fei was hit by Judgment Sword, he would certainly die. It was a gamble on his life. If Jiang Fei lost, he would lose everything. If he won, he would be able to turn the tables on Athenus. After activating the Nephilim King's eyes, Banish, Jiang Fei's eyes turned blood red as two beams of red light were projected toward Athenus who was still singing. As Athenus was casting a spell, he could not move and was thus hit by the red beam directly. Buzz! As a red light engulfed Athenus, Jiang Fei's heart raced. This was the deciding moment. Shuffle! The red light dissipated. Although Athenus could continue his singing, the sound of his song could no longer be heard. It worked! Jiang Fei was overjoyed. This was the first time Jiang Fei had activated the Nephilim King's eyes, Banish. He did not expect it to work on Athenus so easily as he was an intermediate overlord. Are you very strong? Didn't you want to kill me? Come on! Jiang Fei teased as he walked around Athenus. Although Athenus could feel everything happening around him in the banished state and could still hear Jiang Fei's victorious laughter, he could not do anything despite the hatred and regret that filled his heart. Die! Jiang Fei raised his hands to attack Athenus. Resist! The banished target was already removed from the current space. Although Athenus' body was still present and could be seen and touched, all attacks and skills would not work on him. Even Jiang Fei's chaotic damage could not injure him. Unfortunately, Jiang Fei only knew how to banish the target, but not how to remove the effect. Therefore, Jiang Fei could not kill Athenus even if he wanted to. Humph. Consider yourself lucky. Jiang Fei snorted as he turned around and walked toward Billy Boy and the rest. Oh my goodness. Guildmaster, you managed to defeat an overlord. Little Rain and the others were dumbfounded. As Jiang Fei was in the same group as they were, everyone was able to see Jiang Fei's damage. They were horrified by Jiang Fei's damage output of 24 million damage per second. It was beyond godlike. It's nothing, Jiang Fei said chirpily. After all, he had barely made it out of the situation alive. Guildmaster, what do we do next? Billy Boy asked. Let's wait for a while. This fellow will dig something up soon. Jiang Fei saw that the four hours were nearly up. Therefore, he turned his gaze toward Moreland who was operating the drilling machine. Chapter 707, Meeting the Superiors, as the drilling machine continued to make buzzing sounds, Jiang Fei and the rest had their eyes locked on the pit before them. All of a sudden, the drilling machine stopped working. The main engineer Moreland jumped off the drilling machine and shouted, I found something, oh? Jiang Fei exclaimed joyfully as he jumped into the pit. Although the pit was very deep and most people would die from the fall, Jiang Fei was still in his battle form. 
As he had been able to before in his Nephilim state, Jiang Fei could still fly for short periods with his wings. As his wings flapped, Jiang Fei slowly landed at the bottom of the pit. He then noticed that there was a huge stone door below the head of the drilling machine. The stone door was slightly ajar. The space was wide enough for one person to pass through. Jiang Fei bravely walked through the door without hesitation. After all, he could always swap positions with his clones at any time if there was danger. Akut series, Illuminate Although Jiang Fei was not attacked, he could not see anything due to the complete darkness in the room. All right. Akut series who followed right behind him nodded. Illuminate was an easy skill for her to use. Very soon, a ball of light appeared and lit up the entire room. This, Jiang Fei was shocked by what he saw. It was the military storage of the ancient Gnome Kingdom. There were 20 sets of complete Gnome Cannons and a large amount of ammunition. Gnome Cannon was the greatest invention of the Gnome's engineering expertise. It was very effective when used to attack castles. Most small city gates could easily be destroyed by three shots of cannons. If all 20 known cannons were used, most castles would not be able to withstand the impact. This explains why both sides are fighting so hard to take over the gnome's forgotten land. Jiang Fei mumbled to himself. Obtaining such strong weapons would indeed help them significantly in the battles ahead. D asterisk M in. What are these? Billy Boy asked as he and the rest eventually made it to the bottom of the pit. These must be the treasures we were digging for. Jiang Fei nodded. Shuffle. Right then, a bright light flashed. Marshal Ivan suddenly appeared before Jiang Fei and the rest. Congratulations, brave soldiers, you have successfully snatched these weapons. You are all heroes of the Dark Faction. Marshal Ivan exclaimed. Ding! Quest completed. Obtained 80 million experience points. Obtained 400 gold coins. Obtained 500 reputation points from the Dark Faction. Following Ivan's words, John Fei and his group finally completed their group quest. Although 80 million experience points did not mean much to John Fei, it was a huge sum to the other players. Ding! 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 A series of notifications could be heard as golden flashes of light appeared. Coupled with the experience points gained from killing their opponents earlier, all the players in the group all leveled up by three times on average. All the 200 players managed to reach level 70. This is awesome, we always get a lot of benefits when we follow our big boss around, Guildmaster, please bring us out more often. Don't you know how difficult it is for us to train on our own? The 200 players were all overjoyed. They had not done much apart from killing around 40 Light Factions players. The most difficult task they had done was stopping a few advanced elite monsters that tried to sneak up on them. Jiang Fei had accomplished most of the difficult tasks on his own. However, these were the players who benefited the most. Therefore, they respected Jiang Fei even more and felt much more at home in the Imperial Dragon. All right. Leave the rest to me. You lot can rest. I will have another quest for you tomorrow. However, you need to gather more members. Ivan said as he waved and a teleportation point appeared next to him. Soldiers from the Dark Faction continued to appear from the teleportation point as they carried the cannons back to the Demon Flame Fortress via the teleportation point. Ding! Marshal Ivan issued a new guide for the storyline quest, Bring 50,000 members and report to Marshal Ivan tomorrow. 50,000 members? Jiang Fei was shocked. He could not imagine why the quest required such a large number of players to participate. However, Ivan did not give Jiang Fei an answer immediately. Jiang Fei and the others had no choice but to return to the Demon Flame Fortress through the teleportation point. After returning, Billy Boy and the rest immediately went over to the battlefield as they could only work on the quest tomorrow. After all, they had just all reached level 70. With the increase in their capabilities, torturing the players from the Light Faction was a piece of cake. Since Jiang Fei had nothing else to attend to, he returned to the Demon Dragon Fortress to spend time with Sylphie, Nina, and the other ladies. 
As it was already quite late by the time Jiang Fei returned from the underground world, Jiang Fei logged out of the game after chatting with the others for a while. During breakfast, Jiang Fei sat with his entire family. As Jiang Fei and Ariel were both home, the atmosphere was much more vibrant, which made Jiang Fei's mother very happy. After their meal, Jiang Fei's father left for work. Jiang Fei, on the other hand, accompanied his mother for a while. After spending the night together, Ariel seemed to be much better acquainted to see Taing and Shang Guanqi. Shang Guanqi, especially, seemed to look at Ariel admiringly. Clearly, the smart young lady had discovered Ariel's identity as a level 5 expert. For Jiang Fei, the time of joy never lasted very long. Han Tianyu's call out of the blue interrupted Jiang Fei's short moment of peace. Ah Fei, someone from the upper ranks would like to meet you. Han Tianyu said. Why can't you meet with them on my behalf? Jiang Fei was not very keen on meeting those superiors. I really can't stop them this time. There's too much at stake. Han Tianyu said. Previously, he had been able to put off a meeting for Jiang Fei. However, this time, a much more serious matter was at hand. Even Han Tianyu himself believed that Jiang Fei should meet with the superiors to discuss about it. Hmm. All right. Jiang Fei agreed after much consideration. Jiang Fei was no longer the naive and confused brat he used to be. His own capabilities had already reached pinnacle level 4 and could rival anyone below level 5. Moreover, he had a level 5 bodyguard with him at all times. Therefore, Jiang Fei was not worried that the government would exert any pressure on him. Okay. I will make the arrangements right away. Han Tianyu sighed in relief when Jiang Fei finally agreed. If Jiang Fei continued to reject his request, Han Tianyu would have no choice but to face the music on his behalf. Chapter 708 The Mysterious Quadruplets Han Tianyu came to pick Jiang Fei up around noon. Are we heading to the capital? Jiang Fei brought Ariel along to the roof of Manda Square. This was where Han Tianyu usually parked his helicopter. Yeah. Han Tianyu nodded. Although the superiors wanted to meet Jiang Fei, they would not personally travel all the way to the city in which Jiang Fei was located. All right. Jiang Fei nodded. He could understand why these government officials did not want to travel all the way out of the capital. These were much busier people in comparison to Jiang Fei, especially with the war drawing near. Very soon, the helicopter took off. Jiang Fei and the two had to first head to the military airport in the outskirts and then board the aircraft that would take them to the capital. Have you managed to separate the energy crystals? Jiang Fei asked in the helicopter. It's all done. They are in the midst of being transported. If everything goes according to plan, they should arrive at the capital by tonight. Han Tianyu answered. All right. Jiang Fei nodded. He had been eagerly waiting for this batch of energy crystals. The two chatted for a while before the helicopter landed at the military airport. Jiang Fei and the two wasted no time as they immediately boarded Manda Group's newest military aircraft which was headed for the capital. After an hour or so, Jiang Fei and the two landed at a military airport in the capital. Hee hee, this is my first visit to the capital. I can't believe I am actually meeting with the country's leaders, Jiang Fei mumbled to himself. A few months ago, he was only a normal high school student. He had never imagined that he would one day meet with the country's leaders. The mysterious ring he discovered had indeed thoroughly changed his life. Eh. Ah Fei, please be careful with your words in the meeting later, Han Tianyu said after hesitating. Eh. Oh! Jiang Fei was stunned at first. He then figured out what Han Tianyu was trying to say. In the world of martial arts, one strength was the benchmark for a person's status. Although Jiang Fei was not very old, he had very strong capabilities. When he first started off in the martial arts world, the Martial Art Alliance had already believed that he was a level 4 expert. Therefore, he was very respected by them. Han Tianyu was concerned that Jiang Fei might undermine the government leaders due to their status as normal human beings. 
If Jiang Fei behaved inappropriately, there might even be a complete breakdown in communication. Moreover, Han Tianyu was there when Jiang Fei had an outburst against the Soaring Cloud sect. Therefore, Han Tianyu was very much aware that Jiang Fei did not fear the rich or the powerful. If things got out of hand and Jiang Fei wanted to kill any one of the government officials, Han Tianyu would not be able to stop him. However, Han Tianyu was unnecessarily concerned. Jiang Fei had not been in the metahuman circle for very long. Deep down in his heart, Jiang Fei still thought of himself as being part of the normal humans. Jiang Fei did not undermine normal humans like the other more traditional metahumans did. He did not think he was better than normal human beings. If not for the Soaring Cloud sex act of kidnapping his parents, Jiang Fei would not have reacted so angrily. On the contrary, Jiang Fei was very mild-tempered. As long as the person did not step over his boundaries, Jiang Fei would normally not feel upset. Don't worry, Jiang Fei waved his hand to reassure Han Tianyu. When they came out from the military airport, Jiang Fei and the two were brought to a secret restricted military zone. Then, they arrived at a meeting room with a lieutenant commander's escort. You too, please wait for a while. Han Tianyu, come with me. The lieutenant commander treated Jiang Fei and Ariel with respect, while he also seemed to be very well acquainted to Han Tianyu. This place is very strange. Ariel whispered to Jiang Fei after Han Tianyu had left with the lieutenant commander. What's the matter? Jiang Fei asked curiously. Didn't you say that we were meeting with some very important people? Why isn't there any aura of experts around at all? Aren't those superiors afraid of being assassinated? Ariel asked. Eh? Jiang Fei was stunned when he heard what Ariel said. He actually did not sense the presence of any martial artists or metahumans either when they entered the restricted military zone. In the beginning, he did not think too much about it. However, after hearing Ariel out, he agreed that it was rather strange. Regardless of which leader Jiang Fei was about to meet, the level of security should not be so weak. Right then, the sound of footsteps could be heard outside the meeting room. As the footsteps got closer, Jiang Fei and Ariel began to frown. From the sounds of footsteps, Ariel and Jiang Fei could clearly tell there were seven people. One of them was Han Tianyu, while the rest were all strangers. Although the footsteps clearly indicated seven people, Jiang Fei and Ariel could only sense three. It was as if the other four people did not exist. How many are there? Jiang Fei asked Ariel curiously. The sounds clearly indicate that there are seven of them. However, I could only sense three. Ariel frowned. What? Jiang Fei was shocked. He would not have been worried if he was the only one who could not sense their presence. However, even Ariel who was a level 5 metahuman could not sense their presence. That meant these four people might have very frightening capabilities. Could the country have already garnered such powers? Wham! As the meeting room's door was opened, Han Tianyu was the first to walk in. Shuffle! Jiang Fei and Ariel stood up at the same time as they both looked toward the door simultaneously. Han Tianyu stepped aside once he entered the room as he bowed slightly and extended his hands to guide the people behind him. When he saw that Jiang Fei and Ariel both stood up to welcome them, Han Tianyu was secretly overjoyed. He was very pleased that Jiang Fei behaved so respectfully. Han Tianyu had no idea that Jiang Fei and Ariel had stood up not to welcome the others, but to inspect the four invisible people. Jiang Fei dared not underestimate these four individuals who could not even be sensed by Ariel. Ariel, on the other hand, was prepared to fight. Right then, another kind-looking middle-aged man entered the room. The man was dressed in a military uniform and appeared very calm and collected. One could immediately tell he was a high-ranking military officer. Jiang Fei could vaguely recall seeing this man in the news on the television. Although Jiang Fei could not remember his name, he knew this was an important officer in the military. The next person to enter the room was a secretarial officer who held a briefcase. This person was clearly the secretary or an aide to the commander. Moreover, the fellow was also a normal human being. Therefore, 
Jiang Fei did not pay too much attention to him. The last four people to enter the room gave Jiang Fei a shock. The four individuals seemed to resemble one another completely. They had the same height and physical features. In fact, they even walked with the same pace and posture. Although Jiang Fei had seen twins and the likes, he had never seen them walking in such uniformity. Even the most synchronized twins in the martial arts circle could not do so, let alone quadruplets. 0541 Scan them! Although it was not very polite to do so, Jiang Fei had no other choice. Come, Jiang Fei, let me introduce you. This is Commander Fan Yao, Chief of Staff of the Headquarters of the General Staff. Han Tianyu initiated the introductions to prevent any awkwardness. He he, you must be Jiang Fei. I have been wanting to meet you. It sure isn't easy to get your time. Fan Yao extended his hand toward Jiang Fei for a handshake. Commander Fan, nice to meet you. Jiang Fei immediately shook hands with Commander Fan Yao. Right then, 0541 had also completed the scan. Chapter 709, The Eyesore, after Jiang Fei and Fan Yao greeted each other, they both sat down. Han Tianyu sat next to Jiang Fei on the opposite side of the secretarial officer. It looked as if Han Tianyu was Jiang Fei's subordinate. Meanwhile, 0541 briefed Jiang Fei on the results of the scan. Captain, these four individuals are not humans. 0541 said. Not humans? Are they monsters? Jiang Fei was stunned. Captain, you shouldn't read so much fiction, 0541 said. The four of them are androids. They simply look like humans on the outside, D asterisk M in. Androids? Jiang Fei was shocked. From the way the four androids behaved, although they moved in unison, they did not show any sign of stiffness at all. In fact, they moved with even more agility than the biohumans controlled by the Japanese. Normal androids could not possibly achieve such standards. Captain, have you forgotten about the intel we have acquired in the underground base? 0541 hinted. Oh! I see now. Jiang Fei quickly got what 0541 was trying to say. Jiang Fei had not thought about it before. However, once 0541 gave him a hint, Jiang Fei immediately recalled the information they had acquired in the underground base. The Dawnlight game was created to develop man-made souls. The purpose of these man-made souls was to be incorporated in the military androids. Although Jiang Fei and 0541 had destroyed one of the bases and had also gotten hold of Isabella and Ariel's souls, the military had more than one such base. They also focused on other man-made souls apart from Ariel and Isabella. From the looks of things, the military had already achieved quite a success in creating man-made souls. Although these man-made souls were not perfect, they were sufficient enough to be used in making android soldiers. However, even a high-ranked leader like Fan Yao only had four android bodyguards. This meant that the military had not yet developed the ability to mass-produce these man-made souls. Therefore, these supreme android soldiers were only produced in small numbers to be used as bodyguards for important figures. Can you identify their level of capabilities? Jiang Fei asked 0541. These androids were perfect imposters. As they did not emit any aura, even a level 5 metahuman would only be able to detect them through sight and hearing. These four androids are made from alloy. The alloy technology originates from planet Namex smelting technique which. They are very tough and can withstand beginner level 4 attacks. They each have two plasma wave cannons which give them intermediate level 4 attack power. The cannons can be fired once every half second. Their combined capabilities are estimated to be between beginner and intermediate level 4. 0541 explained in detail after thoroughly scanning these four android bodyguards. Beginner or intermediate level 4. Jiang Fei mumbled to himself. Although these androids at the beginner level 4 were of no threat to Jiang Fei, he was aware that these androids could be mass produced. Unlike the biohumans, these supreme androids could be easily replaced as long as their cores were not destroyed. Therefore, these were beings did not have to fear death. 
As man-made souls are gradually mass-produced, these supreme androids would grow in number. In due time, not only would the mutants who acquired the biotechnology not be a threat, the originally powerful metahumans would also all be in jeopardy. If the Chinese government owned such a powerful battalion, the proud martial art alliance would be the government's primary target. By then, the martial artists would either have to succumb to the government's control or be eliminated. For the safety and stability of the country, any government would do the same to ensure that a bunch of potential eyesores could not retaliate against the government. What should I do? Jiang Fei asked in his heart. As the country still owned very few supreme androids, they would not engage the martial art alliance immediately. The government also treated Jiang Fei very respectfully. However, Jiang Fei knew that sooner or later, the martial artists who had metahuman abilities would become the country's primary target. Although Jiang Fei never thought of himself as part of the martial art alliance, he would definitely not be exempted when the government decided to annihilate the martial art alliance. In all honesty, Jiang Fei had not given it much of a thought when he first discovered the Supreme Android Soldier Project. He had not expected these Supreme Androids to be so strong. His earlier prediction was that these Supreme Androids would at most reach level 3. However, they had clearly exceeded his earlier expectations. Mr. Jiang? Mr. Jiang? Fan Yao suddenly became aware of Jiang Fei's zoning out. Ah, Fei! Han Tianyu pushed Jiang Fei. He did not know why Jiang Fei decided to zone out during such a moment. Ah. Oh! When Jiang Fei recollected himself, he looked at Han Tianyu thoughtfully. Although the souls of these androids might have nothing to do with Han Tianyu, the metal frame and weapons they used all came from Han Tianyu's Manda group. Therefore, Jiang Fei would not believe it if someone told him that Han Tianyu knew nothing about the Supreme Android Soldier Project. The only explanation Jiang Fei could think of was that Han Tianyu knew about the Supreme Android Soldier Project all along but had never told Jiang Fei about it. What did you say? Jiang Fei did not hear Fan Yao's earlier words as he had zoned out. He he, I was saying, the government wishes to acquire the factory of yours which produces alien weapons. We are willing to pay any price for it. Fan Yao laughed. As an experienced political figure with over 10 years of experience, Fan Yao was very good at disguising his emotions. Although he was unhappy with Jiang Fei's disrespectful behavior, he still maintained a smile on his face. Although Fan Yao looked as cheerful as ever, he had become much more certain about the decision the government had to make. Once the time was right, they would have to eliminate these martial artists who thought too highly of themselves. From the way Jiang Fei had zoned out earlier, it was proof to Fan Yao that Jiang Fei undermined normal humans. Therefore, all of the government officials, including Fan Yao, had nothing good to say about the snobbish metahumans. However, the country still needed Jiang Fei and the martial artists for now. As the man made souls only existed in small numbers and were not even sufficient as bodyguards, the country still needed to make use of Jiang Fei and the martial art alliance. Once they had acquired the alien factory from Jiang Fei, they would be able to mass produce supreme androids. By then, they would be able to eradicate the major rice exporting country and their alliance members. When that happened, the government would be able to get rid of those law breaking metahumans. Chapter 710 Han Tianyu's Objective We are not asking for it for free. You can make an offer. Fan Yao smiled at Jiang Fei. About that. The alien factory is with my master. I am afraid I cannot make a decision on his behalf. Jiang Fei had no choice but to shift the responsibility to Zhuge Shanjin who did not even exist. Jiang Fei felt very conflicted at the moment. Jiang Fei was able to predict that, with the advent of these supreme androids, a final war between the government and the metahumans was unavoidable. However, Jiang Fei was in a tricky situation right now. At the moment, the country currently could not withstand the mutants and the major rice exporting countries' fleet attacking them at the same time. Therefore, they needed Jiang Fei and the Martial Art Alliance's support. Moreover, the country also did not have the capability to fight against the Martial Art Alliance. At the same time, 
Jiang Fei felt that the martial art alliance alone would not be able to withstand the combined powers of the mutants and the major rice exporting country's fleet. They would need to work together with the government to fight against outsiders. It was not a great time to have an internal conflict. If Jiang Fei exposed the government's plan to eliminate all metahumans, even if the martial art alliance did not immediately break ties with the government, they would still not work together. By then, if the mutants and the major rice-exporting countries' fleet worked together to attack China, China would definitely lose. If China was defeated, Jiang Fei and his family would be in danger as well. Based on Jiang Fei's current capabilities, he could not fight against the mutant army on his own. At the end of the day, Jiang Fei was still not strong enough. Therefore, he had no choice but to cooperate with the government for now. The problem was that the government needed more time to grow their supreme androids in number. Moreover, they still had to research on how to develop level 5 supreme androids. Otherwise, they would still lose against level 5 metahumans. Jiang Fei also needed more time. If he could find the rest of Braveheart's fragments, especially the engine room, he would be able to expand his powers greatly. If that were the case, he would not fear any form of threat. Therefore, since Jiang Fei and the government both needed time to get stronger, the two parties still had to work together for now to fend off the mutants and the major rice-exporting country's fleet. In order to maintain a good relationship with the government, Jiang Fei had to come up with a reasonable excuse to decline their request instead of rejecting them directly. Your master, as soon as Jiang Fei mentioned Zhuge Shanjin, Fan Yao became quiet. However, the alien factory was too tempting for him to give up. Mr. Jiang, do you think it's possible to arrange for us to meet you, master? I'm afraid not. My master rarely meets outsiders. Jiang Fei shook his head. Jiang Fei might be able to fool the Caucasian mutants with his pretense as Zhuge Shanjin. Moreover, Jiang Fei would usually speak as little as possible when dealing with the Caucasians. However, if Zhuge Shanjin met with these experienced politicians, Jiang Fei was worried that they would see through him if he spoke too much. Jiang Fei was merely a young boy of 17 years old. These politicians were at least 50 to 60 years old. Experience aside, they were at least three times Jiang Fei's age. Moreover, each of these politicians was vigilant. Jiang Fei knew very well that he would not be able to fool them with his disguise. In that case, Mr. Jiang, please relay our message. If there is anything that you master would like in return, please let us know. When Fan Yao heard that Zhuge Shanjin would be unwilling to meet him, he was very disappointed. However, Fan Yao did not push any further. The Chinese government was still considered weak at this point. Not only did they have very few supreme androids, they had also not yet developed a level 5 android. Therefore, they did not wish to challenge Jiang Fei yet. Although I cannot give you the alien factory, I can make some weapons for you to fight against the major rice exporting country once the energy crystals arrive. Jiang Fei said so that the situation would not be too awkward from their disagreement. I have heard about this from Han Tianyu. How long would it take to create these weapons? Fan Yao asked. 0541, how long does it take to create those weapons? Jiang Fei asked in his heart. Approximately 10 days. 0541 answered quickly. It would take between 10 to 15 days to create these weapons. On top of the time needed to transfer the energy crystal, I would say it should take about 20 days in total. Jiang Fei answered by doubling the time of delivery. 20 days? Fan Yao's eyes lit up. Jiang Fei was not creating some simple weapons for them. The items he created would include battle aircrafts, battleships, and even aircraft carriers. These large ships would normally take more than a year to complete. The fact that Jiang Fei was able to create such a large amount of weaponry in less than a month made Fan Yao even more interested in acquiring the alien factory. I must acquire this factory, Fan Yao thought to himself. However, his facial expression remained calm and friendly when he spoke to Jiang Fei. Then, Jiang Fei and Fan Yao discussed further about how they would work together to defend against the mutants and the major rice exporting country's fleet. The meeting only ended in the evening. After leaving the meeting room, 
Fan Yao turned to his aide and asked, What do you think about Jiang Fei? He is still very young. The way he deals with things is very gentle. However, he seems to be very guarded. Did he discover something? The aide said as he frowned. What about the four of you? What do you think of Jiang Fei? Fan Yao turned to the four android bodyguards and asked. Our life form radar showed that Jiang Fei had reached pinnacle level 4. He is very close to the threshold. The android at the very front answered. Oh, that is much higher than what we had been told. Has he been hiding his capabilities all this while? Or has he improved far too quickly? Fan Yao frowned. Apart from that, the energy field of the lady next to Jiang Fei has already exceeded the detection range of our life form radar. The android bodyguard continued to speak. What? Fan Yao's body shook. The fact that her energy field exceeded the life form radar's detection range meant that the lady who stood next to Jiang Fei but never once spoke was already a level 5 expert. According to intel gathered by Fan Yao, the known level 5 experts around Jiang Fei included his master, the mysterious Zhuge Shanjin, and his weaker senior Phoenix. However, the lady which Jiang Fei brought today was clearly neither his master nor his senior. However, she had also reached level 5. Fan Yao was truly confused by Jiang Fei's identity. He wondered how many level 5 experts surrounded Jiang Fei. This can't be right. We must re-establish Jiang Fei's profile. Ask Han Tianyu if he has gathered any other intel. I think this young fellow is hiding something from us. Fan Yao frowned as he said. Chapter 711, Laying Cards on the Table, when Fan Yao left, Ariel whispered to Jiang Fei, that guy's planning to kill you, yeah. Jiang Fei nodded. Ariel had inherited Phoenix's abilities, so her mind power was very strong. Although it was not at a level where she could read people's minds, she could easily tell when an ordinary human being had intentions to kill someone else. As Fan Yao was a veteran politician, it was easy for him to maintain an inscrutable countenance. However, even though he could hide things from Jiang Fei, he could not hide them from his own heart. Thus, Ariel could easily sense the intention to kill from within his heart. Jiang Fei was not surprised that Fan Yao was planning to kill him. After all, since they now had the supreme android soldiers, these leaders certainly did not need martial artists like Jiang Fei and the others anymore. However, Jiang Fei could ignore Fan Yao, but not Han Tianyu. Now, Jiang Fei had to cooperate with the Chinese officials in order to fight against the combined fleet of the mutants and America. However, he did not want to deal with these officials directly. So, he needed a savvy person with enough talent and politics to be his representative. Someone who could do the job well enough to give him peace of mind. For the time being, Han Tianyu was undoubtedly the most qualified person. Originally, Jiang Fei had considered Han Tianyu as his confidant. This time, however, Han Tianyu had actually kept things from him and did not tell him about the Supreme Android Soldier Project. Because of this, Jiang Fei had lost a lot of trust in Han Tianyu. Even so, Jiang Fei had no other available candidates, so he could only choose to make Han Tianyu lay all the cards on the table. Under Ariel's strong mind power supervision, Jiang Fei was not worried that Han Tianyu would lie to him. Therefore, Jiang Fei was going to disclose some of his details to Han Tianyu. It was best if Han Tianyu could stand on his side. If Han Tianyu had other ideas, Jiang Fei would have no choice but to kill him in order to keep his secret safe. After all, letting Han Tianyu down was better than letting himself or even his family down. If things really reached such a stage, he would have to put his own interests first. Since we're done here, let's go. It's my first time here in the capital, bring me around. Jiang Fei said to Han Tianyu with a smile. Although he planned to make Han Tianyu tell him everything, Jiang Fei did not want to do it here. As this was a restricted military area, there were listening devices everywhere, so it was not a safe place. Mm -mm -mm. We should definitely go somewhere. There are many nice places to visit in the capital. Han Tianyu did not suspect anything. He left the restricted military zone with Jiang Fei. They started to explore the capital. 
Han Tianyu was dedicated to being a tour guide, but Jiang Fei's mind was somewhere else. When they finally reached a park, Jiang Fei carefully sensed his surroundings to confirm that nobody else was around. He also made 0541 scan the nearby area to confirm that there were no androids following them. Then, he gave Ariel a look. Buzz, Ariel's hands flashed with an electric spark, creating a strong electromagnetic field which instantly made all electronics within the range of 10 meters stop working. Mm -hmm. Jiang Fei nodded. After going through so much, Jiang Fei was now much more matured. In order to prevent any listening devices from picking their conversations up, Jiang Fei had to ensure he made full preparations. What's wrong? Han Tianyu naturally noticed Jiang Fei and Ariel's unusual behavior. Brother Yu, you've been hiding things from me, right? Jiang Fei laughed. Air, Han Tianyu felt guilty when he heard Jiang Fei's laughter. He had really been in a daze recently. In the beginning, Han Tianyu was firmly on Jiang Fei's side. He was extremely smart, so he knew that it would not end well if he continued to be a fence sitter. Since he had chosen Jiang Fei, he decided that he would spare no effort in supporting Jiang Fei until the very end. So, he did not report many things about Jiang Fei to his superiors. Hence, the high-ranked officials of the country knew little about Jiang Fei. Even the Martial Art Alliance knew more than them. Regarding the Supreme Android Soldier Project, Han Tianyu did not hide it from Jiang Fei on purpose. It was just that this project was in its initial stage. Although Han Tianyu could produce android bodies and equipment, artificial souls were just a conceptual thing at that time. It could not be applied at all, so he himself did not take it seriously. Later, however, there was a breakthrough in the artificial soul technology. The military began to ask him to provide a large number of android bodies and equipment. This was when Han Tianyu realized that a force that could completely confront the metahumans was born. However, Jiang Fei was still at the North Pole then and Han Tianyu could not reach him at all. When Han Tianyu saw Jiang Fei again, Jiang Fei gave him a big gift. Precisely because of this gift, which was a perfectly modified extraterrestrial fighter, and Jiang Fei's unconvincing explanation, Han Tianyu began to suspect that Jiang Fei was an alien or a spy working for the aliens. Although Han Tianyu had chosen to join Jiang Fei's faction before this, he was still an earthling. Even though Han Tianyu was afraid of death, he still had basic conscience. Since he could not fully confirm Jiang Fei's identity, he hesitated. So, Han Tianyu hid information about the Supreme Android Soldier Project from Jiang Fei and did not tell him anything. Hence, Han Tianyu was currently in a difficult position. As it was impossible for him to determine Jiang Fei's identity, he neither wanted to betray Jiang Fei nor continue to support him unconditionally like he did before. He was afraid that he would become an accomplice in the invasion of the Earth by the aliens. Therefore, during this time, Han Tianyu had been observing Jiang Fei quietly, trying to crack his secrets and understand his true identity. If Jiang Fei was really an alien spy, then he would definitely leave Jiang Fei and reveal everything he knew about Jiang Fei. If Jiang Fei had nothing to do with aliens, then he would continue to be loyal to Jiang Fei. As his mind had been filled with such contradictory thoughts, Han Tianyu did not tell Jiang Fei about the Supreme Android Soldier Project. He also did not tell the high-ranking Chinese officials about Jiang Fei. Han Tianyu was naturally shocked when Jiang Fei asked this question directly. It was obvious that Jiang Fei already knew something or that he had already noticed something strange. Otherwise, according to his personality, he would never ask such a question. What? Are you surprised? Seems like we need to find a place where it can talk openly and honestly. Jiang Fei smiled. Then, he waved his hand and the gigantic saber appeared out of nowhere. This is, Han Tianyu was a bit dumbfounded. Although he had never seen Zhuge Shanjin, he had heard about the legend of Zhuge Shanjin. Jiang Fei act of making something appear out of nowhere was also something beyond Han Tianyu's knowledge. Let's go somewhere quiet and talk. Jiang Fei jumped and slammed his feet on the gigantic saber. Ariel followed and stood behind Jiang Fei. The gigantic saber instantly rushed forward. 
Han Tianyu did not even have time to respond. By the time Han Tianyu realized what was happening, Jiang Fei had already picked him up like he was a baby bird. Shortly after, 0541 activated the stealth system and the gigantic saber took off. Chapter 712 Shocked, Han Tianyu's strength was only at the beginning stage of level 2, so he could not fight against Jiang Fei at all. As someone who was afraid of death, he did not dare to fight back anyway. Jiang Fei did not even have to kill him. As long as Jiang Fei released his grip, Han Tianyu would fall from the sky and break into pieces. Very quickly, they arrived at a wilderness on the outskirts of the capital. After landing, Jiang Fei put Han Tianyu aside. Then he kept the gigantic saber. Brother Yu, it's quiet here. Let's talk. Jiang Fei laughed. Ho ho, Ah Fei, what do you want to talk about? Han Tianyu looked calm, but he was actually extremely nervous. He really thought that Jiang Fei was an alien spy and that Jiang Fei was going to kill him. Let's talk about the Supreme Android Soldier Project. Jiang Fei laughed. You know about it? Oh! You're the one that destroyed the underground base in the Northwest. When Han Tianyu heard Jiang Fei say his Supreme Android Soldier Project accurately, he was surprised at first. Then, he instantly put the puzzle together. Yes, I encountered their brainwave attacks in the game, so I tracked them down. Of course, they paid a price for it. Jiang Fei said. I see. Han Tianyu nodded. At first, he did not understand how Jiang Fei found the underground base. However, it turned out that the base only got destroyed because these people looked for trouble. Ah Fei, let's cut to the chase. Although Han Tianyu was also a politician, he was still young. Even though he could also maintain an inscrutable countenance, he was not as calm as Fan Yao and the others. At this time, Han Tianyu was under a lot of pressure as he was facing Jiang Fei. He decided that he would lay all his cards on the table. Even if he ended up dying, it was better than continuing to play this game of cat and mouse. Oh? Go ahead. Jiang Fei laughed. Are you working for aliens? Han Tianyu clenched his fists. It was as if saying this had exhausted him of all his strength. Aliens? So this is what you're worried about? Jiang Fei could not help but laugh. I'm serious. Han Tianyu looked straight into Jiang Fei's eyes. If I told you that I'm indeed an alien, would you believe me? Jiang Fei joked. Yes. Unexpectedly, Han Tianyu took it seriously. He also took two steps back without realizing. I'm kidding. Since you asked this question, he'll show you something today. Jiang Fei smiled. Then, in his heart, he ordered 0541, turn on the barrier system and shield the surrounding space, yes. Captain! 0541 replied, then created a virtual signal and scene. The area where Jiang Fei and Han Tianyu were at became shielded. It was now impossible for any radar signals or satellite cameras to reach this place. Ariel, help me check if there are any flies around. Jiang Fei turned his head and said to Ariel. Although he had decided to be honest with Han Tianyu, he did not want his secrets to be known by anyone else. Okay. Ariel nodded. Then. Her hand sparked and a high-energy electromagnetic storm swept through the area. No more electronics existed within the range of a few kilometers. What's going on? Han Tianyu was dumbstruck. Although Ariel did something big with her powers, Han Tianyu could not tell. He just thought that an electric spark flashed through the girl's hands, then it was over. He had no idea that Ariel had just destroyed all the electronics within the range of a few kilometers. However, what 0541 did was visible to the naked eye. The original starry sky and moonlight were now obscured. There was a slight faint glow in the darkness, but Han Tianyu could not find the source of the light. Watch! Jiang Fei waved his hand. Then, the huge Braveheart fragments in his hands like the civilian R&D lab, bio-experimental lab, arsenal, and more were displayed on this uninhabited piece of land. This. 
Han Tianyu was completely dumbstruck at this time. Looking at the huge buildings in front of him, his mind was blank. These buildings were made of argent special metal. It was obvious that they were extraterrestrial products. Now do you know why I have mastered in alien technology? Zhang Fei laughed. But how did they appear? Han Tianyu asked. Do you see this? Zhang Fei waved his hand at Han Tianyu, showing him the ring on his hand. The legendary interspatial ring? Such a noun instantly appeared in Han Tianyu's mind. You've read too many magical fantasy novels. Jiang Fei smiled and explained, this is a ring made by spatial manipulation. Although it has the same function as the interspatial ring you mentioned, this ring is not a product of magic, but real, legitimate technology, I see. Back when I first took you out to see the world, you stole the Lockheed family's extraterrestrial fragment, didn't you? Han Tianyu instantly remembered the mysterious trail of watermarks on the ship that day. Yes. This ring is the first extraterrestrial fragment I found. From this, I also learned the alien language and gained more knowledge. This is why I'm so familiar with these extraterrestrial technologies. Only half of Jiang Fei's words were true. Of course, he could not tell Han Tianyu everything. I see. Then what about your master? Han Tianyu asked. I don't have a master, it's fake. Jiang Fei shrugged. That Zhuge Shanjin, Han Tianyu said. He's not my master. Jiang Fei laughed. Then who is he? asked Han Tianyu. Do you know the Japanese's biotechnology? Jiang Fei did not immediately answer Han Tianyu. Yes. Han Tianyu nodded. The Japanese could already make a level 4 biohuman just by learning a little biotechnology. I've mastered the entire biotechnology. Do you think it would be difficult for me to create some level 5 biohuman bodyguards? Zhang Fei laughed. I, Han Tianyu's mind was spinning. If Zhang Fei's was telling the truth, then Zhang Fei definitely had at least two level 5 biohuman bodyguards behind him. As Han Tianyu did not know how strong Ariel was, he did not include her. Do you have any other doubts? Zhang Fei asked. Do you have any contact with the aliens? Do they pose any threat to the Earth? Han Tianyu was still the most concerned about this issue. See for yourself. Zhang Fei did not explain. Instead, he let 0541 bring up a projection. The projection showed what 0541 originally told Jiang Fei about planet Namek. It included details about how the artificial black hole went out of control, the destruction of planet Namek, as well as how Braveheart encountered an accident above the Earth, which led to the death of all the crew members and Braveheart crashing into Earth. Phew, seeing that all the aliens were completely dead, Han Tianyu was relieved. It seemed like Jiang Fei had only mastered alien technology and was not colluding with aliens against Earth. If this was really the case, then even if Jiang Fei wanted to dominate the world and become a big dictator, Han Tianyu would support him. Han Tianyu was an out-and-out -out profiteer. As long as it did not touch his bottom line, he would definitely try to maximize his profits. If Jiang Fei really dominated the world, then as Jiang Fei's confidant, his status would undoubtedly rise. This was absolutely beneficial to him. Chapter 713, A Mysterious Phone Call, Ah Fei Are you really telling the truth? Han Tianyu looked at Jiang Fei seriously. He was trying to find the answer he wanted from Jiang Fei's face. Don't worry, all the aliens have died. I only work for myself. Jiang Fei said with certainty. Good. I believe you. Han Tianyu looked at Jiang Fei for a while. From Jiang Fei's young face, he could not see any signs of deceit at all. Considering what he knew and understood about Jiang Fei up until now, Han Tianyu decided to believe everything Jiang Fei had just said. Well, I've already told you everything you wanted to know. Now, I think it's time for you to talk about what I want to know. Jiang Fei laughed. Of course, I can tell you everything I know. But before that, there's still one thing. Han Tianyu said. Then, he suddenly turned around to face the northwest direction and knelt down. 
Today, I, Han Tianyu, solemnly swear that from now on I will stand on Jiang Fei's side. To achieve this, I would use the last of my strength if needed and am willing to die contentedly. If I violate this oath, the gods shall punish me. Han Tianyu swore to the sky. When he saw Han Tianyu acting like this, Jiang Fei glanced at Ariel. Ariel quietly nodded, indicating that Han Tianyu was not lying. Through telepathy, Ariel knew that Han Tianyu's inner thoughts were consistent with his behaviors on the surface. Brother Yu, why are you doing this? I have always regarded you as a brother, it's weird to see you act like this. After Jiang Fei had confirmed that Han Tianyu was really loyal to him, he rushed in front of Han Tianyu in two steps. Then, he pulled Han Tianyu up. After experiencing so many things, Jiang Fei was not the enthusiastic innocent teenager he used to be anymore. However, he still had to learn and grow more. Otherwise, in the metahuman world where strength mattered the most, he would still be killed even if he was strong. Han Tianyu swore with his back facing Jiang Fei, so he naturally did not see the small interaction between Jiang Fei and Ariel. However, he would not care even if he knew about it. Instead, he would feel happy because Jiang Fei had grown so much. After knowing Jiang Fei's secrets, the savvy Han Tianyu became more certain that Jiang Fei had an extremely promising future. Therefore, he did not hesitate to officially declare his loyalty to Jiang Fei in order to gain Jiang Fei's trust and establish his position as Jiang Fei's confidant. Since he had decided to become Jiang Fei's subordinate, Han Tianyu considered his own interests. Naturally, the greater Jiang Fei's achievements in the future, the greater the rise in his status. Therefore, the more mature Jiang Fei became and the more Jiang Fei learned and grew, the more favorable it was for him. Otherwise, if he had to follow a naive boss around, he would be nothing but cannon fodder. After the formal declaration of loyalty to Jiang Fei, Han Tianyu told Jiang Fei everything he knew about the Supreme Android Soldier Project. Currently, the Manda Group was no longer in charge of the Supreme Android Soldier Project. The project had become a military independent project. After the first batch of Supreme Android Soldiers were successful, the military forcibly took all the manufacturing technology and facilities needed to make the metal bodies, weapons, and equipment from the Manda Group. Although the military's behavior had violated the interests of the Manda Group, the Manda Group itself was inextricably linked with the military. Hence, even though Han Tianyu was dissatisfied, he could not change the status quo. So, since the military is in charge of the Supreme Android Soldiers now, does this mean that they've also gotten their hands on the artificial soul technology and android manufacturing technology? Jiang Fei asked. Yes. Han Tianyu nodded. Do you know how many Supreme Android Soldiers the military has now? Jiang Fei asked. About 50 or 60. I'm not very sure myself. Currently, I'm not even in charge of the smelting of super metal anymore, so I don't know anything about the military's progress at all. Han Tianyu shook his head. Okay. Jiang Fei nodded. Han Tianyu was not hiding anything from him anymore, so it seemed like the military had attached great importance to the confidentiality of this matter. Thinking of this, Jiang Fei pondered for a long while. Considering that he still needed to cooperate with the country to fight against the joint army of the United States and the mutants, he did not want to have a fallout with the military now. For the time being, he could only put this matter aside. Right, how are the vampires? Jiang Fei asked. Very obedient. It's like we're rearing a group of pigs. When these vampires were mentioned, Han Tianyu immediately rolled his eyes. These vampires became very well behaved after they fled to China. They were also cooperating very well with the Martial Art Alliance, following all the arrangements. They were being held in a special type of prison used for metahumans. These vampires were very obedient. When it was time, they would eat. When they had nothing to do, they would sleep. Not only did they not cause any trouble, but they were also nice to all the martial artists whenever they had to interact. It was obvious why they were acting this way. They did not want to be chased out. Sigh. Jiang Fei sighed. Currently, the mutants in the European Vatican have teamed up to kill the vampires. 
Therefore, China was the only place that was safe for them. They would not be able to survive anywhere else. So, the vampires then and managed to flee to China obviously cherished this last safe haven. Right, is there any news about the Holy Grail? Jiang Fei asked. No, the vampires who have managed to escape are generally not high-leveled. The highest leveled one is just a Marquis. All of them are so weak. How can the Holy Grail possibly be with them? Han Tianyu shook his head. It seems like we have to start preparing to defend against the mutant's huge army. Jiang Fei shook his head. After such a long time, Count Dracula had still not escaped to China. This meant that there was an 80% chance that this unlucky count had been killed and that the Holy Grail and the first vampire's blood had fallen into the hands of the mutants. Let's go back for now. The shipped energy blocks should have already arrived at the capital. Han Tianyu said. Okay. Let's go. Jiang Fei waved his hand and kept the Braveheart fragments back into the ring. Then, he asked Ariel to get rid of the marks on the ground. Finally, he and Han Tianyu left the wilderness. After returning to the capital, Jiang Fei and Han Tianyu came to an insignificant small warehouse. After they cleared out all the staff who were working there, Jiang Fei saw the energy blocks in the warehouse. As it was used as a brick wall, there were a lot of residues of building materials on top of these energy blocks. After Han Tianyu found out that these energy blocks were extremely expensive, he did not even dare to clean them because he was worried that he would break them. As there were no outsiders, Jiang Fei waved his hand and directly kept these energy blocks into the spatial ring. After some calculation by 0541, Jiang Fei discovered that there were actually more than a thousand and a hundred pieces of these energy blocks, more than he imagined. Just as Jiang Fei finished keeping the energy blocks, a staff member ran into the warehouse. Mr. Han, it's a phone call for you. The staff handed his phone to Han Tianyu. Han Tianyu's phone had been destroyed by Ariel's electromagnetic field when Jiang Fei had a chat with him previously. If Han Tianyu had not come to this warehouse, the caller would not have called someone who was here. Chapter 714, Whereabouts of the Holy Grail, MMM Han Tianyu answered the call without moving away from Jiang Fei. He immediately asked, Who is it? It's me, boss. We have a problem here, it's best if you can come and see it for yourself. The person on the phone made it sound very urgent. What happened? Han Tianyu asked. A vampire just came. It looks like he's someone pretty important, but he's dying. The person on the phone said. Got it! Han Tianyu nodded and then hung up. As Han Tianyu did not move away from Jiang Fei. Although the phone was not on loudspeaker, both Jiang Fei and Ariel who had a sharp sense of hearing heard the conversation between Han Tianyu and the other person. Something's up with the vampires, it's best if we go and have a look. Han Tianyu turned and said to Jiang Fei. Where? asked Jiang Fei. Northwestern border. If we go by plane, Jiang Fei interrupted Han Tianyu before he could finish speaking, what do you mean by plane? Let's go. Jiang Fei gave Ariel a look as he spoke. Mm -mm -mm. Ariel nodded, then grabbed Han Tianyu's shoulder with her left hand and held Jiang Fei's hand in her right hand. Then, the three of them instantly disappeared from the place. Ah. The worker who handed the phone to Han Tianyu was so shocked that he fell to the ground. Three people suddenly vanished into thin air. How was an ordinary human being like him supposed to accept it? Regardless of how frightened that worker was, Jiang Fei and the others appeared on a barren hill in the northwest of China the very next second. Ariel had never been to China's northwestern border, so she was not able to get to the exact location. However, teleporting together with two other people was still easy for someone with level 5 power. I, at this time, Han Tianyu was extremely shocked. Although he did not know where they were at, the sudden teleportation was already enough to shock him. 0541, project a three-dimensional map. Jiang Fei ordered in his heart. Swoosh! A three-dimensional map was projected from the mysterious ring. At the same time, Jiang Fei said to Han Tianyu, Brother Yu, where are the vampires? 
were already at the northwestern border. Han Tianyu looked at the map. A large blue dot above marked their current location. Han Tianyu was shocked that they actually traveled a few thousand miles in a second. Fortunately, he knew how to remain calm and still managed to point out to Jiang Fei the location of the secret prison which held the vampires. Let's go! Jiang Fei gestured Ariel. The next second, Ariel held onto the both of them again and teleported. This time, the three of them directly appeared near the entrance of the prison. When they arrived at the gate, they did not have to use any special means in order to enter because Han Tianyu was around. Boss, were you at Capital just now? The staff here was shocked when he saw Han Tianyu. How long have you been working for me? Han Tianyu asked. For years. The staff replied. You've worked for me for four years and you still don't know that you shouldn't ask about some things? Han Tianyu asked coldly. Sorry, boss. It's my bad. The staff quickly lowered his head and did not even dare to look at Han Tianyu anymore. Bring me to the vampire. Han Tianyu said. Yes, boss. There were other staff members who led them toward the infirmary. Is that vampire still alive? Jiang Fei asked. The staff did not immediately answer after hearing Jiang Fei's question. Instead, he looked at Han Tianyu. Only when Han Tianyu nodded, the staff said, he's still alive, but it's hard to say how long he'll last, it's fine as long as he's still breathing. Jiang Fei nodded. Soon, they arrived at the infirmary in the prison. Jiang Fei saw the vampire, or rather, he saw a part of the vampire. It was hard to tell how heavily injured this vampire was because this guy only had half of his body left. His arms and legs had not only disappeared, but there was also a huge hole in his stomach and his internal organs were missing. If it was not because vampires had great vitality, this vampire would have been dead by now. There would even be flies flying around his body. Give this to him. Jiang Fei took an evil purging pill and two grand restore pills out from the ring. I, the doctor responsible for caring for this vampire, looked at Han Tianyu. Do as he says. Han Tianyu nodded. Okay. The doctor took the pills from Jiang Fei's hands. He did not even have to open the vampire's mouth because half of this vampire's face had been beaten to a pulp. The doctor threw the pills directly into the hole above the vampire's cheek. The evil purging pill instantly disappeared into the vampire's body. The vampire's body glowed with a faint light. Finally, some yellow-black liquid flowed out along the vampire's wounds. Give him the two red ones too, Jiang Fei said. Um, um, um. The doctor then threw the two grand restore pills into the vampire's cheek. In fact, after the yellow-black liquid flowed out, the vampire's wounds began to heal. The vampires originally had superb vitality. Their self-recovery speed was very fast. Without any interruption, he would have fully recovered in a few days' time. Now, however, with the help of Jiang Fei's pills, the vampire's recovery speed became faster. In less than half an hour, all his wounds had healed. Even his internal organs and his limbs had grown back. The regrowing of his limbs had nothing to do with Jiang Fei's pills. It was due to the self-recovery abilities of the vampire himself. Jiang Fei's grand restore pills only speeded up the process. Ah, after a long groan, the vampire finally woke up. I hope I can get some information from him. Jiang Fei muttered to himself. Previously, he had already sensed this vampire's strength. This was a peak level 4 vampire and he was quite powerful. It was likely that he had gone through an extremely rough battle to end up like this. Jiang Fei hoped to get some information about the Holy Grail from him. This place is, it seemed like the vampire who just woke up was not very clear-headed. Black hair, black eyes. Chinese people. I managed to flee to China? The vampire muttered to himself. Yes, you're safe now. Jiang Fei laughed. Thank you. Thank you so much. The vampire said in broken Chinese. Okay, you can speak English, we can understand you. 
Jiang Fei could not stay in the vampire's strange accent. After a few simple questions, Jiang Fei led the topic to the issue he was the most concerned about. Do you know the whereabouts of Countess Beatrice and the Holy Grail? Jiang Fei asked the vampire. Chapter 715, High Risk, High Reward, Dead, They're All Dead, when Countess Beatrice was mentioned, it seemed like the vampire's soul had left his body. What happened? Jiang Fei asked. Sigh. It's over for us vampires, the vampire sighed, then cried and told Jiang Fei everything. After being attacked by the Vatican, Countess Beatrice and her four great dukes ran with the Holy Grail in an attempt to escape danger. Later, they got lucky and met Franco. Through Franco, they learned that China was willing to protect the vampires. Therefore, Countess Beatrice and her four great vampire dukes attempted to flee to China with the Holy Grail. However, nobody knew that a vampire that Franco talked to previously had been captured by the mutants on his way to China. Eventually, the mutants learned that the vampires planned to take refuge in China. So, a giant trap was set up by the mutants and the Vatican near the border of western China and the uninformed Countess Beatrice and her dukes fell right into the trap. One could easily imagine what happened after that. The mutants and the Vatican had a total of four level five powerhouses. Against them, Countess Beatrice died under the hands of a Godblade user. Three other Grand Dukes also died on the spot. The last one managed to flee from the battlefield and enter the territory of China after being seriously injured. As they had gotten their hands on the Holy Grail, the mutants and the masters of the Vatican were not willing to create new problems to complicate the issue. They did not enter Chinese territory to pursue the last great vampire duke, which was why he could escape here and survive. If this is the case, then the Holy Grail has already fallen into the hands of the mutants? Jiang Fei's brow furrowed. Yes. The great vampire duke cried. He did not even dare to ask Jiang Fei to help him get the Holy Grail back. Now, the vampires existed in name only. Only a small number of vampires were fortunate enough to manage to escape into China. It was already a blessing to survive. How could he possibly dare to make a request? Okay, you have a good rest. Jiang Fei waved his hand and left the infirmary with Ariel. Since the mutants had already obtained the Holy Grail, these vampires were now meaningless to Jiang Fei. What do we do with these guys? Han Tianyu quickly followed behind him. Let's just raise them for now. We can afford to anyway. Jiang Fei waved his hand. Although these vampires were useless now, Jiang Fei was not a killer. These vampires knew their current situation very well anyway. They were all extremely obedient and it did not cost much to keep them alive. No problem. Han Tianyu nodded. His family was rich and powerful. Raising a few vampires as pets was no big deal. Things are way more troublesome now. From this guy's injuries, I can tell that they were attacked at least a week ago. If the mutants act fast enough, the first batch of mutants strengthened by biotechnology should already be ready by now. Jiang Fei frowned. What do you mean? Han Tianyu said. I think the mutants and America will attack soon. Jiang Fei said. No way. While Han Tianyu spoke, his phone suddenly rang. Hello, who's this? As this was the phone of the worker at the warehouse previously, Han Tianyu did not know who was calling. Xiao Han, come over now. The person on the other side of the phone only said one thing, then hung up. Who's that? Jiang Fei asked. Fan Yao. Han Tianyu did not hide anything from Jiang Fei. Let's go back. Jiang Fei nodded, then gave Ariel a look. Mm -mm -mm. Ariel reached out to grab Jiang Fei and Han Tianyu, then teleported. A second later, the three of them were already at a secluded park in the capital. Soon, Han Tianyu called two cars. One car took Jiang Fei and Ariel back to the hotel so that they could rest and another car took him to Fan Yao. Jiang Fei expected that Fan Yao would want to meet Han Tianyu. After all, in the eyes of these high-ranked officials, Han Tianyu was sent to Jiang Fei's side as an observer. So, after meeting Jiang Fei this time, 
Fan Yao would definitely want to get some information about Jiang Fei from Han Tianyu. In the hotel, Jiang Fei had nothing to do, so he decided to return to the game. As it was already midnight, Jiang Fei had missed his match. The game committee originally wanted to give Jiang Fei a penalty and suspend him for life. However, considering Jiang Fei's great reputation in the Dark Faction, if they banned Jiang Fei, it might cause the vast majority of the audience to be dissatisfied. So, they just fined him for not showing up. As soon as Jiang Fei returned to the game, Billy Boy and the others sent him messages. Boss, you're finally here. We've been waiting for you the whole time. And Mo Xiaoyu said, Yeah, Guildmaster. We gathered an elite team of 50,000 people as soon as we got online this morning. We've waited for you for so long that it's already noon, Billy Boy complained. Although Jiang Fei had only logged into the game two hours late, half a day had already passed by in the game. As Jiang Fei brought them to do quests yesterday, everyone leveled three times and gained many other rewards. So, when they heard that their great guild master would bring them around clearing quests again today and that there were 50,000 available slots, all the members of Imperial Dragon signed up for it. However, after a party of 50,000 people was assembled, Jiang Fei did not show up. Without Jiang Fei, Billy Boy and Seven Stars Warrior did not dare to accept the quest. Yesterday, everyone clearly saw how difficult the bosses were. There were even Overlord ranked bosses. If Jiang Fei was not here, they would not be able to defeat these bosses at all. So, when Jiang Fei came online today, the whole Imperial Dragon became excited, especially those lucky ones who managed to get a slot in the party. They were all rubbing their hands with glee, waiting for their guild master to lead them. Um, 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 add me in. Seeing that everyone could not wait any longer, Jiang Fei did not delay things any further. After Jiang Fei joined the party, Billy Boy passed the party leader to him. Then, Jiang Fei entered the commander's hall on behalf of everyone to accept the quest. Marshal, I'm here. After entering the commander's hall, Jiang Fei came to Ivan. Um, um, um. Are you guys ready? Ivan asked. I have assembled a strong 50,000 man army. Jiang Fei said. Good. It's time for you all to show me what you got. Ivan laughed. Ding! Quest updated, quest name, supporting the front line. Quest goal, ship 20 known cannons and ammunition to the front line and ensure that these war weapons are not damaged. Quest rewards, all members level plus 2. 1,000 gold coins for all members, unknown equipment reward. Quest penalties, every time a known cannon is destroyed, the gold coin reward is reduced by 20%. If five known cannons are destroyed, there will be no rewards. If the number of destroyed known cannons exceeds five, every next destroyed cannon will cause all members to lose 20% of their current level's experience points. Remarks If less than three cannons are destroyed, the party leader will receive additional rewards. Damn! This is a quest with high risk and high rewards. Jiang Fei's brows lifted up. Since it was a story quest, the rewards were naturally extremely good. The reward of 50,000 people collectively leveling up twice was absolutely tempting. However, if all 20 cannons were destroyed, 50,000 people would collectively lose 3 levels. Chapter 716, Danger is Close, Transport Team is Ready. You are good to go, said Ivan. Understood. I will need to make some preparations before moving out, Jiang Fei replied before heading out of the commander's hall. Outside the hall, Jiang Fei was greeted by one of the NPCs that was part of the convoy. He was just one of the 1,000 NPCs that were in charge of transporting the gnome cannons and ammunitions. While they were many of them, they were only level 50 normal tier farmers. Their fighting capability was almost close to zero. It would be up to Jiang Fei and the other 49,999 players to defend the convoy. Their task was to safely escort the entire convoy to the main camp in the front lines. As long as they had gotten the cannons and ammunition there, Jiang Fei would only need to talk to either Heinz or Frizz to complete the quest and obtain luxury rewards. It's not the same, said Jiang Fei to himself. 
Although this was not the first escort mission that he had accepted, it was not the same as the others. When he was protecting Moreland, he was on a special map where he only needed to stop the enemies from getting close to Moreland. This time, the mission required him to protect a large convoy in an open field. NPCs as well as players from the Light Faction would surely be coming in from all directions. The defensive fight would be chaotic as it would be unpredictable. Guildmaster? Have you accepted the quest? asked Billy Boy when he saw Jiang Fei coming out of the commander's hall. Yeah, I did. But you're not going to like it, said Jiang Fei. What's the quest about? First, we need to get these cannons and ammunition to the front line. Then, we need to make sure that no one destroys the cannons. What's the reward? asked Little Rain. To him and a few others, the task matters not as much as the reward. If everything goes smoothly, everyone who participates in this quest will gain two levels and a mystery equipment reward, said Jiang Fei. He did not bother to mention gold coins since the guild was too rich. Everyone in the guild had known to receive money from time to time depending on their contributions. The guild's treasury was never short of coins. Yeah. Now that's what I call a reward, don't be so sure about it yet. If the mission fails, all of us are going to drop three levels, said Jiang Fei. Heh. With you around, how are we going to fail, said Little Rain as he chuckled. I'm not all-powerful and all-knowing. Even I can make mistakes, said Jiang Fei as he remembered how Isabella and Ariel had died right before him. Anyway, let's get ready. I'll take the lead. Billy, you're in charge of guarding the convoy. Make sure that we are well protected, said Jiang Fei. Commander, sir? Are we going now? asked one of the NPCs of the convoy. Yes, we are. Follow me, said Jiang Fei as he got to the front most of the convoy. Ding! Verger Glider is now transporting important supplies to the Shadow Faction's main camp in the front lines. All players are encouraged to join the soldiers to stop the supplies from being delivered to their destination. Destroying each supply crate would grant you a luxurious reward, just as Jiang Fei's convoy started moving, all players in the Light Faction had received a system notification. The quest required them to venture into the territory of the Shadow Faction. However, since the reward was, as the system notification mentioned, luxurious, players had decided to risk it. For each cannon destroyed, the party will receive a total of 200 million experience points which would be divided equally among the party members. Heck, this is good, hell yeah! We can also kill that verger glider, Head. Yeah. The bounty on his head is far greater than the reward for destroying the cannons, open party here. Feel free to join. In an instant, the light faction was rattled. Many players started to form parties amongst themselves while many other guilds with their own party were ready and waiting. While destroying the cannons came with great rewards, the reward of killing Jiang Fei would be even greater. The reward given directly by the Divine Light God would definitely be worth the trouble. Some had even thought that they might even get themselves a hidden class or even better, a hidden race. By the time Jiang Fei started moving as a whole, players in the Light Faction had already formed their parties and were on their way to stop him. Sea of players could be seen getting out of the fortresses from the Light Faction. There were still many more in the fortresses trying to form a party, even though they would need to enter the territory of the Shadow Faction. The average player level had surpassed level 65. They would not need to worry about being overwhelmed by level 70 NPCs. At this point, they would not have to worry about the level suppression system affecting them. They could easily come in like a locust swarm to destroy any NPCs that dared stand in their way. Something is not right, said Jiang Fei to Billy Boy. What could possibly be wrong? Even if someone from the Light Faction were to come and disturb us, they would be fighting us in our own turf. At most, they would send in a small team of thieves, said Billy Boy. Something is wrong, but I can't put a finger on it, said Jiang Fei worriedly. Relax. If anyone dares to stand in our way, I will blast them with my forbidden spell, said Little Rain confidently. Every other player beside Jiang Fei alone was extremely relaxed and nonchalant about this escort mission. 
Even though they knew that there would be a penalty if they failed the mission, the convoy was still traveling in the Shadow Faction's territory. Perhaps that was the reason they were so relaxed. I can't be certain until I know it is certain. It'll leave the convoy to you, Billy Boy. It'll be flying around to check the surroundings, said Jiang Fei as he summoned the EVOL. Sky Gliding Dragon Jiang Fei was currently in an open field with no mount restrictions. Having summoned the Sky Gliding Dragon, Jiang Fei and Akat Series hopped on it and flew high and far to check on the surrounding. It had been two hours since he had started moving and yet there was nothing going on. It was quiet and peaceful. Everything went smoothly as the convoy had completed 35% of the entire trip. At this point, instead of being relaxed, Jiang Fei grew more anxious by the minute. Miss Rosette, are you in the Demon Dragon Fortress? asked Jiang Fei in a message to Rosette Rose. Yes, I am. What's up? Rosette Rose had already treated the Demon Dragon Fortress like her home as she had never left the place. She was, after all, the chief of management of the guild. As such, she had only trained her level to be sufficient enough to enter the faction map. Being at level 40, she had no reason to leave the fortress or she would be killed by a normal tier monster. Go to the army barracks and find Hua Mulan and Silphi. Tell them that I might have trouble. Have them to prepare an army before finding me en route to the main camp in the front line, said Jiang Fei. Got it. Do you have any other requests? Asked Rosette Rose. No. Be quick, the entire convoy might be in trouble. I'm not sure. But I trust my gut feeling, Rosette Rose did not ask any more questions as she headed to the barracks to inform Hua Mulan and Silphi about Jiang Fei's situation. Miss Casanova, please gather all combat class players in the guild. Get them ready to fight and gather close to where I am now, said Jiang Fei to Lady Casanova in another message. The current headcount of Imperial Dragon was at over 70,000 players, of which over 50,000 were combatants and the others were non-combatants. Even though Jiang Fei had already led exactly 49,999 players, he feared that it would not be enough. After he had Rosette Rose and Lady Casanova to work, Jiang Fei was still feeling uneasy. He then sent a message to Happy Drunk. I need help from your guild. Please gather as many combat class players and come over to my position. In return, I will give you a fortress, said Jiang Fei in the message. Chapter 717, The Appetizer, A Plate of Freshly Baked Forbidden Spells It'll take your word for it, said Happy Drunk. Of course, since when did I ever break a promise, said Jiang Fei. I will get my men with you in 30 minutes. Send me your coordinates, said Happy Drunk. Although he was not showing it, he was beyond happy. A fortress was not something that one could easily get. Not everyone could get their hands on a fortress. Jiang Fei was a special case since he had a huge head start. Others would find it hard. For example, if Happy Drunk were to suddenly get himself an empty fortress and claim it, other guilds would fight him for it. Before Happy Drunk could even set up the fortress defense, other guilds would have already decimated his fortress. Before he could even defend against the Light Faction, players from the Shadow Faction would have destroyed it. Every player then was from major cities. Who did not have enemies? It was a zero-sum game. If I don't get one, you don't get one either. In the end, the total fortresses that were built in both the Light and Shadow Factions were no more than ten. One of them was Jiang Fei's own Demon Dragon Fortress, the strongest fortress that was built on the faction map. Compared to Jiang Fei's, other fortresses were nothing but fragile Lego contraption that could fall at any time. Many of them had not even finished their core buildings. Demon Dragon Fortress was able to be so strong because of Jiang Fei's early head start. By the time players were able to enter the faction map, Jiang Fei had basically finished building the defensive walls not forgetting the hidden class constructor, Beansprout. With the ever-efficient manager, Miss Rosetta Rose helping Beansprout by providing as many materials he needed, the fortress was built to stand against siege attacks. The towers that were built by Beansprout had powerful offensive attacks that would make anyone who dared to come close run back to their mama. 
The fortress was just like a stationary dragon. Leave it alone and it grows. However, if you dare disturb it, expect nothing but utter destruction. Jiang Fei had even installed two altars inside the fortress that would provide a powerful boon to all allies. The demon dragon fortress position and its prowess made it hard for any light faction enemies to even try to invade the shadow faction. If they wanted to get close to the demon flame fortress, they would have to get through the demon dragon fortress first. The aristocrats were doing very well for the past few months. Although they had made good expansion, they were still not able to claim any fortress on the faction map for themselves. One thing that Jiang Fei had always forgotten was that Han Tianyu had not logged into the game for many, many months. Due to several issues in the real world, Han Tianyu had thoroughly forgotten about the game. To begin with, the reason he had played the game was to get closer to Jiang Fei. Now that his relationship with Jiang Fei was stronger than ever, there was no need for him to bother Jiang Fei in the game. Jiang Fei had never bothered to inform Han Tianyu the importance of the game. Hence, from Han Tianyu's point of view, Jiang Fei playing the game was just a means of relaxation. There was no need for him to join Jiang Fei anymore. Hence, while Happy Drunk was on cloud 9, Han Tianyu's mind was lost in the clouds. Because of his prolonged absence from the game, the burden of leadership of the guild had fallen onto Happy Drunk. Without the support of the rich folk, the aristocrats had not been at its top form for many months now. Back then, whenever a problem came up, Han Tianyu would use his money to solve it. If there was something he did not like, he would use his money to go around it. If anyone dared to oppose his guild, he would load his diamond cannon with his cash as ammunition to blast them away. When Han Tianyu was still leading the guild, no one dared to oppose him. However, now that Han Tianyu's presence in the game was gone, the guild was forced to do things the normal way. No one could forget that the aristocrats was an ally of the Imperial Dragon. Back then, when Imperial Dragon was still a growing little bird, the aristocrats was there to help them, to nurture them to become the phoenix they were today. Sadly, other pug players did not care about that. All they wanted was to join the strongest guild. The best would only join the best. Hence, other new players tend to flock to the lousier guild, the aristocrats. While Imperial Dragon was over 80,000 members strong, the aristocrats had only over 55,000 members. If there was a guild leaderboard in the Shadow Faction, the aristocrats would be in the top 20 list, while Imperial Dragon would always be at the top. Jian Fei asked the aristocrats for help because Happy Drunk and Jian Fei were close. At a certain point, one could say that Jian Fei had faith in Happy Drunk. This escort mission was too important for anyone to be slacking. Once the mission failed, everyone who had participated in this mission would lose three levels. Jian Fei did not dare to ask other guilds for help, especially since they might bear a grudge toward them and could purposely sabotage the mission to see them fail and lose their hard-earned experience. When he was done with Happy Drunk, Jiang Fei continued to roam in the sky, keeping an eye on anyone or anything that came close to the convoy. On the ground, Billy Boy had strategically assigned many members to guard each side of the convoy. Billy Boy took the lead while Seven Star Warrior was guarding the rear. The entire convoy was moving extremely slowly. Even though Jiang Fei had called two guilds for help, having to instantly mobilize tens of thousands of players was not something that could be done in a jiffy. Still unbeknownst to Jiang Fei, players of the Light Faction had gathered and had already started to hunt for the convoy. The reinforcements from the Shadow Faction were still gathering. Half an hour later, Jiang Fei, who was flying in the sky had finally noticed something. A white pillar of light that was as wide as the Empire State Building flashed somewhere far away. After the white pillar of light dissipated, an army of 40,000 soldiers emerged. Stop the convoy! Enemies incoming, cried Jiang Fei from the top of his lungs. Stop the wagons, cried Seven Star Warriors and Billy Boy at the same time. The entire group of 50,000 players of Imperial Dragon started to fan out and form a circular defensive formation. Jiang Fei flew in closer to examine his enemies and found that they were NPC soldiers, not players. It seemed that they had just encountered the first wave of enemies. I'll try my best to hold them back. Little Rain, 
stand by and get ready to cast your forbidden spell, said Jiang Fei before speeding off into the clouds. Billy Boy acknowledged Jiang Fei's order and immediately got into action. Boys! It's time to protect the fireworks. Little Rain, do your thing. Tanks, square formation around the fireworks, cried Billy Boy. Almost immediately, a tank class player emerged from the group and formed the 33 formation with Little Rain at the center. As the 40,000 NPC soldiers got closer and closer, Jiang Fei landed his dragon somewhere close to them and immediately dismissed it. He pulled up his bow and started to attack. Like a machine gun, Jiang Fei's insane attack speed had sent many arrows out into the sky in a few seconds. Like a shower of arrows, each of Jiang Fei's arrows had enough attack power to kill one soldier each. The problem was with the number of enemies. Even though Jiang Fei's killing speed was insanely fast, Jiang Fei was only able to kill 8 soldiers per second. It would take him quite some time to clean out 40,000 soldiers. Even though he was able to kill less than 500 soldiers in a minute, it would take him more than one hour to kill all 40,000 enemies. At this point, Jiang Fei summoned the Sky Gliding Dragon again to help him block a few enemies from advancing. Coupled with the fallen bodies, the army's movement speed was slightly slowed down. Five minutes into the battle, Jiang Fei was only able to kill over 2,500 soldiers. Although the numbers were insane, it was only a tiny chisel to the entire army's prowess in numbers. Big boss! Time to get away, cried Little Rain as he warned Jiang Fei of his incoming forbidden spell. Apocalyptic Scorch A small fireball was released from Little Rain's magic staff toward the center of the army. The fireball then made it into the ground where it exploded with a bang. Flame came out spewing from beneath the earth, destroying the NPC soldiers. As Little Rain leveled up, he continued to farm more equipment that could boost his forbidden spell. One of the stronger equipment he had was the ring that Jiang Fei had given to him, the Ring of Decimation. Together with other equipment that he had farmed on his own, he had managed to increase his forbidden spell's damage output, casting range and area of effect range. Compared to when he had first used the spell, Little Rain's current apocalyptic scorch was at least five to six times more potent. Chapter 718, Incoming, the Pillars of Flames had incinerated the NPC soldiers, killing them so fast that they could not even feel anything. Little Rain's level was already high enough that his damage was not suppressed. With so many powerful equipments and the skill's own 10 times power output, instantly killing the level 70 NPC soldiers was only expected. It would only be weird if he was not able to. After the skill was cast, only less than 2,000 soldiers remained. Jiang Fei took his time to slowly kill them all one by one. Only when Jiang Fei reported again after killing every single NPC soldier, Seven Star Warrior and Billy Boy relieved the players that were guarding the convoy and returned to the normal formation. More incoming! Do not get too comfy just yet, said Jiang Fei as he returned to the sky. If the first wave of enemies was defeated, the next one will arrive soon. As Jiang Fei predicted, not long after the convoy had made a slight advancement, another pillar of light blasted down from the sky and 40,000 more soldiers appeared to attack. Little Rain, how's your mana? Jiang Fei asked. Enough for only one more. After that, it'll be emptied, said Little Rain who was busy taking in as many mana potions as humanly possible. Despite having a large mana pool, restoring mana was not as easy as restoring health. If only I can pass the cauldron of spirit to him. Jiang Fei muttered to himself. Unfortunately, the cauldrons were character locked items. Only through death could he give the cauldron to Little Rain. While it was a tempting idea, Jiang Fei could not afford to die. Even though dying in the faction map would not cause experience points to drop and even equipment that was dropped on death could be recollected easily, Jiang Fei's death would mean the death of Akat series. Due to the contract with her, if Jiang Fei died, so would Akat Series. Unlike Jiang Fei, Akat Series' death was permanent. Even though she was not as close as how Isabella was to Jiang Fei, he did not want to sacrifice Akat Series just because he wanted to give the Cauldron of Spirit to Little Rain. Let loose, well worry about your mana later, said Jiang Fei. Alone, 
Jiang Fei's killing speed was too slow. If he had let even one of the NPC soldiers get past him, it would cause a chain effect. Like a broken dam, more and more NPC soldiers would break past his defense line and move toward the convoy. That would still be fine, but what if players decided to join the NPC soldiers in attacking? All right, said Little Rain as he started to chant. Billy Boy quickly organized the same defensive formation around Little Rain to protect him. In a few minutes, almost all 40,000 soldiers were killed while Jiang Fei flew from the skies to clear the strays. Little Rain, what is the ETA for the next forbidden spell? Jiang Fei asked. In about half an hour, said Little Rain as he was already chugging down mana potions. Jiang Fei frowned. He would have to start thinking of another method to clear the NPC soldiers. Thirty minutes to stall, it should not be a lot of trouble. Ten minutes after the second wave, the atmosphere was silent. It was so quiet that Jiang Fei could not help but feel extremely worried. Just as Jiang Fei wanted to fly further into the distance, a flash of white light came in and 40,000 NPC soldiers spawned. All magicians, except Little Rain, to the front. Hunters and other Bao users follow up. Everyone else, hold your position, cried Jiang Fei as he took the frontmost position far ahead of the absolute defense line. While he was stalling the NPC soldiers from advancing, Billy Boy and Seven Star Warrior had started to work and organize the players around the convoy to form a defensive formation. Tanks form two lines in the front. Healers stay behind them. Thieves and bandits roam around, kill fast and kill many. Make sure to keep an eye out for players from the life faction. Everyone else, stay frosty, melee DPS players, stay in formation. Protect the convoy from any incoming players, Jiang Fei was pleased to see how Billy Boy and Seven Star Warrior were working extremely well together. Concurrently, he was shooting arrows as fast as he could but he was not able to kill fast enough to make a difference. Even though he did not want to, he had to withdraw step by step. By the time the NPC soldiers had entered the magician's attacking range, Billy Boy had initiated the attack. Magicians AoE Skills Bow users Shoot down as many as you can. Do not waste your skills on the front. Let the guildmaster take them down. Focus on the back, cried Billy Boy. Spells were released into the sky, like fireworks, before turning into a powerful explosion that killed the enemies in large areas. At the same time, all archers were releasing as many arrows as they could, as they were required to shoot the targets at the back. The archers had to aim their arrows high up in the sky to avoid killing the enemies in the front. At that point, the arrows in the air had formed a blanket so thick that it covered the sky. There was no need to aim, any arrows that were shot would surely hit an enemy. It was an orchestra of destruction. Arrows and spells were whistling through the air as they fell and killed the enemies. At this point, the NPC soldiers were already facing off the tanks. To support and protect the attacks behind them, the tanks would have to face the soldiers without killing them in order to prevent them from moving forward. Rows of healers were constantly healing and casting buffs to hold the tanks in place. As long as they were alive, no NPC soldiers would pass the barricade. Hold on for a little longer, cried Jiang Fei when he noticed more than half of the NPC army were already killed. However, just as he could finally have room to breathe, he heard the sound of a blade piercing through flesh coming from behind him. G-R-A-H, Stealth. There's someone here, be advised, players from the light faction are killing the tanks in the front line. Due to the tight defensive formation created by Billy Boy and Seven Star Warrior, no players were able to sneak into the convoy. The only way to infiltrate the convoy was to kill the tanks that were blocking their way one by one until there was an entry. In that instant, as many as 500 players were killed. Even though Imperial Dragon had armed their players extremely well, they were not able to withstand a combo attack from five players simultaneously. Don't panic! Hunters! Flash bang! cried Billy Boy. He was the captain of the PvP warfare. He would know just how to counter stealth assault. Pew! Bang! Arrows with explosives were fired onto the ground and with a bright flash of light, silhouettes of stealth players could be seen. 
Now, the tanks had something to do. Instead of blindly lifting their shields up, they could down swing their swords and axes to kill the players. Seven Star Warriors started to pick out several strong players and lead them to the front to finish off the enemy players one by one. In no time at all, almost all stealth players that were detected were killed, leaving only NPC soldiers. Although they were able to kill many Imperial Dragon players, they were not able to make an impact on the defense of the convoy. Players that were downed were quickly replaced by tanks in the backline. Priest, revive the dead. Everyone else, keep pushing forward. Players are starting to attack soon, cried Billy Boy. Even though the enemy bandits and assassins had taken down several of their tanks, it did not pose much of a trouble to the defense line as there were enough priests to go around reviving players. However, if stealth players were starting to appear, that meant that there would be an army of players coming to attack soon. Chapter 719 Cannon Fodders The bandits and assassins should not be a problem for the near future as there was no respawn point for players from the light faction anywhere close. To get back to where the convoy was, they would have to respawn on the light faction map, make their way to the logistics officer to receive a free set of equipment and run all the way back. In faction maps, dying would not deduct a player's experience points. However, they would still lose all their equipment. Even though the NPC would provide players with free equipment, it was only a green graded tier with SH asterisk T tier attributes. It was so bad that some white graded equipment might have been better. However, it was free and it was better than running into the battlefield but naked. In a large battle, confident players would go in with their best equipment, with confidence that they would not die. Anyone else would unequip their own personal equipment and store it somewhere else and put on the free equipment given by the NPC. Dying with the free equipment dropped would not be a loss. With this idea, the bandits and assassins that were killed by Imperial Dragon had dropped nothing but greens. The equipment that were dropped were so worthless that they had only cost one copper coin. It would not even be used for dismantling to be broken down into something useful. It was truly a trash tier equipment. Billy Boy sighed heavily. Seems they will try and use the Zerg Swarm tactic, said Billy Boy when he noticed a sea of green graded equipment lying on the ground. He understood that the enemy will not mind dying as long as they could deal some damage to the convoy. It was a good strategy since they had nothing to lose. While they could respawn, again and again, they would not be losing anything but time while the manpower of the Imperial Dragon will be slowly chiseled away. Ignoring the threat of the bandit and assassins, for now, Billy Boy returned to focus on the formation since he will be expected a wave of players coming to them. At this point, Jiang Fei and a few of other range attackers were cleaning up the remaining NPC soldiers. Before they could even finish mopping the battlefield, a new batch of 40,000 NPC soldiers had spawned. So soon? Jiang Fei roared angrily. If waves of soldiers will only keep on spawning like that, the convoy would not be reaching their destination by the time the server shut downs for the day. Being mad was useless since the NPC soldiers will only keep on coming. In no time at all, before the tanks of the Emperor Dragon could even fully recover, the NPC soldiers had already started to come close. Jiang Fei had no choice but to charge in. The same tactic was applied this time as well. However, I spotted him. He's right there. Sandwiched between the Imperial Dragon and the NPC soldiers, go get them, let's do this, have no fear, we have more players on our side. We will kill him today, heck yeah. We can die ten times over and drop nothing but trash. As long as we can kill Jiang Fei. Jiang Fei had spotted the incoming sea of players that was emerging from the horizon. All of them were from the Light Faction and there were at least 300,000 of them. These sea of players were only the first and fastest player that had managed to party up. They mainly consisted of small to medium-sized guilds and a few other pug players that ganged together. They were weak and greedy to the core. They fear that other larger guild will take down Jiang Fei before they could and would not wait any longer to strategize properly. This is bad. Little Rain, how long until the next forbidden spell, cried Seven Star Warrior when he spotted the sea of players. Even though they were weak, they had the numbers. 
300,000 against 50,000 was nothing to be relaxed about. If Billy Boy did not give out the order, no one is allowed to fight back. In accordance with Jiang Fei's order, they must stay with the convoy to protect it at all cost. Fifteen minutes, cried Little Rain with a bottle of mana potion dangling at the side of his mouth. F asterisk CK this. Well go all out. Tanks, circle formation. DPS, healers, prioritize enemies that are closer to the tanks, cried Billy Boy. He quickly conveyed his order to Seven Star Warrior and have him to coordinate with him. It was a test of cooperation and teamwork. Even with superior equipment, skill, and player level, being outnumbered had placed them in a tough position. Bandits and Assassin are to come back to the convoy right now, said Seven Star Warrior in the party channel. There were too many enemies coming at them. Even if the bandits and assassins could take down players, they will be killed as soon as they had killed someone. It was not a good trade since the Imperial Dragon will be giving out superior equipment in exchange for a few enemies' lives. Look! Ha! It's really only 50,000 players, heh. If we destroy only one cannon, it's 200 million experience points. All right, boys, the jackpot is right there, heh. That bunch of pipsqueak had dared to call themselves the best guild? All of them are just dogs raised by Jiang Fei. Let's kill them all and get their equipments for ourselves. Let's go. Yeah, why aren't you going? Why should I? You're much stronger than I am. You should lead the charge, stupid. I don't want to become the cannon fodder. Even though they clearly had more players on their side, the army of players had dared not to charge into the fight. They were all cowardly players that even in a herd, they had dared not to step forward. All of them wanted to take advantage of the situation and let anyone else to be the cannon fodder while they would reap the benefits for themselves. Heh! Delay! Delay! In ten minutes, he'll blast all of you to hell, cried Little Rain when he saw how the players of the Light Faction were arguing amongst themselves. Humph, spineless cowards, Billy Boy scoffed. If they were not tasked to protect the convoy, Billy Boy had the utmost confidence in defeating the army of 300,000 players. Why are we stalling? If the Imperial Dragons had dealt with the NPC soldiers, we would only be digging out graves, good idea. Please lead the way. We will be right behind you, behind my butt. Why are you not going? Everyone knew the concept of becoming the cannon fodder and no one was willing to charge first. That was the disadvantage of being a pug player without a dedicated guild. There was no teamwork, no leader, no commander. Pug player fight for themselves and no one else. Hence, even though they know that if the Imperial Dragon had cleared the NPC soldiers, they would only be losing their real cannon fodder, yet none of them would willing to go. By the time the NPC soldiers had less than half of them left, someone amongst the army of 300,000 players had come out. A bunch of sore losers, said that player. He was the guild master of a medium-sized guild. Without waiting, he commands his own army of 50,000 players to charge into the battlefield. Look! A guild has taken the lead. Let's go! Go! As soon as the mid-sized guild had taken the lead, the other pug players instantly followed behind. From afar, they looked like they were coming in an arrow formation. Even though no one wants to be the cannon fodder, there were only 20 cannons in the convoy. If one guild that had taken the lead destroyed them all, there would be none left for the others. Being greedy to the core, they would not allow them to reap all the benefits to themselves. Stop, said the guild master in his guild channel as soon as he had entered the attack range of Imperial Dragon. He had already predicted this. He had only wanted to give the impression that he will be taking the lead. Hence, when he saw that his plan was working, he stopped right at the crucial moments to let the other stupid player behind to charge in front of him. Chapter 720 Baited and Ruined Those that were baited into charging forward had realized it too late. They were already within the attack range of the Imperial Dragon's defenders. Unfortunately, they could not retreat as there were too many players were behind them blocking their way. On the one hand, they could go forward to attack, on the other, they could just run sideways, still be within the attack range of the Imperial Dragon, and get themselves killed. Cataclysm Nova 
I shall hold this against you. Mark my works, I shall have my revenge, said the poor guild master that was baited into charge first. With no choice in hand, he had chosen to proceed to fight until the last member of their guild dies. Heh. You can bark all you want. You had only gotten what you deserve for trying to take advantage of me. Am only serving you the same treatment that you tried on me, said Cataclysm Nova to the baited guild master that was trapped in between Cataclysm Nova's guild and Jiang Fei's. Ignore the fraud. We shall proceed, cried the unfortunate guild master as he led his guild to their death under the attacks of Jiang Fei's imperial dragon. At the same time, Cataclysm Nova had led his guild members to follow loosely from behind. With someone taking all the damage for him, Cataclysm Nova's guild will suffer minimal damage. Since he was charging in second, Cataclysm Nova was not worried about reaping the rewards. Tanks! Hold them off. Healers, focus only on the tanks. DPS, if you take damage, run back and heal yourself using potions. Do not demand heals from the healers. Billy Boy roared. He was at his best in such a war. Although defensive warfare was not his forte, he had still done a good job at commanding the entire guild. At this point, due to the sheer number of players and NPC soldiers, the Imperial Dragon was forced to focus on a passive defensive tactic. All the tanks had their shield held in front to form an unmoving barricade. All their movements were rigid and instantaneous. Every time Billy Boy gave out an order, everyone, including the healers will move instantaneously. At the second when the buff on the tanks had expired, the supporter and healers will instantly recast the buffs to support the tanks. The cooperative level for Imperial Dragon could be said to be at the maximum. Compared to the messy, uncoordinated formation of the enemy, Imperial Dragon was rock solid. Attacks from the Imperial Dragon had never stopped since the start of the fight. The death per second was by the thousands. Anyone who dared to come closer to the tanks will be killed. That is for certain. Another certainty was the fact that thousands of deaths per second were insignificant since the enemy had over 300,000 head. If it was a guild, thousands of deaths per second was a serious matter. Especially the one of the guilds that had, unfortunately, be baited to charge head first. As soon as they reached within attack range, they had already lost more than 40,000 players out of 60,000 members. By the time they had reached the front of the tanks of Imperial Dragon, all of the guilds were killed. Despite being able to attack and be attacked, players and NPC differs greatly in many factors. While players can inflict very powerful damage, NPCs had an incredible higher health points. The NPC soldiers that Jiang Fei was fighting against were at level 70 elite tier. At the same time, he was dealing with many players, coming from all sorts of guilds, small or big, it matters not if they were only level 65 and equipped with extremely weak equipment. Their health points was so low that they had only one-third of the NPC soldiers' health points. Put Jiang Fei aside and stop attacking, members of the Imperial Dragon would still be able to one-hit kill any random enemy player. The loss of combatants of the Light Faction was not small. One mid-sized guild was entirely decimated almost less than 30 seconds as they tried to attack the tanks. Even so, the number of enemies was still somewhat the same. Thanks to the sacrifice of the unfortunate guild, players that came from behind had formed a buffer that will never be going away for some time unless Imperial Dragon could increase the number of attackers. Two sides of the faction had clashed. With melee attacks coming in from the Light Faction, the number of casualties had only increased for the Shadow Faction. As soon as the first tank falls, more followed. Even though Billy Boy was extremely efficient in monitoring gaps in the front line and replaced the gap with a warrior or a melee class with higher health points, he could not prevent the speedily increasing death rate. Unlike the enemy, with every death for the Imperial Dragon, the stronger would the enemy be. Rain. ETA. Billy Boy roared. At this point, the front line was getting incredibly unstable. Desperate for a solution, Billy Boy turned to Little Rain for hope. Seven minutes. Seven more minutes. Little Rain cried back. SH asterisk T. We need to hold on. Healers, you're the last hope we've got, 
cried Seven Star Warrior as he rushed to the front line to replace one of the fallen tanks. As a player that had an undefeated record in PvP battles, Seven Star Warrior was killing like a machine as soon as he got into the front line. Seven Star Warrior had the privilege to be one of the top deck in the guild. He had his own personal healers with him all the time. With high health points and attack, unless he was facing an equally strong opponent, no one could bring him down. Not by a long shot. I need five groups of warriors in the right wing defense line, said Billy Boy. Both Billy Boy and Seven Star Warrior were both higher officials in the guild. Even so, there was a difference in authority. Seven Star Warrior had always been leading PvE groups into dungeons and open field boss. Billy Boy, on the other hand, was a meister when it comes to coordinating PvP battles, small or large. For this escort mission, Jiang Fei had given Billy Boy the highest level of authority, second only to him. Is seven minute long? Depends on the context. Enjoying a cup of noodle, not long enough. Waiting for Little Rain to cast Forbidden Spell in such a dire situation? Too long. The number of tanks defending the front was dropping faster than flies. At this point, all of the tank remaining had grown extremely tired. Jiang Fei and a large portion of the front line were tanking and defending against both players and NPC soldiers. Having to divide their entire troops to fight against two sides was extremely taxing to the Imperial Dragon. Just hold a little long. It's about time for us to strike back, said Billy Boy in the party channel. Left wing. Requesting three groups of healers in the left wing, cried Seven Star Warrior to Billy Boy. He was fighting against players. Even though the defense line against them was still going strong, the healers that were posted there were running dry of mana. Once a healer runs out of mana, they would be less useful than rocks in the roadside. Worse, without a healer, tanks will be sitting ducks that will be skewer alive. Not much longer. Not much longer. Billy Boy muttered to himself. Members of the Imperial Dragon were dropping like flies. At this point, almost everyone was fighting and not a single one was resting. Even those that were supposed to restoring their mana had joined the fight simply by whacking with normal attacks whilst chugging on mana potions. Even so, the pressure in the defense line was growing greater by the second. No more. We cannot hold on any longer. Little Rain, use your mana crystal, cried Billy Boy. The right wing defense line was breaking and the left wing was losing their tanks as they speak, if either one of the defense lines was broken through, the entire convoy will fall. All right, said Little Rain. Mana Crystal is a kind of last resort when a magician runs out of mana. Upon use, Mana Crystal will instantly restore 20% of a magician's mana point. However, creating such an item was extremely costly and complicated. Moreover, the item was limited to only one per magician at a time. Using one now means he would not have any trump card left. Even though he felt a little waste for using it now, the situation had called for it. Even though he could wait for just another five minutes to have enough mana to cast the forbidden spell, waiting until then would only expose the entire guild to imminent danger. Crack! Little Rain took out the mana crystal and break it. In that instant, Little Rain had instantly recovered over 60,000 points of mana. Without wasting any more precious time, Little Rain started to cast the Forbidden Spell. As soon as he did, fire magic had started to flow towards his character. That made all other magicians, friend or foe, within 1,000 meters to know that someone was casting a powerful fire-based spell. Oh no! Someone is casting a Forbidden Spell, cried one of the magicians from the Light Faction. Charge in now. We cannot let him cast the forbidden spell. Find him. Stop him. The news got out quick that someone in the convoy was casting a forbidden spell. As soon as it did, everyone in the light faction panicked. Even the guild's master had started to figure out ways to break past the defense line in order to stop the caster. If Little Rain was allowed to cast the forbidden spell, everyone will be killed. Chapter 721 the reinforcement has arrived, the pressure was real. Seven Star Warrior, who was now fighting in the front line against the players, was at the verge of falling. 
however, in that moment of desperation. The chance of Little Rain's forbidden spell had instantly boosted their morale. All that was weak and weary had summoned their last strength to defend through the last fight before the forbidden spell striked. Change of plans. It's full-on defensive now. Prioritize using disabling skills over damaging. Lower the enemy's combat efficiency. Reduce the death rate of our own. It's all about survival now. Leave the killing to Little Rain, said Billy Boy in the party chat channel. Sir, yes sir, cried everyone in unison. Spells turned around. Instead of exploding shrapnel and piercing icicles, instant debuff spells were used over and over. The magicians and rangers were typically excelled in this field. Poison, slow, silent, freeze, and many other types of debuffs were cast out to significantly lower the opponent's attack. Even though by doing it, they had reduced their kill rate down to almost zero, the death rate of Imperial Dragon had dropped from more than 10 players per second to one player or even less per second. The death rate dropped by such a large margin because of the weakened enemies. Tanks were able to hold on for much longer since most of the opponent attacks could not even penetrate their defense. When little to no damage was taken, the healers were having a better time coordinating their healing, spending less mana allowed them to last longer before needing to be replaced. Where is that magician? We can't even reach behind the tanks. There's no way we can find the caster. Trash. You lots are nothing but trash. Must I do everything myself? One by one, guild masters of the light faction side grew frustrated at their slow rate of progression. Even so, there was nothing that they could do. No one in their small guild had the capabilities to stop Little Rain. Unlike Imperial Dragon, they do not have anyone with super long sniping skills or forbidden spells of their own. If they could not break past the first obstacle that was the tanks in the front, only death awaited them. Five minutes later, Little Rain's chant stopped. Everyone in the Imperial Dragon had goosebumps when he stopped chanting as they know what came next. Forbidden spell, apocalyptic scorch. A professional guild master would have known the capability of their own guild. They should have already started evacuating the front lines the moment they were unable to find the forbidden spell caster. Inversely, these light faction guilds and pug players had formed an extremely tight formation in order to form a spear formation to take down the tanks of Imperial Dragon. Although it was a good formation it was also the cause of their downfall. Kaboom! The prowess of a forbidden spell was only intensified at this very moment. One spell was all it took to change the tide of war. That one spell had taken out 90% of all light faction players. A few of those who still survived were only able to do so because of their cowardly intuition. What was left in front of the tanks were those that were not within the attack range of the forbidden spell. Even so, seeing that almost all of their comrades perished, they turned around and started to flee. It was futile to continue pressing on as they would not make any progress. All right, boys and girls, it's time to return the favor, said Billy Boy as he gave the green light to start attacking. Ha! Yeah, Seven Star Warrior scoffed. He and the others that were fighting the players had started to recover hastily. In less than several seconds, everyone was restored to full health. With a huge number of enemies reduced to ashes, there was nothing to fear. It was high time to strike. The other survivors of the forbidden spell ran. They did not know what to think after seeing a spell that had such a high area of effect and kill rate. No everything in the game was as diligent as Jiang Fei, who studied the game inside out and knew how to play it better. Most of the small guilds had members that played the game just for the fun of it. How could they have seen a forbidden spell at that magnitude in their entire career? At most, they had only heard or read about in passing. The spell was able to take out more than 200,000 players. Just that fact alone had made Imperial Dragon a dangerous entity, like a country with a measurable nuclear strike force. The truth was Little Rain's forbidden spell was not all that powerful. It was only the nature of a forbidden spell and it was not all that powerful to begin with. All the small guilds had just been living under a rock. It was only natural for someone who had never seen the prowess of a forbidden spell to not know how it worked. That was why everyone had packed like sardines in a can. 
Even when Little Rain had started chanting the spell, they did not even think of dispersing the players to reduce the death count. When it was time to attack, Billy Boy had turned from a defensive turtle to a lion. All the escapees that were still alive were hunted down one by one. Those that were killed by the forbidden spell had no idea what had hit them. They revived in their origin city and was still spellbound by what had happened to them. Is that all of them? All right, back to formation, guys. Remember our objective. Protect the convoy. Supporters and DPS must help pick up the equipment of our fallen brothers, said Billy Boy in the party chat channel. Hee hee, good one, guys. Am so very proud of everyone. When this is over, talk to Miss Rosette Rose and claim your rewards, said Jiang Fei. His speech had instantly sent a wave of cheer to all Imperial Dragon members that were present in the quest. Oh! Yeah. Praise the greatest guild master. We're so lucky to have someone like him as our guild master. This is awesome. Hard work comes with a good reward. I like it. The fact that they had defeated an enemy with an army six times their size had made everyone proud and happy, Jiang Fei's giving out rewards had made the members of Imperial Dragon grew even more happier. Darling, am summoning you, said Billy Boy as he used the skill that came with the wedding ring to summon Lady Casanova to his side. A wedding ring was an in-game item that came without attribute but only one skill. Under certain conditions, any partner would be able to activate the ring to summon their partner to their side. Much like Jiang Fei and Ariel's contract of devotion skill. When Lady Casanova came, she had brought over many players' replacement equipment that was lost during the fight. Even though most of them were collected, there were still a few of them that were robbed by the Light Faction players. When a player died, all equipment that was being equipped will drop at a 100% rate. However, equipment in the item bag will only drop at a random rate. Hence, when the players were killed, their equipment that had been picked up by the opponents would be stored in the item bag. Killing them would not guarantee a drop hence, reclaiming their stolen equipment was improbable. Fortunately, Imperial Dragon was rich and wealthy. The guild storage had so many backup equipment that it could replenish the entire guild if needed. Once everyone had restocked their equipment and potions, Imperial Dragon regained their combat power albeit not 100%. During the fight with the players, two waves of NPC soldiers had spawned and came to attack. Luckily for Imperial Dragon, they had not even noticed their presence as the players of the Light Faction were more troubling compared to NPCs, gear up and get going. We are making slow progress, said Jiang Fei. Lady Casanova, have you gathered the players I have asked for, said Jiang Fei. Yes. They will be arriving soon, that's great, at this moment, he noticed a small yellow blimp in his minimap. That yellow blimp was Jiang Fei's own personal soldiers. Based on their position in the map, Hua Mulan and the rest were about to arrive soon. Proceed on without me. I need eyes in the skies, said Jiang Fei as he took off with the sky gliding dragon. Chapter 722, Time is of the Essence, once Jiang Fei was in the air, he made sure that he was not followed before heading toward where Hua Mulan was. My lord, cried Hua Mulan when she saw him coming toward her, darling, cried Sylphie as she wrapped her arms around Jiang Fei's hand. It's always nice to see you, said Jiang Fei with a smile. The feeling is mutual. When a kind adventurer had informed us about the trouble you were in, we rushed over immediately, said Nina. Well, I am in trouble but it is something that I can still handle on my own. However, I appreciate if all of you could hide in the shadow for now. Please do not let yourself seen until I call for you, said Jiang Fei. Very well, said Nina as she pulled Sylphie away from Jiang Fei and directed the rest of Hua Mulan's soldiers away. Jiang Fei did not expect the girls to appear so soon. Fighting in a battle was a gamble on its own. Players can safely participate in any fights as even if they died, they could always revive again. NPCs stayed dead. Even though Jiang Fei was close with the girls and did not develop any special feelings for them, he did not want the girls to just die by the hands of players. The worst ones were Hua Mulan's underlings. They were, at best, level 80 elite tier NPCs. 
even with 100,000 of them, they would be easily killed. Just as easy as how Imperial Dragon had dealt with 40,000 NPC soldiers. Given time, even a million of them would be easy. There was one more reason why Jiang Fei did not want the girls to show up in the fight just yet. After Jiang Fei had Hua Molan and the rest of Jiang Fei's harem to stay put, he flew back to where the convoy was and hovered in the skies to have a better view of the surrounding. Twenty minutes later, the convoy made it into a new terrain. The convoy was now amongst the highlands where the roads were narrow and steep. Although the hills were not too high, they were tall enough to become a perfect hiding spot. This was a valley where enemies were about to organize an ambush. If Jiang Fei was given a choice, he would have turned back and chosen a different route. Unfortunately, the route was fixed and the NPCs would only stick to this given route. If I were the enemy, I would definitely set up an ambush in this entire highlands, said Billy Boy to Jiang Fei. Shush! Don't jinx it, said Lady Casanova before Jiang Fei could chime in. He's right. I'm going to the sky to check out the surroundings, said Jiang Fei. As he was flying around, he saw plains of hills and trees that grew tall and large. Oddly enough, there was no one in sight. Nothing but cool clouds and green flora. There's no one around, Guildmaster? What's going on? Billy Boy asked. There's no one around. I'm heading out further to check, said Jiang Fei as he zoomed past the clouds and entered the Highlands core. Something is not right. Why isn't there anyone here in the best ambush spot, wondered Billy Boy. Perhaps they're dumb. Let's just hope that they're dumb. Things would be easier then, said Lady Casanova. Nothing is not right, said Jiang Fei as he reached a place where the road was empty. What's going on? Lady Casanova asked. I don't know. It's just. I have this feeling that something is not right. The road is too empty, said Jiang Fei. Could it invisible enemies? Guess Billy Boy. Huh? Jiang Fei was thrown. If there were enemies in stealth state, he would not be able to detect it. I don't think so. If bandits and assassins leave their main group, they would be glass cannons waiting to be killed by us, said Little Rain. I understand it now. I figured it out, cried Billy Boy as he cried out loud. What now, said Jiang Fei. I understood how the enemies are going to attack us. Damn! They are strong, stop blabbering and explain, said Lazy Casanova. We are now in the highlands. No matter where the enemies are attacking us from, we are completely at their mercy. What if the enemies are not in the hills but in the flatlands behind us, suggested Billy Boy. Are you saying they are trying to attack us from the back? Little Rain asked. If that's the case, I could just assign a few men behind to stop them there, said Seven Star Warrior. No! What if there are really an army of invisible bandits and assassins waiting for us in the front? Would you still arrange a few men to be placed in the back? said Billy Boy. So, what are we going to do about this? asked Little Rain. I need to think, Billy Boy grunted. The enemies had planned this from the start. The measly 300,000 players that we had just defeated were merely pawns. We are now dealing with the generals. Arg! I really wish I knew who they are and have a nice chat with them, said Billy Boy. Stop putting up airs. How are we going to solve this problem? Said Lady Casanova as she slapped Billy Boy on his back. There's nothing we can do now. It's too late as we have already sprung the trap. All we can do is to hope that the reinforcement has arrived in the flatlands before the enemy does. That way, we would have enough manpower to defeat them. However, if we are surrounded first, there's no telling how we could defeat them. We could fight them, but the cargo will be destroyed, said Billy Boy. How long until reinforcement arrives? Jiang Fei asked Lady Casanova. In fifteen minutes, they will arrive in the flatlands behind us, said Lady Casanova. That's good, Jiang Fei nodded and quickly sent a message to Happy Drunk to ask him for his time of arrival. Happy Drunk replied almost instantly, saying that he and his army would arrive in 20 minutes or less. Stop the convoy and consolidate our defenses around the cargo. 
there's no telling how far can we go. If the enemy arrives first, we will fight them, said Jiang Fei confidently. Guildmaster? Is there something that you're not telling us? How are you so calm and composed? asked Lady Casanova. Even though she had chosen a female minotaur as her character race and spoke loudly, very unladylike, she was still a lady in the end and her observation skills were as sharp as an eagle. You'll know soon enough, said Jiang Fei with a smirk. In no time, the entire convoy came to a halt. All 50,000 Imperial Dragon players formed a proper defensive formation around the convoy. After they had learned their lessons after being ambushed by stealth players, hunters and rangers had deployed plenty of traps around the area to prevent any invisible enemies from striking them unnoticed. Everyone was busy for a moment and when all the preparation was done, Jiang Fei ordered everyone to sit down and wait quietly. Jiang Fei himself sat in the far back of the convoy. He sat there, quietly waiting for whoever to appear. If it was his own, the convoy should be fine. If it was the enemy, then there shall be bloodshed. Chapter 723 Enemies Descend Ten minutes passed like an eternity when they were waiting for their enemies to arrive. In this case, the Imperial Dragon was waiting for the enemies as well as their allies. Here they come, cried the hunters and rangers who had the skill eagle eye. That skill allowed them to be able to detect any movement from far away. Everyone turned their heads in the direction where the hunters and rangers were pointing at and saw a cloud of dust. From that distance, only a large group of soldiers could create such a dust storm. The problem was that the distance was too far. No one could see if they were friend or foe. While everyone was breaking down in nervousness, Jiang Fei was calm and composed. It was as if he did not care whether the soldiers that were charging toward them were friend or foe. On the other hand, everyone could see that Lady Casanova was growing restless by the second. Jiang Fei noticed her sudden change of reaction and messaged her directly. I could see from your reaction that you know that those soldiers are not our reinforcement, said Jiang Fei. Sigh. That's right, said Lady Casanova as she sighed heavily. Even though she had joined the group, she was not part of the original 50,000 player party. She was part of the reinforcement party. Since she was part of the other party, she could easily see their position through the minimap. Based on their position, it was impossible that the incoming soldiers were her party members. Jiang Fei nodded quietly and leaped to the front. Swords up! It's time to fight! Jiang Fei roared. Huh? What's going on? Are they the enemy? Everyone turned to stare at Lady Casanova for an answer. I am not sure, but they are not members of Imperial Dragon. Lady Casanova answered. Battle formation, cried Billy Boy without wasting any more time. Two lines. Warriors on the front, healers at the back. Everyone else, do the same thing we always do in a bottleneck formation. It was instant. Both Billy Boy and Seven Star Warrior got busy trying to organize their formation. Billy Boy took the rear while Seven Star Warrior took the front. Billy Boy had formed a line defense with 40,000 members while Seven Star Warrior took only 10,000 players to stand in front to guard the convoy against stealth players. Seconds pass and the dust storm became wider and wider. In no time at all, everyone could see the emblem of the light faction adorned on the equipment of the enemy. How many of them? asked Jiang Fei. Estimating about 1,700,000 players, said Billy Boy after he had consulted the rangers and hunters. Heh, yeah, not bad. Seems to me that this time, we might have bigger trouble than the previous 300,000, said Jiang Fei with a smile. The fact that the total players in the Light Faction were lesser than those in the Shadow Faction had only made the Light Faction slightly weaker than the Shadow Faction. Even so, the total number of players in the Light Faction accounted to over 8 million. There were too many Pug players. Small guilds, fewer mid-sized guilds, and even lesser large guilds. The first 300,000 players that Jiang Fei had faced were only weaker, new players. Strong, more competent players were in large guilds. A competent guild master would not just jump on the bandwagon when it came to completing an important quest they would naturally have formed a strategy. 
To make things worse, they have close to two million soldiers now. Yet, the real threat lay in the minds of the guildmasters. TSK If I have 50,000 more players in my command, I am sure to defeat them, said Billy Boy. Yeah. Yeah. There's no need to worry about that anymore. Even if you could defeat all 1,700,000 players, there will be more of them coming, said Lady Casanova. B asterisk TCH, please. You spent all your time in dungeons fighting mindless monsters with predictable skills and attack moveset. You wouldn't know anything about PvP battles. Those pug players would never be as competent as us. Without a smart commander to steer the fight, they will lose to us even if they have a million players. All we need is something to boost our players' morale and we can strike hard and fast. Those pug players don't have the guts to stay in the battlefield, said Billy Boy. Oh! So, you're competent, huh? Well, I'll see you after this, said Lady Casanova as she looked at him as if she was looking at trash. She was never the kind of girl that would shrink away from a man. When Billy Boy had only retorted a little, she would immediately snarl back. If they were in real life, she would have already charged at him for even trying to talk back to her. Hey! Jiang Fei chuckled at the two. He knew that they were not really at each other's throats. They were just putting on a show to elevate the tension that was in the air. Even though Imperial Dragon had only just defeated 300,000 players with only a small 50,000 army, they were still nervous at the incoming million players. There was still one more unknown group of players waiting in front of them. Leave them be and Imperial Dragon overall morale would drop to the extreme. Fortunately, due to Billy Boy and Lady Casanova's comical acts, everyone laughed and the atmosphere got less tense. While everyone had their laughs, they were calmed and composed. Concurrently, the enemy had already entered the highlands and was close to them. 1,709,000 blokes. This might not be good. Heh, John Fay scoffed. Guildmaster. We only need to hold on for five minutes. Reinforcement will arrive in just five minutes, cried Lady Casanova. Five minutes? That's great. Jiang Fei roared and gave her a thumbs up. Pooey! Let me see that face of yours. I'd like to see the enemy who had forced me into desperation, said Billy Boy to himself while scanning every enemy's face to find the commander. Charge! As soon as they were in range, the enemies roared with vigor and launched their attack. As mentioned, the army of 1,700,000 players consisted of players that were considered as professional. Many of the large guilds had formed a temporary alliance before they came. Their objective was different from what everyone had thought. They did not care about the cannons. Twenty cannons would only provide roughly four billion experience points. After dividing, everyone would get roughly two million experience points, which was not a small amount. These guild masters would not be swayed by such mediocre experience points. They would only strike if all 20 cannons would provide enough experience points to grant everyone a level. Wasting their effort for just a measly 2 million experience points was never worth it. They had one goal, a long-term goal that would affect the future of the Light and Shadow faction. They needed to kill Jiang Fei. They wanted to kill him. Not just once, not twice, but as many times as they could. The name Verger Glider was imprinted in every player's memory in the Shadow Faction. Both factions recognized that Verger Glider was the spiritual leader of the Shadow Faction. Everyone looked up to him. If the Light Faction could defeat him, the morale of the Shadow Faction would drop. That would only lead to the downfall of the Shadow Faction. The war between the Light and the Shadow had almost reached its climax. Many of the Guild Masters of the Light Faction were efficient in gathering information. The one thing they knew would happen was the drop of the morale of the Shadow Faction soldiers if Verger Glider, their great idol, was killed. There was one other reason. Jiang Fei had defeated Free Will and Broken Dreams and taken their cauldron of the Ancient Kingdom. Free Will was kind enough to keep quiet about the cauldrons, but Broken Dreams was not. After losing the Cauldron of Spirit, Broken Dream had sold the information for good money. Now, almost everyone, including the Guild Masters of the Light Faction knew about the Cauldrons of the Ancient Kingdom. 
Everyone wanted that cauldron for themselves, and today was the only chance they could do so as they knew that Jiang Fei could not leave the convoy. If they missed this chance, there was no telling when they could defeat Jiang Fei when he had a flying mount that could fly at breakneck speed. Chapter 724 Competent Commander The inevitable battle ensued as players of the Light Faction came in to attack the convoy. In the Highlands, moving across with a large convoy was slow and tough. Without a chance to escape or even move elsewhere, the battle was forced to take place in a small pathway. Even though the enemies were largely overnumbered, they were not able to show the prowess as a whole. Hence, their commander had improvised their attacks in waves. Each wave would have 50,000 players max. By doing so, they had significantly improved their battle prowess. Seven Star Warrior, do not forget to guard the front, warned Jiang Fei. Don't worry about us. We will keep our eyes peeled, said Seven Star Warrior. He was in charge of guarding the front while Billy Boy was taking the rear. The battle in the highlands was slow but steadily growing rowdier and violent. Melee fighters crossed swords, healers repetitively trying to keep their tanks alive, and the range attackers were spamming all their AoE skills. Rain, when is the forbidden spell coming? asked Billy Boy. Thirty minutes. At least, Little Rain had already expended his trump card and had no other way to recover his mana but by madly consuming potions. Guildmaster? Does your pet have any sort of forbidden spell? asked Billy Boy. As he recalled, Jiang Fei's previous pet, Isabella, could change into a large black dragon and use her own forbidden spell to destroy the enemy. ID never check, said Jiang Fei as he turned to Akit Ceres, only to see her shaking her head. Akit Ceres might be a high-tier Nephilim NPC but she was considered to be one of the weaker ones in the Nephilim race. Being a succubus, their latent talents were all used in their beauty and appearance. Her battle prowess was not as strong as Isabella. Compared to a one-on-one -on -one fight, she would be extreme useless in a multi-target fight. We're doomed, Billy Boy was growing anxious by the second. There were still over a million players waiting behind when they could not even defeat the first wave of 50,000 players. They were only able to survive the first 300,000 players due to Little Rain's forbidden spell. Furthermore, they were mindless players that were only coming to war without a commander. Even though they had a larger army, they would ultimately be defeated by Billy Boy and his well-coordinated soldiers. Imperial Dragon's current enemies were large guilds that had made an alliance. They were strong, well-coordinated, and most of all, competent. Every player was well-equipped, not as good as Imperial Dragon, but close enough. Like Imperial Dragon, a well-managed guild would not mind losing their players' equipment since they would have already anticipated such a loss. Compensation for equipment was already considered compulsory. Players themselves would not have to fear death for their guild would have their backs. An army that did not fear death was an army that was scary. The threat to Imperial Dragon was real, especially since they had more than 30 times the player count on their side. Since the start of the fight, Imperial Dragon was being suppressed continuously. There was not even a split second of time to breath. Guildmaster Please do something. If this goes on, we will lose, said Billy Boy anxiously. The enemies were too great. No matter how well-versed he was in the art of strategy, there was no way in getting out of this. I see. Continue defending. I shall go on the front and take all of them by myself, said Jiang Fei confidently. Lady Casanova had led the first charge to attack but was completely suppressed due to the enemy's sheer number. Quickly, she rejoined the remaining survivors at the back of the defensive line. Time for me to show them what I can do, said Jiang Fei as he summoned the EVOL. Sky Gliding Dragon As soon as he was in the skies, Jiang Fei unloaded a rain of arrows down at the enemies. Once Ruthless Barrage was stacked to the max, Jiang Fei's attack power had broken past 250,000. With level suppression in effect, Jiang Fei was able to kill every single player, regardless of their class, with a single shot. Even so, Jiang Fei was not able to make much of a difference. Having to kill 8 players per second was clearly fast, but not fast enough to save his convoy. Growl! 
Jiang Fei controlled the sky gliding dragon and went lower and closer to the enemy. Flame spit. Fire was spat out from the dragon's mouth and it extended so far ahead that Jiang Fei was able to kill players in a large area in front of the tanks of Imperial Dragon. After evolving, the new EVOL. Sky gliding dragon attacks did not have a cooldown effect. As easy as moving down weeds, Jiang Fei had only needed to fly over the enemies and use flame spit on them to kill everyone that was in his path. Nice, cried Little Rain. Jiang Fei had first killed all the enemies that were fighting the tanks. Once the enemies were reduced to ashes, the tanks and warriors could finally breathe for a moment. The healers and tanks were incredibly grateful for they could rest and recuperate even for only a few seconds. It was only a few seconds of leisure as the void that was made was immediately filled up with enemies that were pushing forward. Alas, even with his insane attack speed and the sky gliding dragon, he was still unable to provide a lasting defense against the enemy. Let's try one more time, said Jiang Fei to himself. He took off further behind and found a spot with the most densely packed players. As soon as he found it, he unsummoned the sky gliding dragon and dropped amongst the enemies. Righteous Fury 370,000 damage was dealt to every single player 10 meters around Jiang Fei. All of them were instantly killed by Jiang Fei's powerful AoE attack. One more, Luminous Judgment. Minus 93,888. Minus 93,888. Minus 93,888. It was an attack that covered a radius of 500 meters from Jiang Fei. The damage dealt was 50% of Jiang Fei's total health points and would continuously do so for 10 seconds. To be honest, Jiang Fei felt that it was a waste to use the skill right there and then. No one in the battlefield had more health points than Jiang Fei. Everyone within the 500 meter radius were killed in less than 2 seconds. The remaining 8 seconds of the skill were wasted. Jiang Fei's attack was still considered as effective as he had used it in a place where the enemies were closely packed together. The skill, Luminous Judgment, had taken out more than 30,000 players. There were still 10,000 to 20,000 players that had only managed to escape the range of the skill. No time to lose. Kill them all, cried Billy Boy as he directed his army to find and kill the remaining players. Time was of the essence and right then, they clearly had the advantage. Before their number could replenish, it was best to seize the moment and take out the remaining 20,000 players. Lady Casanova led a large squadron of players into the front to take out the still dazed players. They were thrown as they had not heard of anyone else beside Little Rain to have a skill of that magnitude. Before they could snap back to reality, Lady Casanova and her squad of players had arrived and sliced their heads off. Not bad. I have underestimated them for a second there. Order the second wave to proceed, said a man after he had scoffed angrily. Judging the tone of his words, the man did not care about the death of all the players in the first wave of his attack. Chapter 725, Only Fight for a Guaranteed Win, Retreat, cried Billy Boy when he noticed that the enemies were rushing in from the rear to refill the void that Jiang Fei had created. Even though reducing the number of enemies was crucial, stay alive was far more important to win the battle. There were over a million enemies and every one of them did not fear death. Imperial Dragon had only over 40,000 players left to guard the convoy. Out of the 40,000, 10,000 of them were stationed at the front of the convoy to take care of invisible enemies. 30,000 against 1,700,000 players. Even a monkey would know to run away when they were outnumbered. There was no way they could win, according to Billy Boy's calculations. Right now, he had suspected that Jiang Fei might have something up his sleeves. With that knowledge, all he could do was to delay as long as he can. Look! They're right there, our brothers need our help, for the glory of Imperial Dragon. Far in the back, behind the soldiers of Light Faction, came the voice of Imperial Dragon's reinforcement. It's about damn time, cried Lady Casanova. She had informed Jiang Fei as soon as she had spotted them coming closer in the minimap. We're saved, here comes the chivalry. Everyone in the convoy cheered loudly as soon as they heard that the reinforcement had arrived. With boosted morale, 
30,000 players charged in fiercely and pushed the enemies down the highlands, all the way down to the foot of the hill. Sadly, the reality was cruel as the fact that having over a million enemies had proven too hard to defeat. Their morale was not much help since the enemies were too large. The shape of the terrain had only made it close to impossible to push them back since behind the front lines were more jam-packed with players. At most, the momentary burst of vigor had only lasted for several minutes before they were forced to return to the convoy. The enemies had pushed back to their original position, into the highlands. Sigh, Billy Boys sighed heavily. Due to the sheer number of enemies between the two sides, reinforcement of Imperial Dragon could never reach the convoy without first dealing with the enemies sandwiched between them. Two sides of the Imperial Dragon were like buns while the light faction was the meat in between. A very large meat. The difference between the two sides was too large. If the light faction wanted it, they could simply allocate a few hundred thousand players to deal with the reinforcement and then return to the main army. It was that simple. In the best case scenario, Billy Boy would force the convoy to retreat down the island by forcing their way down. That way, they could group up with the reinforcement and push through. Sadly, the convoy could not move backward. The system would not allow it. If they insisted on leading the convoy, it would be vulnerable to anyone in the front. Losing three levels was not something Billy Boy could gamble with. In the end, the very thing that Jiang Fei needed to transport had become the bane of their existence. Take 200,000 players and block the flies in the back. The rest shall move forward as planned, ordered the commander of the entire army with a smirk on his face. The highland was perfect for defenses and theoretically, Jiang Fei should have the upper hand. Even so, he was able to turn it against them. I heard that Verger Glider has a marksman skill that could snipe. Dragon Phoenix, please cast a forbidden spell, said the commander. Excuse me? Did you hear what you said? Asking me to cast a forbidden spell would be suicide. Do you want me to be sniped by Verger Glider, said Dragon Phoenix. Have you forgotten what is our goal? And I was clear when I proposed the alliance. I am the commander. If you wish to disobey me, I will disband the alliance right this moment. What do you think? said Tutu as he ignored Dragon Phoenix and faced the other guild masters. To obtain absolute victory, a few guild masters had invested a great deal by hiring a professional strategist named Tutu. That name was extremely feminine and anyone would immediately think of ballet clothes. However, if one were to know him, one would know that his name did not reflect anything but viciousness. Unlike the other professional gamers, the player Tutu would always use a new name in every single game he played. However, there was one thing that anyone could recognize even if he had changed his name, it was his superior battle strategist. Amongst the gaming community of China, the man behind the player Tutu was famous. Oddly enough, he and Billy Boy had rarely crossed swords as PvP strategists even though everyone knew that Tutu was the better strategist. Everything was accounted for and planned. Based on the terrain, Tutu had trapped the convoy in a difficult place. Even if Imperial Dragon had reinforcement, it would not matter since Tutu had already anticipated that. Billy Boy was a man who would never back down from a fight. He truly believed in the power of strategy. Tutu, on the other hand, had a different viewpoint. He was able to maintain his high win rate due to his own principle. He would only fight a battle that he knew he would win. His usual strategy was to fight the enemy with overwhelming force. There was never a single battle that he fought an enemy with a large fighting force. Before a fight, he would always plan everything down to the dot. He would always make sure that in any given situation of a fight, he would have the upper hand. From the perspective of others, they were confident that with Tutu commanding the army, they would surely obtain victory. Little did they know that Tutu had already planned everything out. He knew that the Light Faction had a larger attacking force and Jiang Fei was only limited to his own guild. Dragon Phoenix, listen to the commander, said Dragon Phoenix's guild master. When he saw that Tutu was not happy at his own guild member, the guild master quickly intervened and pestered him to obey Tutu's command. But! He is asking me to die! Dragon Phoenix roared. 
you will do anything that Tutu asks you to do. If he wants you to jump, you jump, said the guildmaster. No matter what Dragon Phoenix says, the guildmaster would not change his mind. But, no buts. This is an order, the guildmaster roared angrily. There were so many guildmasters present with them and his member being disobedient to him was a display of shame. Fine, said Dragon Phoenix as he gave in. The forbidden spell was given to him by the guild and with it, a very rigid contract. The words of the guildmaster were law. I'm truly sorry for you to have to experience this. Please do not mind him, said the guildmaster as he groveled at Tutu. The guildmaster was only so giving to Tutu because of future reliance. This war was only the beginning as they would still want to hire him as the next commander during the War of the Light and the Shadow. Their enemies were the infamous Shadow faction with overwhelming player counts, the all-powerful Verger Glider, and the cunning Billy Boy. The Light faction was always at a disadvantage when it came to war with the Shadow faction. That was why they needed to have Tutu to lead the Light faction. Chapter 726 like a moth to flame, under the command of his guildmaster, Dragon Phoenix obeyed Tutu and went away to make his preparations. He was asked to stand on top of the small hill to cast the forbidden spell. The hill was very small, so small that almost anyone could spot him easily. However, it did not matter as it was all by design. All right, go ahead, said Tutu with a sinister smile. To him, the lives of the players meant nothing to him. From his perspective, everyone was a chess piece to him to move around. Each step he took was purposeful to make the infamous Verger Glider and Billy Boy to fall for his tricks. TSK. Like hell he'll listen to you in the future, said Dragon Phoenix disgruntledly before starting to cast the forbidden spell. Oh no! Commander, someone is casting a forbidden spell, cried Little Rain. Just as Dragon Phoenix started chanting the first word in his spell, Little Rain was able to feel the magical aura in the air. Is that so? asked Jiang Fei before turning to the surrounding hills. Jiang Fei had expected the enemy to have a forbidden spellcaster. The only thing that he was thinking then was why didn't they cast it earlier? Leave it to me. It'll make a hole in his head, said Jiang Fei before leading the front lines and hiding amongst the crowd of players. I have spotted him, announced Jiang Fei as he lifted his bow and prepared to charge. Wait! Billy Boy cried. What's wrong? Don't shoot him. Shoot the guy in the golden helmet, said Billy Boy as he pointed somewhere far away. Hm, all right, he'll listen to you, commander, said Jiang Fei as he charged his bow. Jiang Fei pulled the string of his bow and the arrow that was knock on the bow glowed with intense golden light. Pew! Jiang Fei released the bow and a golden ray of light flashed across the hills. Now, said Tutu who had his eyes on Jiang Fei at all time. A knight that was hiding behind the hills emerged out and cast a spell on Dragon Phoenix. It was planned that when Dragon Phoenix cast the forbidden spell, Jiang Fei would then use his sniping skill to kill him. It was merely a trick to bait Jiang Fei to use his skill. The skill that the knight had used on Dragon Phoenix was an invulnerable spell. However, Billy Boy had seen through Tutu's plan. He had fallen for his scheme once and allowed the convoy to enter the highlands before checking it. It was a shame for him and he would never allow himself to fall for his trickeries again. That was why when he noticed something odd when a forbidden spellcaster stood out openly without even trying to hide. The light ray blasted straight toward the light faction side. Unexpectedly, the arrow was not aimed at Dragon Phoenix but at the gathering of the guildmasters. Wham! It was an instant kill. The person who was killed was Omen Sky, the guildmaster of Radiant. F asterisk CK. Tutu gasped. He had never expected Jiang Fei to aim at anyone else but Dragon Phoenix. There was nothing he could do about it. The arrow was flying at light speed. Even if he had noticed the draw of his bow, there was nothing he could do to stop it. Minus 1,640,211. Minus 1,641,254. Minus 1,642,624. The arrow did not stop there as it traveled in a straight line and killed everyone in its way before hitting its final target. 
Although Jiang Fei's ruthless barrage effect had worn out, the skill Dusk's Bow still had 20 times the attack power boost. The damage was so high and anyone who was in the way of the arrow was killed instantly. Even though Omen Skies was the guild master of the strongest guild in the Light Faction, adorned in equipment of the strongest tier, he did not have the Cauldron of Vitality. There was no one besides the holder of the Cauldron of Vitality who could withstand that attack from Jiang Fei. Once Omen Skies was defeated, everyone in the Light Faction was shocked while Imperial Dragon cheered for Jiang Fei's kill shot. Revive him, please. There's work to be done here, said Tutu as he laughed. Killing Omen Skies was nothing. Killing over a thousand players instantly was nothing as well. That shot meant absolutely nothing. Omen Skies was instantly revived and his equipment that was dropped to the ground were left untouched. Jiang Fei's shot meant absolutely, unequivocally, nothing. Heh. So much for dying, said Tutu to Omen Skies as he returned to his feet. Sheesh. What was that about? Is it just for the fun of it? said Omen Skies as he brushed it off as nothing. Even though he said it that way, being killed without even knowing it was not a good feeling. Never mind that. Your death meant a lot to me. He had only shown his hands. And it is time for us to catch the mouse, said Tutu as he laughed maniacally. Well then. Let's get going, said Omen Skies. If there was a chance for him to kill Jiang Fei, he would gladly take up that offer. He would be willing to die and lose all his equipment ten times over if it meant the death of Jiang Fei. Mobilize the special force. It's time to hunt, said Tutu as he smiled. Don't disappoint me, Verger Glider. I will take revenge for killing me, said Omen Skies to himself as he stared at Jiang Fei. Guild Masters, it's all up to you now. You cannot let the magician finish his chance, said Billy Boy. Their current fighting force was left with 30,000 players. If that forbidden spell was cast, it was game over. Leave it to me, said Jiang Fei as he summoned the EVOL. Sky Gliding Dragon he had already used Dusk's bow once and would need to wait for six hours before he could use it again. He would need to fight in close proximity to stop that magician. Ha <laughs> ha! In the moments of desperation, I am now the hero that will charge behind the enemy lines to take out their commander. How cool is that, said Jiang Fei with a laugh before flying off. There he comes! Special Forces Time to work for a living, cried Tutu when he spotted Jiang Fei getting on his dragon mount. Everyone was nervous as they knew from the way he spoke. Tutu was excited. To hunt and kill Verger Glider was the dream of every player in the Light Faction. The name Verger Glider had long become infamous amongst the Light Faction. To them, Jiang Fei was much like a boss himself. A boss who would drop luxurious rewards. On the other hand, he was also hated for committing crimes that were against the Light Faction's church. Tutu's original plan was to bait Jiang Fei into using his sniping skill. The knight will protect Dragon Phoenix with his skill to nullify that damage and draw in Jiang Fei closer. Even though that plan did not work out the way Tutu wanted it, the result was still the same. Dragon Phoenix was still chanting the forbidden spell and Jiang Fei had fallen for the bait when he had decided to fly toward him like a moth to a flame. Chapter 727, Dangerous Situation, both Jiang Fei and Billy Boy knew that the opponents had already set up a trap for Jiang Fei. However, Jiang Fei still needed to attack. The trap was perfect as the opponent had used a forbidden spellcaster as bait. There was no way that Jiang Fei could ignore that. Unlike anyone else, Jiang Fei was confident of himself. Even though he knew that he was blatantly walking into the enemy's trap, he was not afraid. Flying on his sky gliding dragon took Jiang Fei less than 10 seconds to be in range with Dragon Phoenix. Just as he was about to draw his bow, a cute little girl came out from behind Dragon Phoenix. The cute little girl was adorable. She wore a crystal crown on her head and had a pair of white feathered wings behind her. She looked like one of that a petite little cupid. The only thing that was missing was the heart-shaped arrowhead and a short bow. The truth was far from what it seemed. The girl was a special rare beast race, a swan-type beast race. 
Along with her special race, she had an ability that was extremely rare, Aerial Dominion. Aerial Dominion, once activated, all flying mounts within 100 meters will be forcefully unsummoned. Flying mount skills will be silenced and for the next 10 minutes. Only the user can use flying mounts. Big Brother Verger Glider Please come down, cried the little girl. Big Brother is busy at the moment, I will be with you in a moment, said Jiang Fei as he could not help but smile at her. He drew his bow and aimed at Dragon Phoenix. No! I want you to get down now, cried the little girl as she started stomping the ground. If it was not for the fact that he was in a battle right then, Jiang Fei might have stopped to listen to the girl's request. Right that moment, an invisible barrier was erected. Just as Jiang Fei was about to release the arrow, the sky gliding dragon beneath him vanished without a trace. What the f asterisk 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 asterisk, without his mount, Jiang Fei started to fall from the sky. Divine Shield Without hesitation, Jiang Fei activated his invulnerability skill before he fell. Even though he was not too high above the ground, falling from that altitude would still kill him instantly since he was wearing heavy armor. Fall damage was determined by one's health point percentage. Even with a million health points, Jiang Fei would still die from falling. The armor he was wearing also factors into the fall damage. Cloth armor would suffer the least amount of damage but only fatal if the player fell from an altitude higher than 25 meters. Plate armor player would die if they were higher than 15 meters. Jiang Fei's armor was chain armor and he was at least 30 meters above ground level. Falling from that altitude would kill him. Pock! The barrier around Jiang Fei absorbed the fall damage the moment he hit the ground. Just as he thought he was out of danger, more than five purging skills were blasted at him, forcefully purging the invulnerability that he had cast. The enemy wanted to cast Purge when he was midair, but his falling speed was too fast to time it properly. They did not have time to practice this move, resulting in poor execution. Kill him, he's vulnerable now. Before Jiang Fei could even realize what was going on, swarms of players had charged at him from all directions. Big brother. This place is so dangerous. It'll take my leave. Bye bye. He he he, the little girl giggled before she left the place. Sheesh. One can never trust even the sweetest looking girl, said Jiang Fei to himself. He had never thought that he would even fall for such an obvious trap. Even though he had fallen to such a state, he had not forgotten his main task. He needed to kill that magician before he could finish chanting his forbidden spell. Right now, over a hundred tank players had surrounded Dragon Phoenix to protect him. Without Dusk's bow penetration type skill, Jiang Fei would have to kill all the tanks standing in between before he could reach Dragon Phoenix. Charge! Now, cried the leader of the Special Force Squad. Charge! 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 All the tanks that were lined up against Jiang Fei used charge on him, stunning him for one second before another charge came to stun him again. Attack! While the tanks were tasked solely on stunning Jiang Fei, the other attacks behind the tanks started to attack. Unfortunately for them, Jiang Fei's immense defense stat made their attacks seem like small scratches. He's too strong, debuffs. Cast debuffs cried Tutu from the top of the hill as he had expected Jiang Fei to be strong. Weaken! Defense break! Ignore defense! Damage amplification! An array of debuffs was cast on Jiang Fei. It took more than several tries to actually inflict Jiang Fei with the debuff due to the high-level gaps between him and the enemy. However, there were more than a hundred magicians then. Eventually, one would be able to successfully inflict a debuff on him. It took some time, but Jiang Fei was inflicted with various kind of debuffs. Minus 15. Minus 17. Minus 12. Even with debuffs on Jiang Fei, the Special Force Squad had only able to deal less than 20 damage per hit. Even so, one could not underestimate the efforts of over a hundred players then. Combining melee and ranged attackers, there were more than several thousands of players attacking at the same time. Jiang Fei was taking more than 60,000 damage per second. However, 
With the cauldron of spirit in hand, Jiang Fei's health regeneration speed had instantly restored Jiang Fei's health. Heh. Cauldron of spirit, huh? No worries. I have expected this, said Tutu with a sinister smile. He had known this information from Broken Dream. This is getting out of hand, said Jiang Fei to himself. Even though his life was not at stake, being stunned constantly had rendered Jiang Fei motionless for some time now. To make things worse, each time the enemy used charge, he would be knocked away, increasing the distance between Jiang Fei and Dragon Phoenix. Heh. Being strong is useless if you're not using your head, said Tutu as he laughed at Jiang Fei. Mr. Tutu is so smart. Not even the almighty Verger Glider could fend off your strategy, I've never thought that Mr. Tutu would be this great, enough talking. It is time to end this little party, said Tutu as he called someone to his side. He then whispered something to him and sent him away. The player took his time and moved around the crowd and came right behind Jiang Fei. Right then, Jiang Fei was too busy focusing on the rampant tanks stunning him at every possible moment. He did not realize that there was someone sneaking up behind him. Even if he did, there was nothing he could do. Holo! Verger Glider, the man who was deemed as the strongest player in Dawn Break. Have you ever thought that you would fall like this? said the player behind him as he threw a bottle of potion at him. Crash! The battle smashed onto Jiang Fei's armor and smeared a thick purplish liquid all over his body. Ding! You have been inflicted by Gremlin's Potion Effect, Gremlin's Potion, unable to recovery health. Chapter 728, Bonus, What the Hell, cried Jiang Fei as he realized that he had just been debuffed. Heal Block was a skill that would completely stop a player from regaining health points by any means. This debuff would render even the greatest healing mechanism useless. Even though the debuff duration was short, Jiang Fei could not survive being attacked by several thousand of them. I would die if things go on like this, said Jiang Fei to himself. Righteous Fury This skill dealt over 370,000 damage to all enemies within 10 meters. All the tanks and warriors that were attacking him were instantly killed. At the same time, the skill granted Jiang Fei a short, 10 seconds debuff immunity effect, allowing him to move forward even though charge was used against him. It's time to stop being the hunted and become the hunter. Jiang Fei roared. Jiang Fei ran across the field at high speed whilst attacking. Arrows rained in a straight line as Jiang Fei ran. Naturally, the first person he killed was the bugger that had used the potion on him. Jiang Fei's speed was fast so fast that the Special Force squad could not even land an attack. Many of the ranged attackers could not even lock onto his character to cast their skills. Stop him! Stun him! Do whatever you can to slow him down, said Tutu in the Alliance chat channel. All the commanders and leaders that were around Jiang Fei quickly changed their attack strategy. Hunters, use Bind. Magicians, use Frostbite. All the enemy players started to throw out skills that would render Jiang Fei immobile. However, Jiang Fei was still in his debuff immunity state. All their skills would be useless against him. Use AoE skills, said Tutu in the Alliance channel. Be but that would kill our own allies, said one of the soldiers. I won't repeat this again. Obey me, or ill walk, said Tutu. Yes, sir. Tutu was growing impatient at the likes of those who would even question his authority. All the guild masters had already informed their members about always obeying Tutu's command. They had thought that the death of Omen Skies was the result of not obeying his command. They did not know that it was Jiang Fei's doing because of Billy Boy realizing that it was a bait. In the next second, everyone changed their attack pattern once more. This time, massive explosions were cast. Once the order to use AoE skill was decreed, everyone did not hesitate to use their AoE skills even though it meant killing their own teammates. Due to the effects of infatuations, Jiang Fei had gained high movement speed. That allowed him to basically dodge every range attacker's attacks and skills. However, large AoE skills were still able to inflict damage to him. The most common large AoE skills would have friendly fire effects, 
meaning that the skill would deal damage to both enemies and allies alike. Even though this would result in the death of many of their own allies, Zhang Fei was taking damage. Even though it was wasteful, it was effective. Zhang Fei was taking more hits than he had expected to and with the heal block still active, he was dying fast. Each skill that was cast could only deal so much damage to him but when a thousand magicians cast AoE skills simultaneously, it would be painful. At this point, Zhang Fei was left with less than 50% health points. What else can I do, wondered Zhang Fei to himself. The debuff immunity skill was about to expire and if it did, he would be vulnerable to stuns and knockback effect. With quick thinking, Jiang Fei activated the skill that came with the Holy Tear Ring, the Mermaid's Revenge, the Angel of Revenge. TSK I should have killed more Naga Overlord Tear Bosses, said Jiang Fei to himself. Ever since he had obtained the ring, he had rarely used the Angel of Revenge skill. The skill was not as convenient as the Lifesteal Demon form nor as powerful as the Battle Force. However, the one thing that this transformation skill had that the others did not was the debuff immunity status effect. Even after transforming, Jiang Fei had forgotten that the threat of damage was still there. Without any methods left in hand, Jiang Fei decided to try and go for the kill. There were still many more tanks and warriors protecting Dragon Phoenix. If he wanted to kill Dragon Phoenix, he would have to first deal with the annoying tanks and warriors. Just as he had arrived close to Dragon Phoenix, the AoE skills that were constantly aimed at him landed at the same spot. The special squad that was tasked to attack Jiang Fei were elite players from many guilds of the Light Faction. Their attack power was not something ordinary. Their attacks were powerful enough to allow them to actually deal some if not much damage to Jiang Fei even though level suppression was in effect. Hence, their attacks landed on their own allies, the damage dealt to them was lethal. In less than three seconds, hundreds of tanks and warriors that were supposed to be guarding Dragon Phoenix had died due to friendly fire. Heh. Thanks for the assistance, cried Jiang Fei as he charged in for the kill. Pew! It only took Jiang Fei a single shot to kill the poor Dragon Phoenix as he was without the protection of Mana Barrier. Once Dragon Phoenix was killed, the magic in the air calmed down and the forbidden spell was stopped. The reason Dragon Phoenix did not have Mana Barrier active was due to the lack of mana points. Little Rain had the support of potions which Jiang Fei had made for him that would greatly increase the maximum mana points. That allowed him to have enough mana to cast two forbidden spells. Dragon Phoenix had just enough mana points to cast one forbidden spell. Now that the threat of forbidden spell was removed, Jiang Fei would have to deal with the threat of death by normal attacks. He was still not able to heal and the attacks were still fired at him relentlessly. Ignore Dragon Phoenix, aim for Verger Glider, cried Tutu as he smiled. From his point of view, everything was according to plan. Jiang Fei would surely be killed in this war. It did not matter if Dragon Phoenix died or even he had failed to destroy the cannons, all that mattered to him was to kill Jiang Fei. Mr. Tutu, scouts have found an army approaching, said one of the guild masters then. Meacham. That should be reinforcement from the aristocrats. It's fine. Leave them be. This highlands is perfect to stop them without us interfering. Continue as planned, they cannot do anything to us, said Tutu. Did you anticipate this? Such brilliance. As expected of a great strategist, every guild masters were happy then, their money was well spent hiring this superior strategist. Meacham. It's time to cast the net, said Tutu before he turned around to nod at a player. The player then took out a flare gun and fired into the air. What is that? Is it another plan of yours? asked one of the guild masters. Everyone was stunned. They had never expected Tutu to have a plan of his own. But of course, anyone who had hired me would know that in the first collab, I would throw in a free bonus, said Tutu. Concurrently, the reinforcement from the aristocrats had joined forces with the reinforcement of Imperial Dragon. The Shadow Faction now had over 350,000 players as reinforcement. Kill, it's time to get rich, folks. Out of nowhere, a large army of 200. 
000 players came from behind the newly arrived reinforcements and surrounded them at the Highlands entrance. Chapter 729, Help Comes, What Is This?, asked the guild masters when they saw the sudden incoming 200,000 soldiers. A bonus. 18 groups of bandits of the neutral faction, said Tutu as he smirked. If the territory between the Shadow and the Light faction can be fought for by guilds, the neutral faction would be the land of the thieves. There was no rule in the city of sinners. Morality was merely a word that brought no meaning to them. Even in the city itself, no one cared if someone was killed. It was truly the promised land of thieves and bandits. Even though they had their own piece of territory to play with, thieves and bandits play by their own rules. Large guilds formed within the City of Sinners would occasionally sneak into the Light Faction and rob the profession players of their harvest. The victims would usually be members of smaller to mid-sized guilds. The number of players that they had was already below average. It was only natural that there would be very few to no guards at all to supervise the players that went out of the city to harvest or mine materials. When the bandits came, which they did, everyone that was out of the city area would be hunted and killed. Not only they would lose their lives, but they would also lose their equipment. When the unexpected reinforcement arrived to help the Light Faction, the guild master immediately frowned with hatred. Even so, there was nothing that they could do. It was a gift from Tutu and they would have no choice but to accept it. Unlike other normal players in the faction region, bandits and thieves did not have a specific territory to work with. The only way they could earn a living for their guild was to rob and steal from other players. All that was stolen would be put up in the auction house in the City of Sinners to be sold. The bandits themselves knew that the players of Light and the Shadow faction hated them but they were not at all affected by it. Everyone was strong. Even though each team had only over a few thousand of them, each team were so strong that they were masters in PvP fights. It was only natural since they had to fight other players for a living since robbing players was their way of living. Unbeknownst to many, players in the neutral faction had been eyeing the Imperial Dragon for a long time. There was no one in the game that was oblivious to the fact that Imperial Dragon was powerful and rich. Not only did they possess a strategic fortress that was positioned close to many training grounds, but players also did not need to travel on foot to reach the main Shadow Faction fortress. Their fortress and formation had only made the members of Imperial Dragon safe from attacks. No ordinary bandits would dare to attack them. Moreover, no bandits would willingly work with each other. Everyone was trying to get the best of each other. Cheating and betrayal were only natural for players of their nature. Tutu had only proven himself to stand above all when he had actually managed to gather 18 different groups of bandits to work together. You've done something that no one has ever done. Well done, heh, I'd like to see Billy Boy recruit the bandits of the City of Sinners. Billy Boy is nothing. Look at Verger Glider now, he is nothing but a little cat being trapped in a cage. From the looks of it, not only will Verger Glider die, all of Imperial Dragon and the aristocrats will be wiped out. This is an absolute victory. Thanks to Mr. Tutu, yes. It is all thanks to Mr. Tutu. Everyone was already beyond jubilant. If there were champagnes nearby, those guild masters would have already started to celebrate their victory. Heh, said Tutu. Although he had only nodded, he had failed to hide the smugness on his face. At this point, Verger Glider had less than 25% of his health points left. It was only a matter of time before he was killed. Concurrently, the players that were defending the convoy were left with only less than 20,000. The reinforcement for the Imperial Dragon was trapped outside the canyon. From Tutu's point of view, victory was at hand. There was nothing that Jiang Fei could do to save himself and the convoy. It's time! Tutu roared. A player who was standing behind him sent out a message to a certain player. I see something. Hunters! Use flash grenade, cried Seven Star Warrior when he noticed one of the traps that he had laid out in the ground earlier was sprung. Flash grenades were thrown out and once they detonate, silhouettes of thieves and bandits could be seen clearly. At that point, even though Seven Star Warrior had 10,000 players stationed here to fend off bandits and thieves, he was stunned when he saw who he was up against. 
there were more than 50,000 bandits and thieves. Even though they did not have any healers or tanks to defend them, with sheer numbers alone, they would be able to defeat all 10,000 players that Seven Star Warrior were leading. I need backup right now, cried Seven Star Warrior to Billy Boy. SH asterisk T. I need backup here too. Billy Boy replied. The pressure on Billy Boy was far greater than Seven Star Warrior. The number of players he had was down to only 20. Zero, zero, zero players yet he was forced to use those men and women to deal with over 700,000 enemies. This is game over, Little Rain said to himself. It was the same thought that almost all players of Imperial Dragon had. Guildmaster, if you don't do something soon, we will all be killed, said Lady Casanova. As a woman, she had early detected something was off with Jiang Fei. Even when things seemed down, he was as calm as the sea as if he had something in his sleeves. She had detected this odd calmness in Jiang Fei when the convoy had entered the highland. Even when bad news kept on coming in, Jiang Fei was still as cool as a cucumber. Billy Boy and Seven Star Warrior were unable to detect the subtle calmness of Jiang Fei, not even until the entire convoy was almost being destructed. Lady Casanova had finally had it. Jiang Fei smirked when Lady Casanova called out to him. I guess that's all you can do to stop me, said Jiang Fei to himself as he glared at Tutu from afar. Now that you have used all your cards, it is time for me to show you mine, said Jiang Fei as he shot a flare into the sky. What is that? What is he doing, said Omen Skies when he saw Jiang Fei use the flare signal. Relax, even if they have more reinforcement, it is useless for him since they will be blocked in the entrance of the highland, said Tutu. There were more than enough players to stop millions of players from coming into the highlands. Even if they could, it would take more than hours before they could reach the convoy. Out of a sudden, a golden pillar of light flashed in the sky next to Jian Fei. To Tutu's surprise, the reinforcement that stepped out of the pillar of light was only a group of people. He had initially thought that the pillar of light was a skill that could summon an army. What appeared had disappointed him greatly as only more than ten people had come out of the light. Blessing, cried Nina as she cast a golden barrier to protect Jiang Fei. The barrier was a powerful barrier that granted Jiang Fei both damage and debuff immunity. Even with the gremlin's potion still in effect, no one around him was able to deal any more damage, not when the ex saint of the light was protecting Jiang Fei. Insolent fools! How dare you attack my master! You shall experience death a million times over. God of War's skill army breaker, Hua Mulan had gained the status of intermediate overlord after absorbing all the light essence shard that Jiang Fei had obtained. At that level, Hua Mulan had gained three God of War skills. Army breaker was not, but close to being a forbidden spell. Jiang Fei had not expected Hua Mulan to use such a powerful flashy skill as soon as she appeared in the fight. Chapter 730, A Free Forbidden Spell, Hua Mulan leaped forward and slammed her sword into the ground. Her sword cracked the earth with a powerful blast and exploded with a wide and powerful shockwave that was supposed to blast away enemies. But instead, all of the Special Force squad players that were close to Jiang Fei were killed instantly. Not long after, another pillar of light flashed in. However, after the light dissipated, no one came out. What's going on? What was that? Isn't that some sort of powerful summoning skill? There's no one coming out of the light, they're NPC bosses. Group 57 to 66, get the warriors and tanks to hold down the boss. Tutu roared as everyone in the light faction was panicking. Even though Tutu had been focusing on PvP fights, that did not mean he was bad in boss fights. Even though he was not prepared for it, he was still able to come up with a strategy at the very last minute. Group 1032, before Tutu could finish his words, he dropped to the ground as he had taken a large amount of damage. Minus 382,766. When it happened, a beautiful figure flashed behind Tutu's fallen body. She was Silphy, the assassin of the church that Jiang Fei had rescued. With the light essence shard, Silphy had upgraded from Intermediate Overlord to High Overlord. Each step she took was silent. Her stealth skill was so powerful that no stealth detection skill could detect her presence. 
Once Tutu was killed, Sylphie turned to the rest of the guild masters and smiled before disappearing into nothingness as if she was just a figment of imagination. This is bad. Bad. We have a boss on our tail. Where are our members? Get someone to defend us. Tanks. Healers. Come and resurrect Tutu. Make haste. Every time Sylphie made an appearance, someone would die. It took her less than a split second to kill a single player and all in all, she had taken less than 30 seconds to kill every single guild masters that were with Tutu. Sylphie had become so strong that she had killed those level 70 fully geared players like they were nothing but trash monsters. Those that had witnessed the culling of their leader ran instantly without even trying to help them. Now that Tutu and other guild masters were killed, the command system of the Light Faction army had fallen. Sylphie acted on Jiang Fei's command and prevented anyone from approaching Tutu and the other killed guild masters. That was why the priests were unable to successfully revive Tutu and the others. Soon, pillars of blue light flashed and the head priestess Chris appeared, followed by the other Naga priestess. Master, what can we do you for? asked Chris as she looked at Jiang Fei with longing eyes. Please help me save my friends over there, said Jiang Fei he pointed in Billy Boy's direction. Please allow me, said Mirage as she ran toward Billy Boy. As she ran, she was chanting a spell and the moment she was close to Billy Boy, the spell chanting was finished. Grand Tsunami! Just as Billy Boy was going to be killed himself, Mirage came in to save the day with a powerful forbidden spell. Including the head priestess, there were more than 40 Naga priestesses that worshipped Jiang Fei. All of them were at least lower overlord tier. Having a forbidden spell was only normal for them. Having survived Hua Mulan's powerful skill, the Light Faction had thought that the worst was over. Little did they know that there was more where that came from. What the hell is this? How do we fight these? exclaimed Omen Skies as he was able to escape the death sentence from Sylphie. Just as he was about to craft a strategy to fight against her, more than ten more NPCs appeared to help Jiang Fei and was even able to cast forbidden spells. I'm going to F asterisk King make a complaint to the developers. What the F asterisk CK is this? This is blatant hacking. It's already overpowering when he is able to summon one boss. Now, that's more than fifty of them. What the hell is this? cried Omen Skies as he gave up even trying to take control of the army. We will help our sisters, leave this to us, master, we will do our best, with a leader to lead the priestess, the other priestess followed Mirage into fighting. Everyone wanted Jiang Fei's attention hence they proactively tried to help him without waiting for instructions. Grand Tsunami, Flash Flood, Earth Submission. More and more forbidden spells were cast around the entrance of the highlands. The spells were targeting not only the light faction players but also the bandits from the neutral faction. They were all trying their best to attract Jiang Fei's attention by simply killing all that they deemed as enemies. Divine forbidden spell the Great Flood, roared the head priestess. When everyone was trying their best to earn Jiang Fei's affection, the head priestess felt left behind and attempted to do it her own way. Crack! Crack! As soon as Chris was finished with the Divine Forbidden spell, the earth beneath the area, of which hundreds of thousands of bandits and the Light Faction army stood on, cracked. With a violent shake, the earth cracked wider and further before crashing deep into the earth. An earthquake? What the hell is this? I, I think there's water coming up. There's water. Water is coming up. A few seconds later, the enemies were crying and shouting in fear. Not more than five seconds later, the screaming stopped and the result of the Divine Forbidden spell was so devastating that even Jiang Fei was left agape. All the other Naga priestess had released water-type forbidden spell but most of them were just spells. After the spells were over, the water would disappear, leaving no trace but death. Chris Divine Forbidden spell was different, her spell left behind a permanent effect that would even change the terrain. At the center of all the mess, a large lake was formed. My god, is this the power of the strongest overlord tier? wondered Jiang Fei to himself. In no more than two minutes after the arrival of Jiang Fei's personal army, more than a million soldiers and 200,000 bandits were killed by Jiang Fei's forces. 
While everyone else was relieved and happy, the Nanda priestesses were not too pleased since they were not able to kill as many as the head priestess could. Damn! I.D. thought that those NPCs were just... NPCs! How did the guildmaster recruit them? I.D. liked to know that too. Here I thought that those Nanda NPCs were only for quests. When and where did the guildmaster keep those chicks? Who cares about that? The guildmaster is just that strong, man. I wish I could gather that many chicks for myself. Once the threat was eliminated, players of the Imperial Dragon started to chat to relieve the stress of war. Most of the female NPCs that was with Jiang Fei were not strangers to the players of Imperial Dragon. Hua Mulan and the rest of the troops were always roaming about in the Demon Dragon Fortress. Most importantly, no one actually knew that those NPCs could pack a punch. Everyone had always thought that Jiang Fei had placed the NPCs in the fortress to fill up the empty space. Guildmaster, what else are you hiding from us? asked Billy Boy when he and Jiang Fei was alone. Ha ha ha. That's for me to know and for you to wait, said Jiang Fei as he laughed. Chapter 731, The Factions Wore Flag, When the priests had all the fallen players revived, Billy Boy consolidated everyone. With 55,000 players in hand, Billy Boy joined Happy Drunk and his soldiers in picking up dropped equipment that were scattered everywhere on the battlefield. Out of the mountains of trash equipment. There was still plenty of strong equipment that was ignored by Imperial Dragon but was treasured by Happy Drunk and his men. Unfortunately, many of the stronger equipment, dropped by the bandits of the neutral faction were lost for good. Chris Divine Forbidden Spell was so strong that the changes to the terrain had submerged a good deal of the land into the earth. It was still possible to retrieve that equipment but the only person that was capable of doing so was Jiang Fei. No one else had a special tool that allowed them to dive and breath underwater. After looting the treasures of war, the convoy proceeded with the journey with over 50 overlord tier babes to protect them. There was nothing to worry about. Unless the divine light god came down to earth and stopped the convoy himself, it was practically smooth sailing from there onward. Although it was a long and boring journey, the convoy was finally delivered to the front lines. Wonderful! With these cannons, we will be able to decimate the enemies with ease, said Frizz, who was in charge of receiving the goods. It is only our responsibility to respond to needs, said Jiang Fei. For the king! Frizz saluted as he tapped his left chest with his fist. For the king! Jiang Fei repeated the same salute to Frizz. Even though Frizz was basically a general in the front lines, fighting for the Shadow Faction, their true fealty lay with the Nephilim King. Ding! Quest completed. Once the quest was completed, it was time to reap the rewards. A total of 50,000 players, including Jiang Fei, had instantly gained two levels. Ding! Congratulations to player Verger Glider for reaching level 90. You are now qualified to take on the tier challenge. You may seek out the leader of your race to accept the tier challenge quest, huh? Jiang Fei was thrown. He had heard of title challenge quest but never tier challenge quest. After pondering on it for a while, he finally realized what tier meant to a player. Before level 90, all players were considered the same. It did not matter having more or less combat power. Once a player reached level 90, they would be given an option to accept a tier challenge quest. Like an NPC, they would be able to upgrade their tier from normal to elite and then to advanced elite, leader, lord, and the four stages of overlord, lower, intermediate, high, and pinnacle overlord. Once players themselves had reached the final stage of an overlord, they would need to gain levels up to level 99 before accepting another quest that would allow them to partake in a celestial challenge quest. Now that he had understood the quest description, he understood the troubles that came with it. Who the F asterisk CK is my race leader? Jiang Fei asked himself as he crossed his arms. Long ago, when Jiang Fei was still a normal Nephilim, he would just need to talk to the Nephilim King to accept the tier challenge quest. Now, he had become something else after defeating the evil god Solon. He was now a covet Nephilim, a different race to the normal Nephilim. Jiang Fei had frankly thought that he was the only covet Nephilim in the entire game. That would only mean that there was no leader that he could talk to. 
Annoyed and stumped, Jiang Fei decided to put the tier challenge quest aside and check on the other rewards from escorting the convoy. Emblem of the Shadow's Glory, Accessory, Legendary, Strength, plus 120, Vitality, plus 120, Agility, plus 120, Intelligence, plus 120, Spirit, plus 120, Equip, grants shadow magic attribute to all of your physical attacks. Equip, grants shadow physical attribute to all of your magic attacks. Equip, grants an additional barrier effect to your healing skills on a target. Barrier absorbs damage equal to 50% of healing amount. Equip, gains 100 points of light attribute magic resistance. Equip, grants the skill, Shadow Blessing. Purge all debuff on you and gain debuff immunity for the next 5 seconds. 5 minutes cooldown time. Note, Shadow Blessing can be used at any moment. All 50,000 players, including Jiang Fei, had received this accessory. As the stats on the accessory were universal, all class and players were able to fully enjoy the benefits of the accessory. Without thinking twice, Jiang Fei decided to swap out the charm of evasion he had with the emblem of Shadow's Glory. Even though having 100% evasion rate for 5 seconds was great and all but it was only a level 40 equipment that was obsolete. In this case, the importance of having debuff immunity was far more important to Jiang Fei. He had learned the existence of Gremlin Potion and realized that it would be useless if he had a powerful recovery effect that could be nullified by a simple heal block. As the leader of the entire expedition, Jiang Fei had received one additional reward. Faction War Flag, Military Flag, Legendary, Use, deploys a faction military flag with 1 million health points. Increases 50% attack power, defense, and health points to all allies of the Shadow Faction within 3,000 meters. Effects last for 15 minutes or until the flag is destroyed. Usage Count May 5th, Note, can only be used in Faction Region. Ineffective in the Underground Realm and Skypea. Guild Master, what is that? asked Billy Boy as he noticed Jiang Fei was holding a flag in his hands. It's something called a military flag, said Jiang Fei as he posted the properties of the flag into the guild chat. Oh! This is good, said Billy Boy as his eyes glittered with greed. Compared to the emblem, the flag was considered a better reward. 3,000 meters buff range was more than enough to cover the entire battlefield. Is that so? Here, take it, said Jiang Fei as he simply dropped the flag in Billy Boy's hands. Jiang Fei had no use for the flag since he rarely participated in PvP warfare. The flag would be better off with Billy Boy since Jiang Fei had his personal soldiers with him. Thank you very much. I promise that he'll make good use of it, said Billy Boy gratefully. In comparison, the flag was a chef's knife and Billy Boy was the cook while Jiang Fei was just a mechanic. A tool in different hands would make a difference. Once the quest was over, the Imperial Dragon members returned to their fortress to celebrate. Even though only 50,000 players had received the rewards, the other 50,000 players that had missed out on the system reward were compensated luxuriously by the guild's manager, Rosette Rose. Jiang Fei went on his own way instead of joining the guild members. He had spent far too much time on the PvP championship, as well as the convoy. Those times that he had missed spending with the girls of his harem had to be paid back, especially when the girls had come to him on their own accord. It was a coincidence since he needed to cultivate their feelings as Jiang Fei needed to bring them into the real world. After making many war weaponry for Han Tianyu, Jiang Fei would still have plenty of energy crystals for himself. All the extra energy crystals were not sufficient enough to revive Isabella. Instead of trying to get more energy at the moment, Jiang Fei needed help to fight against the incoming threat that was the mutants. He needed the girls, he needed their artificial souls to make level 4 biohumans. Chapter 732, Hasty Move, 6 am in the morning, Jiang Fei woke up from his sleep and found Ariel lying comfortably on his chest. Heh. Little minx, Jiang Fei scoffed. Before Jiang Fei slept, he was sure that Ariel was sleeping in a different room. From what it looked like, Ariel had crept into his bed in the middle of the night. It was her habit ever since she was resurrected into the real world. 
she would take efforts to be together with Jiang Fei whenever it was possible. Liu Meichim, Ariel moaned softly when Jiang Fei moved a little. When Jiang Fei's hand reached out to run through her smooth hair, Ariel was fully awake and reached in for a hug. Good morning, darling, said Ariel as she smiled as bright as the sun sigh. What am I going to do with you, said Jiang Fei as he softly pinched her soft cheeks. Ariel returned to her own room and had a bath. Jiang Fei finished his bath much earlier since well, he was too lazy to take care of his basic hygiene. After a quick splash of water, Jiang Fei wanted to call the hotel service for breakfast when there was a knock on his door. Fei! Are you up? asked Han Tianyu from outside the door. Yeah, said Jiang Fei as he opened the door for Han Tianyu. When the door was opened, Han Tianyu came in with a service crew and a tray full of food. Leave this here, he'll call you once I'm done with these, said Han Tianyu as he pulled out a few bills and gave them to the service boy as tips. Brother Yu, you not here just to deliver me my breakfast, are you? said Jiang Fei as he turned back into the room and went into the bathroom to change his clothes. Meichim. I have important matters to discuss with you, said Han Tianyu as he helped himself with the food on the tray. Let's hear it said Jiang Fei after he was done changing into a new fresh set of clothes. Ariel came into his room right after Jiang Fei and the two had their breakfast. The mutants are going to make their move, said Han Tianyu as he took a large bite of a toast. What does that mean, asked Jiang Fei as he placed the sandwich he was eating aside and paid full attention to Han Tianyu. America's third fleet and seventh fleet have already entered Japanese water. The 4th Fleet and the 6th Fleet had taken the Indian Ocean and are now surrounding us. Only the 10th Fleet is still in America, said Han Tianyu. That means the American is going all out, exclaimed Jiang Fei in fear. Five giant fleets of warships and only one was left behind. This was a drastic move made by the Americans and it was purposely done to stir up trouble. They wanted to take China in one clean swift attack. It was all to maintain their position as the global dominator. Besides that, the Europeans have already made a fleet of themselves. Although it was a mix of different kinds of warships, their fleet is only on par with the Americans, said Han Tianyu. Having to have multiple types of warships meant that the fleet was only recently formed and formed in a hurry. That could only mean that the Europeans was only acting this way because the Americans were forcing them to. Either that or the Europeans were trying too hard to be on the good side of the Americans. Hmm, seems to me that the Europeans are going to make an enemy out of us, said Jiang Fei. It was only natural since they were both Western countries. Even though it was a surprise, it was expected of them. The situation doesn't look good for us. According to Intel, the Americans have already obtained information about China's Supreme Android project through spies inside the government. That is why the mutants and the Americans are trying to make the first move. War is coming and they will not allow us to make the first move, said Han Tianyu as he grew more agitated. Tisk, Jiang Fei clicked his tongue. China's government was only creating the androids as a countermeasure in case the martial artist in China decided to do a coup. That was why the project was kept as a tight secret from anyone in the martial artist alliance. Unfortunately, their plans had backfired on them when the Americans had obtained information about the project. They thought that China was trying to one-up them. Technically speaking, the Martial Artist Alliance was somewhat connected to this. Mutants and the American government were only acting on the interests of American people, hence they were considered as the same entity. With a common goal, the mutant had revealed themselves to the government and was ready to work with and for them. Martial artists were different. Their connection to the national government was limited. In fact, only Han Tianyu was directly related to the government. That was the reason why the government had very little information about the alliance. There was no way that they could control them even though they were basically the same people. With great power yet no government supervision, that group could simply go against the government's will and interest and might even come in, unannounced, to take over China for themselves. What are you trying to tell me? said Jiang Fei. I'm telling you that the military wants to have those weapons to be delivered ahead of time, said Han Tianyu. How soon do they want them? Jiang Fei asked. He had given them a specific date, 20 days. 
But the truth was Jiang Fei could finish the weapons in only 10 days if he wanted. Today, if possible. Tomorrow is fine too, said Han Tianyu with a straight face. Get out! Jiang Fei gasped. Even though the alien tech he had was incredibly advanced, building fighter jets and aircraft carrier needed time. It was, after all, delicate technology. Not magic. How could the government expect Jiang Fei to cough up so many weapons in a day? I understand what I'm asking for seems ridiculous. However, the situation calls for immediate action. Based on our current fighting force, we will be decimated, said Han Tianyu. He knew that his request might be rejected, but it was worth a shot. The situation in China was at a tipping point. Even though Jiang Fei had given Han Tianyu a good number of fighter jets and weapons, they would not work as intended. The culprit was none other than our own earthly technology. Planet Namek's technology was so advanced that they were able to compress an unimaginable amount of energy into a hyperstable state. To cope with Earth's own technology, Jiang Fei had made modifications to the interceptors that they would still perform even without the alien power source. All Han Tianyu needed to do was to fit in a nuclear power source. Currently, the only entity with technology to do that was the Zhang family. Unfortunately, they were not miracle workers as most of the nuclear power source there was had already been fitted into androids. When Han Tianyu came forward to ask for more, the Zhang would have to reject his request since there were no more left. Even with military forcing Zhang family to work for them, the Zhang would still need time to make more of the power source. Everything needed time, even Jiang Fei making superweapons. When the Americans attacked and deployed their weapons against China, it would not be a war but a massacre. China was not armed for such an attack at this moment of time. If they tried to fend off the Americans, there was a slim chance that they would win but it would cost the whole of China itself. That was why Chinese government had placed their hopes on Jiang Fei. Jiang Fei had promised them weapons and the power source to operate them. All the weapons that Jiang Fei promised Han Tianyu would work as intended but not the weapons that Jiang Fei had given to Han Tianyu. I need at least 10 days. No less, said Jiang Fei. 10 days. Han Tianyu frowned. 10 days was too much, especially since the Americans were practically sailing across the bay. I have a plan. I think it will delay the war from happening, said Jiang Fei. Try me said Han Tianyu. He was desperate. If Jiang Fei had a plan, even if a stupid one, he would listen. Let's try a scare tactic, said Jiang Fei with a smirk. That's your idea, said Han Tianyu. Let me explain, Chapter 733, Taunt, Simple, I think, right now. Do you have about two or three nuclear power source in hand, said Jiang Fei. Yeah, we do. But powering up three fighters is not something that's simple, said Han Tianyu. Stay with me. I'm not asking you to actually have enough power to engage in a real fight. I only wanted you to make a presentation, not a demonstration. What the hell is that supposed to mean? Han Tianyu frowned. Heh. Presentation, not actual fights. I want you to present the power that we currently have. Make it big. Make it bold said Jiang Fei with a smirk. I don't get it, make a public statement to the Americans. Say that China has developed a new breed of fighter jets that are 100 times faster than those that the Americans have made. Tell them to step down the stage. If they don't, propose a one-on-one -on -one fight, said Jiang Fei. I get it. I understand, cried Han Tianyu after he had given it some thought. Han Tianyu was not a stupid old man. He was a cunning businessman and he understood what Jiang Fei was planning to do. The current main problem with China's military force was the lack of power source and the technology to develop a better power source. Even so, merely getting a few fighter jets to fly around was achievable. Jiang Fei's plan was to have a one-on-one -on -one fight with the Americans. Once they saw how powerful China had become in developing better jets than they could, the Americans would surely halt their attempt to attack and focus on gathering intel on the newly developed jets. With careful bait placement, the Americans would obtain falsified information. 
they would know that China had very little fighters in hand as well as the problem of the power source. They would then be ready to strike China. By then, Jiang Fei might have already produced the weapons that China had requested of him to strike them back. It's risky, but I like it, said Han Tianyu as he gave Jiang Fei a thumbs up. But of course, said Jiang Fei as he snickered. Jiang Fei might not be good in planning a war but boasting and scaring others was his forte. It's on. I will make it happen, said Han Tianyu. He picked up a piece of sandwich on the table and quickly left the room without even saying goodbye. The plan was huge and required the approval of the higher-ups in the government. Fortunately, given that the situation was at a tipping point, the plan was approved without discussion. The plan got to work as quickly as Han Tianyu got back to the military base. The first step of the plan was to find an elite pilot that could fly the alien machine. The best pilot amongst the top pilots in China was selected. The selection process would take some time but even if they could find a pilot at that very second, there was still the problem of a lack of power source. Since the plan was at the highest on the priority list, another branch of the military force had halted the production of androids to spare a few nuclear-powered batteries to make a total of five nuclear-powered battery packs. Three of these battery packs would be used for actual weapons presentation while two of them would be used for training. When everything was ready for the pilot to fly it, Han Tianyu and the rest of the officers had found out that the alien machines were not as powerful as Jiang Fei had described. The speed of the fighter jets was only, at most, two times faster than the current fastest fighter jets. The second problem was the fighter's weapon. Although it did have a powerful particle beam cannon that could instantly destroy any target locked, the fighter jet had only very limited rounds. Two shots of them would immediately deplete half of the battery. This is incredibly inefficient, said the head engineer that was in charge of performing checks and maintenance on the fighter. What are you saying? asked Han Tianyu. Are they really not as good as how they look like? It's not that. The fighter is power. There's no doubt about that. The problem lies on our side. We do not have any kind of power source that could truly bring out the prowess of these alien machines. From the looks of it, we are only able to bring out less than 10% of the machine's true potential, said the head engineer. The best analogy was having a powerful race car with 2,000 horsepower but ran on lower quality lead lace petroleum instead of the RON 100 premium petroleum that it deserved. To put things in perspective, the driver of the race car was a beginner driver instead of a seasoned racer. That was how far China was lagging behind in terms of powering the alien machine. The alien machine was supposed to be powered using energy crystals. Only with sufficient power source could the fighter reach its top speed. Not only that, one energy crystal would provide the jet enough fuel to circle the entire Earth for 10 circles. With an energy crystal, the firepower of the jet would be devastating. Interceptors were ships that were once used to escort ships, intercept high-speed missiles, and attack spaceships in outer space. One could only imagine just how powerful was the alien tech. With no choice in hand, the head engineer was forced to reserve retrofit in a nuclear battery pack into the fighter jet. In doing so, he had basically attached ankles' weights to the alien machine. Not only did the fighters have less than half of their top speed, but their fight duration was also reduced to less than 4,000 kilometers. In a battle, pilots of these fighters would have to make a turn in less than 1,500 kilometers for refueling. The worst one to be nerfed was the fighter's weaponry. In a real battle, the pilot had only one shot. If he had fired twice, he would not have enough power to make the return trip. 1,500 kilometer flight distance? Twice the top speed of the current fastest fighter in the world? That's all I need, said Han Tianyu. Even though it was disappointing, but he had a plan ready for it. As Jiang Fei said, Han Tianyu only needed to make a presentation. In the worst case scenario, he would only need to shoot down the opponent once and leave. He had only needed to make a statement to the Americans that China had the better fighter. There was no need to go for war anytime soon. It was a presentation to scare the Americans away from their waters. If it all went well, the Americans would retreat to focus on gathering intel on China's new tech, which would give China and Jiang Fei more than enough time to prepare a counter-strike. 
one could only pray that the Americans would call off the attack and go back to their lands instead of persisting on attacking. Once the fighters were ready, Han Tianyu used his influence in the media to make a taunting statement to the American. Han Tianyu had openly challenged the Americans for a standard one-on-one -on -one dogfight. Americans had always thought themselves as the big brother in the world. When someone dared to challenge them, they would surely be bringing in the rain with them. Excluding the new alien machines that Jiang Fei had given them, China was known to be one generation slower than the best countries in the world. It was the perfect taunt since the Americans were still oblivious to the alien fighter jets that were in China's hands. As soon as Han Tianyu made the declaration, the Americans responded 20 minutes later. Two sides met each other in China and discussed about the rules and conditions of the battle. In the first fight, both sides would send out one fighter jet and fight each other until either side conceded or got their fighter destroyed. No assistance could be given to the pilots. In the second fight, assistance from their base was allowed but direct interference to pilots was not allowed. In the third and final fight, in case no side had won twice in a row, assistance from their base was allowed and interference using radar jamming and electronic interference were allowed. A direct assault on the enemy craft using any form of physical weapons was not allowed. Both sides agreed that this would only be a military exercise. Win or lose, even in a scenario where the pilot did not survive, both countries must agree to not seek retribution that would lead to war. Even though the contract was made publicly, deep down, everyone knew that a war between China and American was unavoidable. The three-round match was basically an open field where both countries were able to observe each other's technology in an aerial combat. From America's point of view, they did not need to observe China for new technology, all they wanted to do was to give China a chance to fight on the same stage as them. In truth, they wanted to humiliate China. China, on the other hand, was merely trying to buy time. Having a dogfight was nothing more than a plan to delay their attacks. Chapter 734, The Martial Art Alliance's Motive, after Han Tianyu left, Jiang Fei decided not to stay in the capital. Firstly, Jiang Fei did not know anyone else here. Secondly, he had an inkling that people were spying on him all the time. Although the military did not assign anyone to spy on Jiang Fei directly so as not to upset him, they restaffed workers in the hotel that Jiang Fei was staying at. All of the members of staff were special agents. Although they did not spy on Jiang Fei very apparently, they paid attention to his every move. However, just as Jiang Fei was about to leave with Ariel, a guest had arrived. You are very well informed. Jiang Fei said when he saw that his guest was Bai Zongwei who had gone through some rough times with Jiang Fei. Hee hee, how have you been, Senior Jiang? Bai Zongwei bowed at Jiang Fei respectfully. Although he was a few years older than Jiang Fei, he was much weaker than Jiang Fei. Is there a reason why you have come? Jiang Fei asked as he invited Bai Zongwei into his room. They would like to meet you. Bai Zongwei pointed at the top of his head. It was clear that he was referring to the high-ranked individuals in the Martial Art Alliance. Hmm. All right. Jiang Fei nodded. After all, he was not occupied with anything else. It was a good time to visit the Martial Art Alliance. Since the Great War was about to begin, he would need the Martial Art Alliance to cooperate as they were the main force fighting against the mutants. Thank you, Senior Jiang. Bai Zongwei was very happy when he received Jiang Fei's positive response. When do we begin our journey? Jiang Fei asked. If it is convenient for you, we can leave immediately. Bai Zongwei answered. All right. Jiang Fei nodded as he called out to Ariel in the bedroom. Ariel, we are leaving now. I'm coming. Ariel answered and very quickly came to Jiang Fei's side. Eh. Who is this? Bai Zongwei clearly did not know who Ariel was. She's my junior. Jiang Fei laughed. Oh! Oh! Bai Zongwei glanced at Jiang Fei. However, he did not ask any further. As Bai Zongwei was also a young master in one of the bigger sects, he was very much aware of circumstances like this. In his opinion, it was normal for a capable man to be surrounded by multiple women. Mr. Jiang, 
Are you heading out? The bellboy asked when Jiang Fei and the others left the hotel. Yeah. Tell Commander Fan that I have some matters to attend to and will be leaving now. Thank him for his hospitality on my behalf. Jiang Fei nodded. As these special agents did not purposefully hide their identity, Jiang Fei was able to pass his message on without any hindrance. Senior Jiang, are you working with the military? Bai Zongwei asked when they got into the car. Bai Zongwei seemed to be somewhat unhappy. Yeah. Jiang Fei nodded. He could tell what went on in the minds of these martial artists. They think of themselves as superior to normal humans and therefore undermine the human government as well. Therefore, it was not a surprise that the government wanted to get rid of them. What good could come from working with those normal humans? Isn't it still up to martial artists like us to fight against the mutants? Bai Zongwei did not seem to notice Jiang Fei's look of annoyance. Perhaps Bai Zongwei had gotten used to belittling normal humans and since he thought of Jiang Fei as one of the metahumans, he did not feel the need to hide his true feelings about the matter. My parents are normal humans too. Jiang Fei exclaimed. He was getting increasingly annoyed with the arrogance of these martial artists. Although they were very respectful toward Jiang Fei, they did not realize that Jiang Fei still looked at himself as a normal human as he had only acquired his abilities not too long ago. Therefore, Jiang Fei still got upset when the martial artists talked about normal humans negatively. I'm sorry, Senior Jiang, I didn't mean to offend you intentionally, Bai Zongwei apologized immediately when he realized Jiang Fei was angered by his words. In the world of metahumans, a person's capability carried the most weight. Jiang Fei had managed to acquire level 4 capabilities at a very young age and also had a very mysterious master and therefore deserved a lot of respect. Where are we heading to? As Jiang Fei was in a bad mood, he went straight to the point. Green Willow Heights and the Baihua Mountain. Bai Zongwei answered. Jiang Fei was no stranger to that place. This was where Han Tianyu's sect was located. As it was the closest place to the capital, the Martial Art Alliance's superiors decided that was the best location to meet Jiang Fei. After finding out that Jiang Fei had come to the capital, the Martial Art Alliance's superiors quickly rushed over to the Green Willow Heights. Now that the mutants were exerting a lot of pressure in the region, the Martial Art Alliance was also feeling very nervous. They all needed to expand their powers urgently. Therefore, they focused their attention on Jiang Fei and the level 5 experts supporting him so that they could gain some benefits from them. As the Baihua Mountain was not very far away from the capital, Jiang Fei and the others arrived there in slightly over an hour. Although the place was not too far away from the hustle and bustle of the city, it was full of the peace and serenity of nature. Clearly, they had decided to establish Green Willow Heights there after very careful considerations. We have arrived, Bai Zongwei said as he got out of the car. He then swiftly opened the door on the other side for Jiang Fei. Let's go in. Jiang Fei tugged Ariel along as he walked toward the building. After entering the first courtyard, Jiang Fei could see a large number of martial artists waiting for him at the second gate. He knew quite a few of them. Jiang Fei, you have finally come. Grandmother Yuhua from Aquamoon Heavenly Palace laughed when she saw Jiang Fei. Yang Pu and Yang Qing stood behind her. However, the two of them did not look very happy when they saw that Jiang Fei had brought another chick along. Haha, little brother Jiang, you have come at last. We have been waiting for you since the morning. Bai Wanli from the Snow Mountain sect laughed along. Apart from Grandmother Yuhua and Bai Wanli, Jiang Fei could also see Ma Xiantong who had a sour expression on his face. Although Jiang Fei had made peace with the Soaring Clouds sect, Ma Xiantong was still upset with Jiang Fei's decision to bring Shang Guanqi home. Other than these three, Jiang Fei had not met the leaders from the other bigger sections. However, Jiang Fei could recognize a few of the aides standing behind these leaders. For example, Jiang Fei had previously met people like Xiao Ganming and Mao Gongsui. Sorry to keep you all waiting, Jiang Fei cuffed his fists at everyone. After all, the leaders of these bigger sects had all greeted him at the second gate which was a great act of honor toward Jiang Fei. Jiang Fei did not want to take them for granted. Haha, 
It's nothing. Don't listen to old bye. We had only just arrived. Someone chipped in. Come on, John Fay. This is no place to talk. Let's discuss inside. Ding Tianqing invited Jiang Fei inside as he was the host of the Green Willow Heights. After entering the hall, everyone sat down at their respective places. As Jiang Fei did not want to waste time bantering with these old folks, he went straight to the point. Everyone, I have very limited time. Be upfront and tell me what you want. Chapter 735, Jiang Fei's Inheritance Revealed, He he, Brother Jiang, you truly are blunt. Ding Tianqing laughed and continued speaking, To be honest, we have a very simple objective. We believe the mutants have ill intentions and would attack China very soon. We hope to work together to fight against these intruders. What do you think? I agree with that wholeheartedly. Jiang Fei laughed. Then, I wonder if you could let us know how much power do your master and your sect truly have? Bai Wanli asked. At the same time, everyone focused on Jiang Fei. After all, this was the question they were all concerned with the most. He, he. This is what you want to ask, Jiang Fei laughed as he looked around. Simultaneously, he was considering how to answer the question. Jiang Fei's so-called sect actually did not exist. However, he could not tell these people the truth. Without the backing of his fictitious sect, the Soaring Cloud sect would be the first to go after Jiang Fei's head. I am not in a position to tell you the details. However, if need be, my master will send 50 experts above level 4 to participate in the war. Jiang Fei said after a moment of contemplation. He had given the answer based on 0541's calculated forecasts. According to 0541's plan, if Jiang Fei used all of the energy crystals from Han Tianyu to create level 4 biohumans, he would be able to create as many as 60 of them. However, Jiang Fei needed to spare a few in case of emergency. Therefore, 50 biohumans was a safe prediction. What? 50 level 4 experts? How is that possible? Is that a bluff? After Jiang Fei spoke, the entire hall became filled with chatter. Most of the audience present were martial artists from secondary sections. Everyone knew their own sect's capabilities very well. Even China's biggest sect, the Soaring Clouds sect, had less than 30 level 4 experts. However, Jiang Fei's mentioning of 50 of them made everyone wonder how many more of these experts were there in his section. Moreover, Jiang Fei had left out the fact that these level 4 experts were all at the advanced tier and not the beginner tier. From 0541's point of view, creating beginner level 4 and advanced level 4 biohumans required the same amount of energy. The only difference would be the level 5 bio sample used. However, now that Jiang Fei owned Doomsday like one of his poultry animals, he was not worried about lacking bio samples. Therefore, there was no reason for Jiang Fei to waste the same amount of energy to create beginner level 4 biohumans. If not for the fact that Pinnacle Level 4 biohumans required much more energy, Jiang Fei would have been willing to create all 50 of them as Pinnacle Level 4 biohumans. Brother Jiang, are you for real? Ding Tianqing asked. Of course. Jiang Fei nodded without hesitation. In that case, once we enter the final stage of the war, how many Level 5 experts is your sect willing to offer? Will your master himself participate in the war? Grandmother Yuhua asked. Hmm. That's difficult. Jiang Fei was caught off guard this time. If he could not find Braveheart's engine room, he would not even be able to resurrect Isabella, much less create other level 5 biohumans. Why is that? Is your master unwilling to fight for China? Ma Xiantong chipped in. He was already unhappy with Jiang Fei. Now that he had a chance to put Jiang Fei in a difficult position, he naturally would not let it pass. Based on my master's personality, he would definitely not want to take part in the war. However, I may be able to convince a few of my seniors to take part. Jiang Fei rolled his eyes at Ma Xiantong. Naturally, Jiang Fei was aware that Ma Xiantong was trying to harm his relationship with the Martial Art Alliance. A few seniors? Everyone present was sharp-minded. 
they were able to pick up an important message from what Jiang Fei said. Previously, the members of the Martial Art Alliance were already aware that Jiang Fei had a level 5 senior called Phoenix. Now that Jiang Fei mentioned a few other seniors, that meant he had more than one senior at level 5. How great is the power behind this young man? Ma Xiantong frowned. If Jiang Fei's supporting network was as strong as he mentioned, the Soaring Clouds sect would be a difficult position if they continued to go against Jiang Fei. Could the Zhuge Shanjin truly be a legendary level 6 expert? Bai Wanli thought to himself. After all, training a level 5 disciple was already an incredible achievement. If he was able to train a group of level 5 disciples, that must mean that this fellow had much higher capabilities than level 5. No way! I can't let this young man off the hook. I must make him my son-in-law in the Aquamoon Heavenly Palace. Grandmother Yuhua thought to herself as her eyes lit up. Although she had worked very hard to get the Yang sisters close to Jiang Fei, Jiang Fei's resistance had nearly caused her to give up completely. However, now that she realized Jiang Fei had such a strong background, Grandmother Yuhua was convinced she had to get Jiang Fei on her side. As she thought of this, Grandmother Yuhua could not stop herself from looking at her two disciples. Yang Pa looked cold and distant without a trace of emotion while Yang Qing seemed a little upset. Clearly, Yang Qing was very jealous that Jiang Fei appeared to be very close to another girl. I must plan this carefully. Grandmother Yu Hua nodded. She knew that forceful methods would not work on Jiang Fei. After getting to know Jiang Fei's background, no other force would dare to behave inappropriately toward Jiang Fei. However, it was not an easy feat to make Jiang Fei accept her two disciples. Jiang Fei was unaware that his mindless words had actually caused such an impact in the hearts of the sect leaders. Presently, he was thinking of how to convince the Martial Art Alliance to cooperate with the government. After all, they were fighting not only against the mutants, but the major rice exporting countries' fleet as well. Brother Jiang, I wonder, what do you think of the fight against the mutants? Bai Wanli asked. My thoughts are to work with the government to fight against external invaders. Jiang Fei answered immediately. He was glad that Bai Wanli had asked the question he was trying to address. What could those normal humans possibly do? They are a bunch of trash. Ma Xiantong said unhappily. Look at yourself, be asterisk starred. I should just let the government's android army annihilate your entire sect. Jiang Fei rolled his eyes at Ma Xiantong. Of course, these were the words spoken only in Jiang Fei's heart. If you were to put it out there, these martial artists would undermine the government completely and put an end to their working relationship. By then, China would start fighting internally before the major rice exporting countries' fleet and the mutants even start attacking. All right then. In that case, can we please ask the Soaring Clouds sect to get rid of the major rice exporting country's fleet in the outer sea of China? Jiang Fei glanced at Ma Xiantong as he spoke very calmly. Chapter 736 Establishing One Status You Ma Xiantong was flabbergasted after hearing what Jiang Fei said. As the Soaring Clouds sect was China's biggest sect of the martial arts, they were naturally the most arrogant one. They undermined normal humans the most which meant that the Soaring Clouds sect rarely interacted with normal humans' affairs. If they were to fight against the major rice exporting country's fleet in the ocean, they would probably die from exhaustion before they even found the fleet. Yes, me? Isn't the Soaring Clouds sect almighty and powerful? What's the matter? Don't you think you can fight against a bunch of normal humans? Jiang Fei did not spare his words when speaking negatively to members of the Soaring Clouds sect who tried to kidnap his parents. All right, all right. Everyone, calm down. We are discussing about how to defeat the enemy. Let's not fight among ourselves. Ding Tianqin tried to mitigate the situation. Oof. I would not hold anything against a young child. Ma Xiantong immediately said. You be asterisk starred. Who are you calling a child? Jiang Fei slammed the table and stood up. Eh? Jiang Fei! Do you think that I want to teach you a lesson? Ma Xiantong replied. He had no idea that Jiang Fei's capabilities had skyrocketed. 
he still thought of Jiang Fei as the beginner level 4 youth. Ma Xientong had held back earlier because he did not want to upset Zhuge Shanzhen. However, now that Jiang Fei was scolding him in public, he would take none of that without retaliating. As the biggest sect leader in China's martial arts sphere, Ma Xientong had never been scolded in public before. Therefore, when Jiang Fei had scolded him today, he was instantly angered and wanted to teach Jiang Fei a lesson. He he, stop pretending to be much older and wiser. I want to kick your ass today. Jiang Fei did not show any sign of weakness at all. Jiang Fei had purposely infuriated Ma Xientong because he wanted to establish his status. These martial artists had gotten too arrogant. If they did not feel challenged, they would not listen to Jiang Fei's plan to work with the government no matter what he proposed. Secondly, Jiang Fei secretly held something against Ma Xientong. As Phoenix could not defeat Feng Tianqi when his parents were kidnapped, Jiang Fei had to let him off the hook. Now that he had pinnacle level 4 capabilities and was undefeatable by anyone below level 5, he wanted to teach Ma Xientong a lesson as befitting of a hot blooded 17 year old. No. Guys, please calm down, Bai Wanli tried to stop the whole thing from blowing up. Their enemies were advancing on China. If the martial art alliance fought amongst themselves, they would be in great trouble. That's right. Jiang Fei, don't act rashly. Senior Ma, please calm down as well. We are all one big family. Is this really necessary? Grandmother Yu Hua chipped in. He was truly worried for Jiang Fei whom she treated as her own son-in-law. I will not hold a grudge against this young kid for the sake of you people. Ma Xientong kept his cool so as not to upset Jiang Fei's support system. After all, Jiang Fei had only just mentioned 50 level 4 experts and at least 2 level 5 seniors. This was quite worrisome for Ma Xientong. Old man, stop calling me a kid. Did your mother not teach you how to behave after she gave birth to you? Jiang Fei was determined to teach Ma Xientong a lesson. Therefore, he spoke bluntly. You! As the master of a sect, Ma Xientong had never been humiliated this way. Therefore, he could no longer contain his anger. Everyone! Am not bullying a young one for no reason. This kid has reached my limits. I will teach him a lesson on behalf of his master. Ma Xientong was beyond angry at this point as he spoke with his brows raised. Stop, Bai Wanli and the others did not want Jiang Fei to fight with Ma Xientong. Ma Xientong seemed as if he would kill someone right now. In their minds, Jiang Fei was only a beginner level 4 expert. If Ma Xientong really killed Jiang Fei, Jiang Fei's support system would no doubt destroy the Soaring Cloud sect to avenge him. By then, the Martial Art Alliance would be doomed. Ma Xientong, get your ass out here. While Bai Wanli and Grandmother Yuhua tried to hold Ma Xientong back, Jiang Fei had already walked out of the hall and into the courtyard. Everyone still believed that Ma Xientong had the right to initiate. Although Green Willow Heights sounded like a beautiful place, it was still the grounds of a martial arts section. Therefore, the courtyard was not decorated with pillars and pagodas. Instead, it was a large fighting arena. Everyone, let's not talk any further. I will teach this kid a lesson today. If you do not want to challenge the Soaring Cloud sect, get out of my way! Ma Xientong shouted as he walked outside. This, everyone was dumbfounded. They could no longer hold Ma Xientong back. If they tried to stop him, it would be an open declaration of war against the Soaring Cloud sect. Young kid, you have gone too far. I will teach you a proper lesson today. Ma Xientong's eyes were red with anger. Even members of the Martial Art Alliance treated him with respect. However, today, a young kid had insulted him and his mother in public. This was a huge embarrassment to Ma Xientong. Hee hee, we have yet to know who will teach whom a lesson. Jiang Fei smiled as he looked at Ma Xientong directly. Young kid! You go first! Ma Xientong was close to losing his cool completely. However, he still had a rational mind. After all, he was close to 50 years old. 
Attacking Jian Fei was already a fault to his name as he would appear as a bully. If he attacked Jian Fei first, he would be embarrassed regardless of whether he won or not. Therefore, he decided to let Jian Fei initiate the attack so that he could defeat Jian Fei thereafter. As such, he would be able to teach Jian Fei a lesson as well as spare him some embarrassment. Oh? Should I go first? I am afraid you might be embarrassed. Jian Fei did not hold back. After laughing loudly, he charged toward Ma Xientong. Lie down! Ma Xientong shouted when he saw Jian Fei charging toward him. He immediately waved his sleeves as a gust of wind blew at Jian Fei's face. Ah! Yang Qin shouted. Don't worry, Yang Pa patted her sister's shoulder to calm her down. Sister, aren't you worried for him? Yang Qin turned around to ask. What's there to worry about? Yang Pa said without emotion. That's Ma Xientong. Even our master may not be able to defeat him. Yang Qin said softly. Stop trying to compliment me. I am definitely unable to defeat him. Grandmother Yu Hua said without turning around. Master, I did not mean that. But, Jiang Fei, Yang Qin was tongue-tied. He is no fool. Haven't you noticed? He had been intentionally challenging Sek Master Ma so that he would fight against him. If he did not believe in his own capabilities, why would he do so? Yang Pa said. However, there is still a huge gap between a beginner level 4 and a pinnacle level 4. Yang Qing said as she looked at Jiang Fei. Are you still so naive to believe that he is only a beginner level 4? Yang Pa looked around at the audience. Chapter 737, Lie Down, This, Everyone Present Was Actually Smart and Alert. As they were all worried about Jiang Fei's safety and also the Alliance's destruction, their thoughts were obstructed. Now that Yang Pa had mentioned it, they suddenly realized that she was right. In the beginning, Ma Xientong was indeed the one who spoke against Jiang Fei. However, he barely spoke after that. Jiang Fei was the one who kept pushing Ma Xientong. Now that they had thought about it, it seemed like Jiang Fei was the one provoking Ma Xientong to fight him. Although Jiang Fei was a very inexperienced youth in the eyes of the sect leaders, none of them thought of him as a fool. Since Jiang Fei dared to provoke Ma Xientong, he must have believed in his own capabilities. If he has the confidence to challenge Senior Ma, what kind of capabilities does he have? Pinnacle Level 4? But he's still so young. Mao Gongsui exclaimed. So what? Haven't you seen the senior he brought the last time? She was already a level 5 expert. Lu Gong Dan said. That's different. Phoenix is still a part of the mutants. She is different from martial artists like us. Mao Gongsui shook his head. Just watch. We'll find out once they start fighting. Ding Tianqin stopped the argument. At the same time, Jiang Fei and Ma Xientong began their fight. Ma Xientong had thought that Jiang Fei would be defeated as soon as he attacked. However, Jiang Fei was able to easily dodge his gust of wind. In fact, once he got close, Jiang Fei struck him with a perfectly angled and high-speed kick. You're pretty good. No wonder you are so arrogant. Ma Xientong snorted. Although Jiang Fei had dodged his attack, Ma Xientong still did not perceive Jiang Fei to be as strong as he was. When Ma Xientong saw Jiang Fei's kick approaching, he did not try to dodge it. Instead, Ma Xientong used his hand to grab Jiang Fei's leg with the intention of locking his movement. Dragon Claw! This was Ma Xientong's feigned technique. All his strength was concentrated in his hand and could be controlled at will. If he used less effort, he would be able to paralyze his opponent. If he used more effort, he would be able to break an expert's leg completely. Ma Xientong's technique was pretty strong. If used against his own disciples or opponents much weaker than him, he would be able to defeat his opponent without hurting him. However, if Jiang Fei continued to speak rudely, he would not mind breaking Jiang Fei's leg. Although Ma Xientong's plan sounded well in his head, he had underestimated Jiang Fei's capabilities. 
From the beginning, Ma Xiantong had treated Jiang Fei as a youth with lesser capabilities and not his true opponent. Therefore, when Ma Xiantong's Dragon Claw came into contact with Jiang Fei's Thunder Gale Kick technique which used 80% of Jiang Fei's strength, a bright light flashed from Jiang Fei's leg. Jiang Fei's origin force combined the strength of China's Inner Qi technique as well as the various special attributes of the Western mutant abilities. Right then, the origin force exerted by Jiang Fei was thunder-based. A strong electric current coursed through Ma Xiantong's arm which suddenly fell paralyzed. Then, Jiang Fei's kick landed on Ma Xiantong's palm. Crack! As a soft sound was heard, minor cracks appeared on Ma Xiantong's palm and arm. Ma Xiantong's face turned red as he felt the intense pain in his body. You deserve to die. Ma Xiantong's eyes turned red as his right arm fell on his side. He held his left hand to Jiang Fei's throat like a sword. He was planning to kill Jiang Fei with a single blow. Ma Xiantong had changed from feeling embarrassed to feeling angry. Being defeated by a youngster in front of so many martial arts peers made Ma Xiantong feel extremely insulted. Although his reason for losing was mainly caused by his underestimation of his opponent, it was still a defeat. Rage and embarrassment filled Ma Xiantong's mind instantly and caused him to lose his rationality. Jiang Fei smiled when he saw Ma Xiantong's extended hand. Ma Xiantong had already lost his rationality. Therefore, his attacks were disoriented. Jiang Fei easily dodged Ma Xiantong's next attack by tilting his body to one side and then gripped Ma Xiantong's wrist with his right hand. Humph. Lie down! Jiang Fei snorted. He repeated the exact words Ma Xiantong had spoken earlier. As Jiang Fei pulled backward, he stuck his leg out to trip Ma Xiantong who then fell to the ground. Although Ma Xiantong was not hurt from the fall, he looked even more upset. Jiang Fei's first attack brought Ma Xiantong a lot of pain while his second attack brought Ma Xiantong a lot of shame. Young kid! I want you dead! Ma Xiantong jumped up from the ground immediately. A strong energy began emitting from his body. Oh no! Ma Xiantong is going all out. People standing around were in a state of shock and fear. Everyone, get behind me! Ding Tianqing gathered his disciples behind him. With a pinnacle level 4 expert losing his temper, the Green Willow Heights was in great danger of falling apart. Clang! Ma Xiantong drew his sword out from behind him. He also suppressed the injury on his arm with his inner chi ability. Have you given up on your fists and legs? Are we fighting with swords now? Jiang Fei laughed. Die, young kid! Ma Xiantong lashed out with his sword which emitted a three feet long beam of light. Clang! Jiang Fei also drew out his Qingying sword from behind him. After all, they were both at the same level. Jiang Fei did not dare to fight with his bare hands. Although Jiang Fei wanted to teach Ma Xiantong a lesson, he did not want to accidentally kill the Soaring Cloud sex leader. Therefore, he merely retrieved his Qingying sword instead of the Zhanglu sword. After all, if Jiang Fei killed Ma Xiantong, the Soaring Cloud sect would go all out to fight against Jiang Fei. By then, China would be in a mess and the mutants would benefit from the situation. Shuffles Bam! As Ma Xiantong waved his sword around, beams of light were emitted. Some of them were blocked by Jiang Fei's Qingying sword. However, a few of them collided against the plants in the Green Willow Heights and caused major explosions. What did I do to deserve this? Ding Tianqing exclaimed bitterly. Jiang Fei and Ma Xiantong's fight was tearing his home apart. It was very bad luck indeed. Ding Tianqing was feeling very concerned. Not only was his house being torn apart, he would also have to occasionally block the beams of light from Ma Xiantong's sword on behalf of his disciples. Otherwise, he might lose more than just his house. Based on how the fight is going, Jiang Fei seems to really have pinnacle level 4 capabilities. By Wanli's side, Mao Gong Sui and Lu Gong Dan kept their mouths shut. Although both of them were in their late 40s, they had only achieved intermediate level 4. They had no right to judge Jiang Fei at all. Why do I feel that senior Ma would lose? Grandmother Yu Hua suddenly commented. 
Would Senior Ma lose? That's not possible. Bai Wanli exclaimed. Right then, Ma Xintong was putting a lot of pressure on Jiang Fei. Although Jiang Fei had strong capabilities, his sword-wielding techniques could still not rival Ma Xintong's. Chapter 738, Shocking Pace of Learning, Pay Attention to Jiang Fei's Sword-Wielding Techniques Grandmother Yu Hua said cheerfully. She was becoming more and more pleased with her future son-in-law. Regardless of what Jiang Fei thought, she was absolutely certain about making him her son-in-law. Other people were unaware of what Grandmother Yu Hua was thinking. However, they all started paying attention to Jiang Fei's sword-wielding technique. In all honesty, Jiang Fei had very horrible sword-wielding techniques. The main reason for that was because Jiang Fei had spent too little time practicing. Therefore, despite 0541's careful design, Jiang Fei was only to replicate the form but not the impact of the techniques. He might appear to be skilled. However, experts could see through immediately the many flaws in his techniques. Right then, Jiang Fei did not lose mainly because Ma Xiantong had already been injured and could not use his techniques properly. Moreover, Jiang Fei had much more energy than Ma Xiantong. On top of that, Jiang Fei also had support from 0541. That explained why he was able to defend against Ma Xiantong's attacks successfully. However, through careful observation, the audience discovered something special about Jiang Fei. As the fight progressed, Jiang Fei's sword-wielding techniques became better and more refined. There were also greater transformations in his techniques. Sometimes, it even appeared as if his sword techniques were designed specifically to counter Ma Xiantong's techniques. Isn't his pace of learning too frighteningly fast? Bai Wanli's jaws were wide open from shock. This young man had achieved so much partially because of his master Zhuge Shanjin and also partially because of his own natural talents. Ding Tianqing nodded. Ah! This young man is definitely a rarity in the martial arts world. Mao Gongsui added with a pinch of salt. Jiang Fei had achieved as much as Mao Gongsui did in ten years, but only with a fraction of the time spent. The audience observing the fight began to admire Jiang Fei greatly. However, none of them knew that Jiang Fei had been judged by Old Man Hai as not having the ability to train in the martial arts. If not for 0541's existence, Jiang Fei could not possibly break through his barriers in learning martial arts and in acquiring his own energy system. Jiang Fei's growth was greatly associated with alien technology as well as 0541. The fight he was currently in was related to those things just as much. When he started the fight, Jiang Fei realized that he had oversimplified the challenge. 0541's overall prediction that Jiang Fei could defeat anyone below level 5 was based on a number of factors, which included Jiang Fei's Jean Lu sword. The Jean Lu sword was a god blade which could kill normal metahumans with a small cut. Even a strong level 5 expert would not dare to get close to the god blade. Therefore, Jiang Fei's overall capability had been determined as stronger than anyone below level 5. Without the Jean Lu sword, Jiang Fei could still fight against normal mutants and fellows from the European Vatican. However, he still struggled against skilled martial artists like Ma Xiantong. These old fellows had practiced martial arts for decades and were very well trained in sword wielding techniques. In comparison, Jiang Fei was much weaker in terms of his techniques. Although he had a slight advantage in his energy, it was still difficult for him to beat them. Numeric predictions could never fully represent the reality. When experts fought against each other, there were many factors to be considered. A lot of factors were actually not able to be incorporated in numeric predictions. Although Jiang Fei was not as skilled in techniques as Ma Xiantong, he still had the supreme artificial intelligence 0541. 0541 would record and dissect Ma Xiantong's sword-wielding techniques. Then, 0541 would figure out the best way to counter those techniques and provide the information to Jiang Fei. As such, Jiang Fei was akin to a godly fighter. The same technique would not work on him twice. Moreover, under such an intense fight between experts, Jiang Fei was also improving very quickly. Jiang Fei actually had very good natural talents in learning martial arts. 
although his veins had been sealed, such that old man Hyde determined him as not suited for learning martial arts, he was gifted with incredible learning and comprehension abilities. Perhaps this was all fated. During the fight against Ma Xiantong, Jiang Fei tried to improve his own sword-wielding techniques while receiving information from O541 on how to counter Ma Xiantong's techniques. Therefore, the fight was becoming easier for Jiang Fei as time progressed, whereas Ma Xiantong was finding it increasingly difficult and tiring. With duress from Jiang Fei's continuous attacks, coupled with the intense pain from the injury on his arm, Ma Xiantong's sweat began to drip from his forehead. His sword-wielding techniques were beginning to appear disorientated. After approximately half an hour, Ma Xiantong and Jiang Fei seemed to be on equal terms. After around an hour, Ma Xiantong ended up being defeated by Jiang Fei in a corner of the Green Willow Heights. Clang! Jiang Fei leapt backward and put his Qingying sword back into its cover. Then, he walked toward the crowd without even batting an eyelid at Ma Xiantong. Phew! Phew! Ma Xiantong panted as he saw Jiang Fei walking away. He couldn't care less about his image right then. He even used his precious sword as a crutch to support himself. Members of the crowd glanced at each other as they were uncertain about how to face this young expert. Ma Xiantong was by no means weak. In fact, he was the strongest martial artist among the sect leaders. Yet, he was defeated by Jiang Fei. Although Jiang Fei discontinued the fight to save Ma Xiantong from complete embarrassment, it was clear to everyone present then that Jiang Fei had won the fight. Amazing, Brother Jiang, you are indeed a young hero, yeah. You have achieved so much at such a young age. Us old fools could not possibly compare. After finding out about Jiang Fei's true capabilities, everyone treated Jiang Fei with even greater respect. A 17-year-old youth had actually defeated the famed Pinnacle Level 4 martial art expert, Ma Xiantong. If these people had not witnessed it in person, nobody would believe that that had happened. How could Jiang Fei possess such capabilities? Apart from his incredible natural talents, his master must have contributed to his success greatly. Due to such thoughts, the martial artist's present thought of Jiang Fei's non-existent master as even more powerful and mysterious. After the sect leaders had reported what they saw, the level 5 old fellows also started inquiring about Zhuge Shanjin. Unlike Bai Wanli and Grandmother Yuhua who now showered Jiang Fei with compliments, Ma Xiantong stood alone by the sidelines. He was unsure of whether to stay or to leave. If he chose to leave without a closure to the plan against the mutants, the Soaring Cloud sect would not be able to withstand the attack of the mutant army and their biotechnology without the help of the Martial Art Alliance. However, if he stayed, Ma Xiantong would have to bear the embarrassment. Although Jiang Fei spared him in the end, the results of the fight were very clear. Ma Xiantong had been thoroughly defeated by a 17-year-old kid. Even his famed sword-wielding techniques did not help him win the fight, which made it even more embarrassing for Ma Xiantong. Chapter 739, Evolve, My Fair Ladies, Jiang Fei ignored Ma Xiantong who looked very annoyed. Meanwhile, he turned to the other leaders in the Martial Art Alliance and said, I have already arrived at an initial agreement with the military. Once the war begins, we will work together to fight against the mutants and the major rice exporting countries' fleet. I hope all of you can participate, working together won't be a problem. However, how does it work? Bai Wanli asked. There was a clear change in attitude amongst the martial artists. In the world of martial arts, and even the entire metahuman world, power was determined by one's capabilities. After Jiang Fei defeated Ma Xiantong, everyone treated him with greater respect. The first objective is to cooperate with the military by keeping the war close to Tokyo, Jiang Fei said. What? Cooperate with those normal humans? Ma Xiantong chipped in again. Although he had been defeated by Jiang Fei, he felt that working with normal humans and cooperating with them as a supporting group were two separate matters. Jiang Fei had said to cooperate with the military which meant the martial artists had become supporters rather than the main force. Ma Xiantong was unable to accept that. That's right. We can't rely on the normal humans. Bai Wanli nodded. Yikes. Jiang Fei sighed in his heart. 
these martial artists have become far too arrogant. Jiang Fei's words were not sufficient to convince them to change their mind. In that case, let's split up after we arrive at Tokyo, Jiang Fei said helplessly. He knew there was a greater likelihood of things going wrong if these arrogant martial artists and the military men were forced to stay together. Therefore, he had to opt for a more viable alternative. That works better. The martial artists nodded in agreement. If so, he'll contact you once the details of the plan are out. Now, head back and prepare yourselves. We cannot afford to lose this war. Jiang Fei said to the crowd. Yeah, all right, Brother Jiang, send our regards to Master Zhuge. D asterisk him in. You are all leading just like that? Ding Tianqing and his disciples were close to tears when they saw Jiang Fei and the other sects leading. Due to the fight between Jiang Fei and Ma Xiantong, the Green Willow Heights was in a horrendous state. However, as a secondary sect master, he did not dare to blame the matter on Soaring Cloud sect. Moreover, he also could not afford to upset Jiang Fei who had an even more frightening support system. Therefore, he could only keep his mouth shut. Husband, where are we going? Ariel asked after they had gotten out of Green Willow Heights. As there was nobody else around, Ariel started addressing Jiang Fei as her husband again. Hmm. Let's go home. Jiang Fei said after some thought. All right. Ariel and Jiang Fei's fingers interlocked and they were instantly teleported away. When Jiang Fei opened his eyes again, he and Ariel were already back on Manda Square's highest floor. You are much faster than Han Tianyu's aircraft. Jiang Fei laughed. Regardless of how fast an aircraft was, it would never be able to compete with instant teleportation. Upon returning home, Jiang Fei discovered Si Taing and Shang Guanqi both watching a show on the television. He saw that his parents were not around. After asking the two, Jiang Fei found out that his parents had actually gone out for a movie. Without any adults around, Jiang Fei and the three girls were less serious. They did not even bother making dinner on their own and instead just ordered in. Jiang Fei did not know what Ariel had said to Si Taing. After spending some time together, Si Taing seemed to have completely accepted Ariel's presence. Although Si Taing was a little jealous that Jiang Fei had more than one girlfriend, she did not seem too bothered. Jerk! You must compensate me for what you have done. Si Taing finally said now that none of the adults were around. How do I compensate you? Does this work? Jiang Fei said as he gave Si Taing a kiss. He was already very close to Si Taing since before. Therefore, such an act had already become very common between the two of them. You guys continue messing around. I'm going back to my room to read. Shang Guanqi could not stand it anymore. She walked into her room with reddened cheeks. Husband, I want a kiss too. Ariel put her face close to Jiang Fei's. All right, tell me. What kind of compensation do you want? Jiang Fei asked after giving Ariel a kiss. I don't want to stay at home and worry about you. I want to go out there and face everything with you. Si Taing said while she stared at Jiang Fei's eyes. Ever since Si Taing found out about Jiang Fei's metahuman identity, as well as the dangers in the metahuman world, she was constantly worried about Jiang Fei every time he left home, just as his parents were. They were all concerned that Jiang Fei would be met with an accident in a battle and would never return home. Moreover, Si Taing was slightly affected by the fact that Ariel could accompany Jiang Fei wherever he went because of her special abilities. Therefore, Si Taing decided to tell Jiang Fei what she wanted now that his parents were not around. Have you thought this through? Jiang Fei asked in a serious tone as he stopped smiling and stared into Si Taing's eyes. In all honesty, Jiang Fei had thought of making Si Taing a metahuman when he brought Ariel home. He even had plans to make his parents metahumans in the beginning. However, after Jiang Fei's parents had rejected his suggestion, Jiang Fei felt that he should not ask Si Taing about it so soon. If the girl was truly ready for it, he would make her a metahuman. 
When Jiang Fei first acquired the Bioexperimental Laboratory, 0541 had mentioned that the bio samples within were sufficient to create 10 super potions which could provide a person with the energy system and establish an energy recovery ability. Although Jiang Fei had used one set of those, there were nine left. He was more than happy to give Si Taing one of the sets of potions. Thereafter, energy strengthening potions would no longer be an issue. As Jiang Fei had Doomsday at his disposal, it was easy for him to acquire potions which enhanced one's capabilities. All he needed to do was to let Si Taing consume the potions bit by bit to increase her capabilities. I have, Si Taing answered seriously. It's very painful to increase one's capabilities, Jiang Fei warned. He had personally experienced the intense pain after consuming the potions. It'll do it for you. Si Taing looked at Jiang Fei lovingly. All right. I will prepare everything you need. You'll have powers in two days. Jiang Fei nodded. If Si Taing could acquire powers, not only would it help Jiang Fei, it would also give her the ability to protect herself. Moreover, after becoming a metahuman, she would be able to converse on wider topics with Jiang Fei and Ariel rather than being an outsider who did not understand what was going on most of the time. Chapter 740, Duel in the Air, it might sound easy to modify Si Taing's body, as if drinking the potions would solve everything. However, it was actually a complicated process. Everyone's body had different qualities and would require a different composition of potions. If Si Taing drank the same potions that Jiang Fei did, she might be tragically hurt. 0541, Body Scan Jiang Fei asked 0541 to thoroughly scan Si Taing's body after getting her to stand up straight. Thereafter, 0541 started calculating the compositions of the potions for Si Taing based on her Bodhis qualities. Once the compositions were identified, 0541 would start producing the potions. 0541 needed time to calculate the compositions as well as produce the potions. However, none of that required Jiang Fei's involvement. Therefore, Jiang Fei proceeded to have dinner with the three girls. After a while, Jiang Fei's parents finally returned home. Jiang Fei went into his own room after chatting with them for a bit. Si Taing and Ariel were brought into Shang Guangqi's room again. After logging into the game, Jiang Fei realized there was not much for him to do. Although the known cannons had been shifted to the front lines, they still needed to be tested. So, the battle would not start immediately. Also, Jiang Fei did not know who to approach for more quests. Therefore, he was not occupied with anything. After fighting in one of the class competition battles, Jiang Fei continued to accompany his ladies. While Jiang Fei was having a leisurely time, Han Tianyu was nearly working himself to death. Ever since they had declared war against the major rice exporting country's fleet, they entered a state of preparations for war. Moreover, in order to intimidate the major rice exporting country's fleet, and also to prevent the opponents from discovering the true strength of their battle aircraft, Han Tianyu had used the simplified blueprints from Jiang Fei to modify his aircraft. Jiang Fei had not given all of the blueprints to Han Tianyu mainly because Planet Namex technology was far greater than Earth's. If Jiang Fei gave them all of the original blueprints, Han Tianyu's engineers would not even be able to understand them. It was a much better approach for 0541 to simplify the blueprints. 0541 even indicated where modifications could be made in the blueprints so that the engineers would not have to waste time to figure things out on their own. With pressure from Han Tianyu to work overtime, the engineers were able to make some minor modifications to the battle aircraft within a day. The next morning, three battle aircraft were dragged out of the aero shed and parked quietly on a military runway along the east coast. Around 8 o'clock in the morning, Han Tianyu received a call from the major rice exporting country's fleet. Han, do you regret this? Aren't you worried that we will destroy your battle aircraft before you have had a chance to even attack us? The leader in charge of the major rice exporting country's Pacific Ocean 7th Fleet was the commanding officer. Don't worry. We don't mind losing a few of our battle aircraft. Besides, we already produced over a hundred of them. Han Tianyu bluffed. Although there were actually only 30 battle aircraft, and most of them were not even operational, Han Tianyu had blatantly told such a big lie. 
Han, you seem to be very confident with your products. Robert said with a frown. Although he was not very bothered by China's so-called new battle aircraft, Han Tianyu's confidence worried him. Of course, these aircraft were created based on our company's alien technology. Han Tianyu revealed a little bit of information to confuse the opponents. Han, stop blowing your own trumpet. Alien technology is no secret to us. Do you think only China has such technology? Robert laughed. The major rice exporting country was over a decade ahead of other countries in terms of their technological advancement. That was mostly attributed to their early discovery of alien technology and additional research. Let's cut the crap. If you have no other objections, we can start the first duel. Han Tianyu laughed. Sure. Robert nodded. He wanted to see how great China's new battle aircraft were. Thereafter, one of the modified Planet Namix battle aircraft took off from China's airport. One of the major rice exporting countries' elite battle aircraft also took to the air in Tokyo. Although the major rice exporting country's aircraft carrier was closer to China, their carrier aircraft ammunition and petrol storage could not compare to the fighter jets. Therefore, to ensure victory, the major rice exporting country still used a fighter jet to fight against China's battle aircraft. The two battle aircraft headed into the dual zone. At the same time, both sides activated their radar systems to detect their opponent's position. The rules of the duel included that, during the first round, both sides could not offer any help to the battle aircraft. Therefore, both the major rice exporting country and China's fleets turned off the active radars on their fleets. The battle aircraft from both parties would have to depend on their own radars to detect the enemy. Eagle One has entered the fight zone. The radar has not detected anything. The opponent must not have entered the fight zone. The major rice exporting country's pilot started reporting his status. In the eyes of the major rice exporting country's military, China's battle aircraft were rubbish. Therefore, they believed it was normal for their own battle aircraft to enter the fight zone first. This is Falcon 1 requesting for permission to open fire. In comparison to the major rice exporting country's nervous pilot who was trying to locate his opponent, China's pilot was much more relaxed. As soon as the major rice exporting country's battle aircraft had taken to the air, his radar had already locked onto the target. If China's pilot decided to fire the light cannon, the major rice exporting country's battle aircraft would have been destroyed before even leaving the airport. However, in order to let the show play on and for it to be convincing, Han Tianyu did not allow the light cannon to be used. He ordered the pilot to enter the battle state at one-third of the battle aircraft's speed. As such, China's battle aircraft would indeed enter the fight zone later than the major rice exporting countries. However, the battle aircraft made with Planet Namix technology was able to ascend to a much higher altitude than the major rice exporting countries' aircraft. Although the two battle aircraft were about to fight, China's battle aircraft was actually over 2,000 meters above the major rice exporting country's aircraft. For battle aircraft, 2,000 meters was a very short distance. However, due to the perfect invisibility effect of Planet Namix battle aircraft, the major rice exporting country's pilots still had no idea how close they were. Dive! Destroy him! Han Tianyu decided it was time to act and so he gave the command. Falcon 1, Affirmative. The eyes of the Chinese pilot lit up with excitement. He had always dreamed of destroying a major rice exporting country's battle aircraft. In the past, pilots like him had to use rusty flying technology and an advantage in numbers to fight against more advanced battle aircraft from the major rice exporting country. However, today, China's battle aircraft were much stronger than their opponents. Although the Planet Namex battle aircraft was restricted to one-third of its flying speed and was not as fast as the major rice exporting country's aircraft, the latter's pilot who had not discovered his opponent was still akin to a prey as he maintained a slow patrolling speed. On top of that, China's battle aircraft was not very far away and also had the additional speed from diving. Chapter 741, You Are Cheating, Come On The first blood belongs to me, the pilot steering the aircraft at a high speed exclaimed as his eyes glowed brightly. 
He was staring at his prey in front of him who was completely unaware of his presence. The distance of 2,000 meters took very little time for the battle aircraft which moved at an extremely high speed. Within two seconds, the gap between the two battle aircraft were reduced to less than 1,000 meters. Right then, China's pilot initiated the aircraft's firing bay. The firing bay was originally designed to be equipped with phasic missiles. However, Jiang Fei had excluded the phasic missiles as they required too much energy to produce. Creating one phasic missile might cost even more energy than creating an entire battle aircraft. Phasic missiles were different from the guided missiles on Earth. These items could jump through a short distance of space. Not only would traditional methods of blocking be futile, even energy shields would not be able to stop them. However, the planet Namek's battle aircraft clearly were not equipped with phasic missiles. Despite that, Han Tianyu's engineers had added a pair of arrow cannons. After the firing bay's door was opened, the battle aircraft's invisibility effect was disrupted. The major rice exporting country's radar on the battle aircraft was able to detect it immediately. Oh my god! How did he do that? Right then, the major rice exporting country's pilot was shocked. The enemy's aircraft had appeared out of nowhere and was already right behind him. He could not even target his enemy if he wanted to. Bratatatat. Before the major rice exporting country's pilot even had time to react, China's battle aircraft opened fire. Two streams of bullets from the arrow cannons were fired and instantly destroyed the major rice exporting country's battle aircraft. Bang! The major rice exporting country's pilot did not even have a chance to open fire. His battle aircraft had been blasted into two halves which immediately exploded. As the distance was too close, debris from the major rice exporting country's aircraft even came into contact with the Chinese aircraft. However, the aircraft was protected by a weak barrier of energy shield. Planet Namek's expertise in energy weapons meant they did not leave out the defensive component of the battle aircraft. Although the nuclear energy supply was running low, it was still capable of defending against small bits of flying debris. Beep beep! However, as the energy shield was activated, the Chinese aircraft's internal alert started ringing. Energy was running low and the pilot had to return immediately. Fortunately, the battle had already ended. The Chinese pilot began the journey back to base with the glory of getting the first kill. Eagle 1 What happened? Please answer, Eagle 1. Please answer. Just as the major rice exporting country's pilot cried out for God, his plane had already been attacked and destroyed promptly after. Therefore, regardless of how many times the fleet called for his response, he would not be able to reply to them. Robert, I have good news for you. We have won the first round. Han Tianyu laughed. What? Although Robert was already mentally prepared for the news when he lost contact with the battle aircraft, he was still in disbelief when Han Tianyu announced his victory. The powerful major rice exporting country's battle aircraft had actually lost in a one-on-one -on -one duel. You are cheating. This was Robert's immediate response. You have to prove it. You may still have time to retrieve the black box now. Han Tianyu smiled. I don't need you to tell me that. If the black box proves that you are cheating, we will see each other on the battlefield. Robert threatened. He then hung up disrespectfully. He's speaking as if we couldn't possibly win without cheating. Zhang Fei laughed. The war was unavoidable. The duel was only meant to buy them more time. Very soon, the major rice exporting country was able to retrieve the black box. They were also able to witness what the pilot had gone through. An incredible invisibility effect, it was actually able to nullify our plane's radar. This is indeed a huge technological breakthrough, however, why did they use arrow cannons? Wouldn't it be safer to use guided missiles? I think their invisibility technique must have required them to get rid of all electromagnetic signals. As such, while we would face a challenge in locating them, they would also have to bear the cost of not using electromagnetic signals which meant they are unable to use guided missiles. That explains why they gave up on guided missiles. One of the major rice exporting countries' officers explained. That's right. Moreover, 
their battle aircraft does not have very high speed. It seems that China has yet to solve their engine's problem. Another officer said, If that's the case, it would be easy to make adjustments to our strategy. Firstly, we need a high-speed battle aircraft to be equipped with a target-locking radar. The battle aircraft does not need to be equipped with long-distance guided missiles. It will only require two normal missiles. Try to reduce the plane's weight so that its speed can be increased. As long as we maintain our distance after discovering China's battle aircraft and avoid their arrow cannons, we will win for sure," Robert said. He sounded unusually confident. It was almost as if he had thoroughly identified the Chinese aircraft's weaknesses. Although we had lost a battle aircraft and a brave soldier, it's all worth it. If not for those sacrifices, we would not have been able to identify those weaknesses. Had we initiated the war directly, we would have lost even more. The Chinese are too naive. Do they really think such invisibility effects would scare us and stop the war? That's right. As the final obstacle to our plan of world domination, the Chinese should be prepared to get their asses kicked. The commanding officers from the major rice exporting country's fleet seemed very confident as they began preparations for the second day of duels. Although the first round of duels had ended in an instant, they needed more time to make modifications for their second battle aircraft. After all, a duel was not a war. Under certain conditions, the major rice exporting country would try to increase their likelihood of winning rather than trying to rush things through. Han Tianyu was very pleased with the major rice exporting country's request to have one duel each day. His original objective was to buy himself time. He could not have been happier with the major rice exporting country's willingness to cooperate. However, he still had to act the part. Han Tianyu started by objecting to the major rice exporting country's request and calling them out for breaking the rules. He then insulted the major rice exporting country for being cowardly. The major rice exporting country did not show any sign of weakness either and used various excuses to counter Han Tianyu's words. In fact, they even blamed China for cheating in the first round. They also refused to publicly reveal the black box's content on the basis of it being a military secret. All in all, the major rice exporting country believed that they were the only ones who deserved absolute victory. If their opponents won, that must mean that their opponents had cheated. Han Tianyu and the Chinese military could only laugh at the major rice exporting country's insults. Regardless of what they said, the battle would soon occur anyway. There was no point in arguing verbally. As soon as Jiang Fei handed over the complete set of weapons, Han Tianyu and the Chinese military would immediately teach the major rice exporting country's fleet a lesson on how to be respectful. Chapter 742, Aerial Scalpel After the first day of duels ended, Han Tianyu reported the results to the military and also gave Jiang Fei a call. How did it go? Jiang Fei asked. How else can it go? We won, of course. This kind of battle makes us a bully. The major rice exporting country's battle aircraft was like a blind man waiting for us to kill him. Our battle aircraft took him down in seconds. Han Tianyu said happily. That's not what I meant to ask. Jiang Fei rolled his eyes. If Planet Namek's advanced battle aircraft lost the battle, it would have been ridiculous. Oh! Oh! The major rice exporting country reacted as we had predicted. As we did not show our true abilities, they are probably finding ways to decode our perfect invisibility effect," Han Tianyu answered. All right. Let them take their time to find out. The longer they take, the better. Jiang Fei nodded. The thing China needed the most right now was time. Whether it was making the supreme androids or preparing planet name at gunpower, both required a lot of time. Therefore, Jiang Fei would be happier if the major rice exporting country decided to extend the period of dueling. Due to the time needed to modify the battle aircraft, the second match was postponed by the major rice exporting country. The excuse they used was that they needed to investigate China's cheating incident. Therefore, the duel was delayed by two days. China's military was naturally against the request and even insulted the major rice exporting country. On the other hand, Jiang Fei was very free over the next two days. 
During the day, he would spend time with Si Tying and Ariel. In the evening, he would spend time with the girls in the game apart from fighting in the competition. After two days, the major rice exporting country was finally done with modifying the battle aircraft. The completed battle aircraft was transported to Tokyo. After removing a lot of the weapon setups, the new battle aircraft's movement speed was increased by 50%. The major rice exporting country's pilot very confidently assured Robert that, as long as their aircraft could detect China's battle aircraft first, they would be able to win with certainty. With the pilot's assurance, Robert was able to relax somewhat. He was under a lot of pressure because of their previous failure in the duel. Eagle 2, Eagle 2, Robert's exploration vessel has already arrived at the designated area, Eagle 2, affirmative. Please provide radar protection and information on the enemy, we are currently scanning the area for signs of the enemy. Currently, there is no sign of the enemy's vessels. What's going on? Did the Chinese not send any of their warships for support? Robert frowned. Perhaps the enemy had sacrificed a lot more in order to perfect their battle aircraft's invisibility. One of the officers said. What do you mean? Robert asked. I am guessing that the Chinese battle aircraft is able to have such perfect invisibility because the aircraft absorbs all electromagnetic waves. Although this allows it to avoid radars completely, it also means that they lose all communication. Since their communication devices do not work at all, they naturally do not need supporting warships. The officer explained. Oh. Robert was still not convinced entirely. However, the officer's analysis was very reasonable. Unfortunately, they trust too much in the invisibility of their battle aircraft. The officer laughed. At the same time, China's battle aircraft was also communicating with the control center on the mainland. Falcon 2 has identified the target. Should I destroy it immediately, Falcon 2, proceed as planned, yes. Falcon 2 understands, after receiving the command, China's battle aircraft tilted to one side and changed directions immediately. It went past the major rice exporting country's aircraft. Due to the 3,000 meter difference in height and the amazing invisibility effect, the major rice exporting country's battle aircraft and exploration vessel did not notice it at all. After getting behind the major rice exporting country's battle aircraft, the Chinese aircraft made a 180 degree turn and started charging towards its enemy. In the blink of an eye, it arrived at the same altitude as the major rice exporting country's battle aircraft. Right then, China's battle aircraft was directly behind the major rice exporting country's battle aircraft. If it opened fire now, the major rice exporting country's battle aircraft would be absolutely destroyed. For X speed. This was the maximum speed that the nuclear energy supply could allow. Although it consumed a lot of energy, it allowed the battle aircraft to reach its maximum speed. Originally, China's battle aircraft made with Planet Namex technology was already much faster than the major rice exporting country's aircraft. Now that there was a 4x speed boost, the distance between the two battle aircraft very quickly narrowed. Ha! Come on, let's get closer! Just as the distance between the two battle aircraft had shortened to less than 1,000 meters, the Chinese pilot did something drastic. The Chinese battle aircraft lowered its altitude slightly and was positioned just below the major rice exporting country's aircraft. The two battle aircraft were close enough to touch each other. The Chinese battle aircraft's sharp vertical stabilizer was pointed right at the center of the major rice exporting country's battle aircraft. Ha <laughs> ha! Darn Caucasian, open up! As the pilot shouted excitedly, his battle aircraft sliced through the major rice exporting country's aircraft. The enemy's aircraft has been discovered, where? The major rice exporting country's pilot did not notice anything on his own radar. Behind you. No. Right in front of you. Before the exploration vessel could transmit the message, an alarm had gone off in the major rice exporting country's battle aircraft. Beep. Beep. The engine has been damaged. The plane will lose all flight capabilities immediately, lock onto the target. The major rice exporting country's pilot tried to stabilize the aircraft whilst locking onto the Chinese battle aircraft in front of him. 
radar system has been destroyed. Unable to lock onto target, fire the missiles. The pilot pressed on a button. A normal missile had a short distance firing range. However, as it had its own infrared tracking system, it did not need to lock onto a target prior to being fired. The firing arm has been damaged. It's stuck, losing all flight abilities. Pilot, please eject yourself immediately. As the Chinese battle aircraft had flown past the major rice exporting country's aircraft at a high speed underneath it, the sharp vertical stabilizer acted like a knife which sliced through the center of the major rice exporting country's aircraft. Therefore, not only was the aircraft's engine destroyed, but its firing bay was also destroyed. In the final two seconds, the major rice exporting country's pilot could do nothing but look at the various emergency lights in the cabin. Bang! The pilot instantly ejected himself from the cabin. The battle aircraft wavered as it had lost its flight abilities and eventually fell into the ocean. At the same time, the Chinese pilot had already turned off the speed booster and was returning to his base at a speed which conserved the most amount of energy. Eagle 2 Eagle Please answer if you can hear us. The sudden termination in communication urged Robert to call out for the pilot. This is the exploration vessel. Eagle 2 has already been destroyed. At the same time, the exploration vessel responded to Robert's call. How is that possible? Robert's mind went blank. He was already under a lot of pressure from his previous failure. He could not believe that they lost yet again. He could vaguely picture the country's defense department requesting for his resignation. Chapter 743, Receiving Modification, What Exactly Happened? Robert was going mad. Commander, I am not sure yet. We will have to wait for the pilot and the black box to be retrieved. One of the officers said. Phew, Robert let out a long sigh. He knew there was no point in making a fuss or being worried. There was nothing they could do until the pilot and the black box were found. By the afternoon, both the pilot and the black box had been retrieved. What happened? Robert charged into the pilot's room. He did not even bother asking the pilot about his injuries. Instead, he was more concerned with how the Chinese battle aircraft had become so powerful. I don't know. He was like a ghost that suddenly appeared behind me. He then started speeding up. It was insane. I didn't even have time to react before the aircraft was split into two halves. The pilot looked equally dumbfounded. Was the Chinese battle aircraft very fast? Robert asked with a frown. Very fast. Not the normal kind of fast. It had at least twice of our flying speed. It could go even faster with a speed booster. The pilot said as he tried to recall what he saw. Soon enough, the black box had also been opened. The data recorded within proved the pilot's words to be true. The Chinese battle aircraft had appeared without a sign and suddenly increased its speed to cut the major rice exporting country's aircraft wide open. Incredible invisibility effect and amazing flying speed, but unarmed with long distance gun power? What kind of a freak plane is this? Robert frowned. Commander, what about tomorrow's duel? An officer asked carefully. Postpone it, Robert said. For how long? The officer asked again. Until we figure out a strategy. Robert was getting impatient. If China's battle aircraft were truly strong, and if they really had at least a hundred of those aircraft like Han Tianyu had said, the major rice exporting country would not have an upper hand in the aerial battle. Without full control of the air, even the naval battle would be affected. If that were the case, the major rice exporting country could forget about getting on land. While the major rice exporting country's military scratched their heads to figure out a strategy, China started their verbal attacks. After all, China was happy with the delay. The longer the delay, the better. For the next few days, the major rice exporting country was bombarded with Jiang Fei's plan of verbal abuse. However, Jiang Fei himself carried on with his life in a leisurely manner. After hearing from Han Tianyu about their progress, and the fact that the major rice exporting country had withdrawn their naval fleet to a nearby dock, 
Jiang Fei was confident that they would reclaim the right to initiate in a few days. With the loss of the second duel, the major rice exporting country became much quieter. Jiang Fei, on the other hand, picked up his pace at work. This time, he was occupied with work that was completely personal. Over the past few days, 0541 had already figured out the compositions required to design Si Taing's potions and had promptly produced them. Right now, the two bottles of potions were in Jiang Fei's hands. The yellow potion was used to establish one's energy system. The other transparent potion was meant to establish one's energy regenerating system. Come on, drink this first, Jiang Fei said after calling Si Taing into his room. Will this potion give me powers? Si Taing asked curiously. This is only one of them. Jiang Fei laughed. Is it bitter? After receiving the potion from Jiang Fei, Si Taing asked with a concerned tone. Don't worry. This one has a fruity flavor. Jiang Fei gave Si Taing a reassuring look. He knew what it tasted like because he had also drunk it previously. Oh! Si Taing immediately opened the bottle to drink the potion when she heard that it had a fruity flavor. It tastes pretty good. Si Taing smiled at Jiang Fei. She then asked, Am I like one of you now? As she spoke, Si Taing even stretched out her hands and legs. However, she could not feel anything different. She was doing exactly the same thing Jiang Fei did when he first drank the potion. Hold on. It's not done yet. Jiang Fei said as he passed Si Taing the bottle of transparent liquid. Is this a fruity flavor as well? Si Taing asked. This tastes more like strong alcohol. It's a little intense. Drink it slowly, Jiang Fei said. Strong alcohol? That's nothing. Si Taing did not mind at all as she opened the bottle and drank it all down in a single gulp. As the daughter of the boss of a group of gangsters, she had plenty of experience in drinking. Eh, Jiang Fei suddenly felt embarrassed for his old self for being such a weakling when she saw how well Si Taing took it. Wow! This tastes so good. It feels very warm. Not only did Si Taing not complain about the strong alcohol taste, she even gave compliments for its good flavor. All right, have a good rest while the energy is being established in your body. Don't move around too much. Your energy levels will be unstable. I don't want you to destroy my room. Jiang Fei warned as he was well aware of the adjustment needed after acquiring so much energy. All right. Si Taing stood still and quietly when she heard Jiang Fei's words. She could feel bouts of energy moving around in her body which then concentrated near her abdomen. Finally, she could feel all the energy turning into a small vortex. What level of capabilities do I have now? Si Taing asked curiously. Beginner stage level 2. Jiang Fei answered. Si Taing's newly established energy gave her the same capabilities as what Jiang Fei had when he first drank the potion. Beginner stage level 2? Does that mean I can defeat 20 to 30 special soldiers? Si Taing's eyes lit up. She had heard about this from Shang Guanqi. Si Taing used to be weaker than even the special soldiers and could not possibly defeat one of them. However, she could now fight against at least 20 of them at once. Si Taing was overjoyed by that fact. Don't get too cocky. Having a higher level does not make you stronger. If your fighting techniques are not as strong, you will still be bullied. Jiang Fei was worried Si Taing might be too full of herself. Therefore, he gave her a fair warning to calm her down. Oh! I will work hard to train myself. Si Taing nodded. Oh yeah, 0541, could you give her some martial arts techniques? Jiang Fei asked 0541. After all, the fastest way for Si Taing to learn was to have the techniques transferred to her memory. That won't be an issue. I will only need to set up a mind transferring device. 0541 answered. All right, go ahead. Also, design a special set of martial arts techniques for her. Jiang Fei ordered. As you wish, Captain. 
0541 immediately started designing martial arts techniques in the Spatial Rings Data Handling Center. Little Ing, try to be more gentle during this period. When you have time, learn some martial arts from Shang Guanqi. I will get some more potions from my master to increase your capabilities. Jiang Fei said to see Taing after making the necessary arrangements with 0541. Chapter 744, Keeping Doomsday for its Flesh, Thereafter, Jiang Fei requested for Shang Guangqi's help to look after Si Taing and also to protect his parents. After Jiang Fei's parents returned home, he talked to them for a while. The next morning, Jiang Fei left home with Ariel. They were both headed for Tokyo. With Ariel's presence, Jiang Fei no longer needed to travel with the gigantic sword. With instant teleportation, the two appeared in Tokyo in the blink of an eye. However, by then, Tokyo was already a piece of barren land with nothing but torn down buildings. Tokyo had been thoroughly destroyed by the major rice exporting country's fleet. Tokyo was practically a non existent city right now. The miserable citizens had all hid in rural areas. In order to survive, they needed to work for the major rice exporting country's fleet in exchange for food and basic necessities. When the mutants and the Japanese started the war, most of Tokyo's males were already forced to accept modification. Therefore, most of the survivors of the war were women and children. Most of the survivors in Tokyo already faced a lack of food and water. They could not even ensure their own survival. But in order to make sure of their families, these Tokyo women had no choice but to offer their services to the soldiers from the major rice exporting country in exchange for food. As the soldiers from the major rice exporting country were occupants of Tokyo, they lived very comfortably. However, ever since the two defeats against China in the battle aircraft duel, their morale had been greatly affected. Since then, they had diverted their dissatisfaction toward the laborers in Tokyo. When Jiang Fei and Ariel arrived at Tokyo, they noticed a lot of the soldiers visiting the Tokyo refugees with cans of dog food. Clearly, they were looking for laborers in exchange for dog food. That's so pitiful, Ariel said, filled with empathy for the laborers. The Japanese would not have experienced this if they had not tried to dominate the world with their biotechnology. Jiang Fei shook his head as he spoke. Should we help them? Ariel asked. We won't be able to help all of them, Jiang Fei shook his head. Although Tokyo had suffered massive losses from the war, there were at least tens of thousands of survivors. Jiang Fei and Ariel alone would not be able to help everyone. Moreover, if they killed the major rice exporting country's soldiers, their government would definitely seize all communications within the island. By then, these special trades would also be terminated and there might be even more casualties from the famine. To be honest, if Han Tianyu was there, he would have thought that Jiang Fei and Ariel were too concerned for their own good. In fact, even the citizens of Tokyo were not bothered by what was going on. Even the men who had survived encouraged their wives or sisters to become laborers. After all, this was not the first time something similar happened. Over a century ago, Tokyo was once bombed by North America and had experienced almost the same thing. However, things were not as bad before. After a hundred years of suppression, the Japanese decided to retaliate against their master after acquiring the biotechnology. The consequences were undeniably saddening. After taking the biotechnology away, the major rice exporting country bombed Tokyo yet again and even took over their land completely. Now, the citizens of Tokyo would have to suffer their fate as slaves yet again. Let's go. We're not here to fight. Jiang Fei pulled Ariel along and headed toward Apple Hill where Doomsday was located. As 0541 had a very precise locator, Jiang Fei and Ariel very easily found the entrance which Jiang Fei had destroyed previously. After entering the volcano, Jiang Fei found somewhere sheltered to retrieve his earth mover. The two of them stepped into it and started digging toward Doomsday. As Jiang Fei only destroyed the outer parts of the passage, the earth mover was able to dig its way into the tunnel very quickly. After keeping the earth mover away, Jiang Fei drew out his Jean Lu sword. Bring this with you. If it tries anything funny, hit him with this. Jiang Fei handed the Jean Lu sword over to Ariel. All right. 
I know what to do. Ariel nodded. Be careful. Don't hurt yourself. Jiang Fei said. Don't worry. Ariel smiled sweetly at Jiang Fei. Okay. Go ahead. Just get one of its tentacles. It'll be waiting for you here. Jiang Fei did not plan to accompany Ariel into where Doomsday hid itself. Although Doomsday had entered a state of hibernation, it would definitely wake up when Ariel cut its flesh. Despite Ariel being much stronger, its spirit attack would still affect Jiang Fei. Even if 0541 could protect Jiang Fei, it would cost Jiang Fei energy which he was not willing to spare. Okay. Ariel answered as she walked down the tunnel with the Jean Lu sword. Although the temperature was very high as they were very close to the Earth's core, it did not affect Ariel who had level 5 capabilities. After walking approximately 20 minutes, Ariel finally saw Doomsday. Ah! Oh, that's gross! Ariel covered her mouth as she stared at Doomsday with a disgusted expression. Although some time had passed, Doomsday's flesh still looked the same as before. Its pink flesh was still visible and its entire body looked like a giant piece of rotten meat. Most men would feel goosebumps from just looking at it, let alone women. Hey! If you continue to pretend like you are sleeping, I am going to kill you. Ariel shouted at Doomsday. Although they did not share a common language, Ariel was able to communicate with it through her spirit energy. Have you come to kill me? Doomsday asked in a frightened tone. It had initially planned to pretend as if it was sleeping so that it could fight back once Ariel got close enough. However, it did not expect Ariel to have the ability to communicate with her spirit energy. Since she had already seen through its pretense, it had no choice but to respond. I am too lazy to do that. Give me one of your tentacles. Ariel did not even want to get close to the disgusting fellow. What are you trying to do? Doomsday was stunned. It could tell that Ariel was also level 5. However, it did not know why Ariel had come. If she was here to kill it, it would of course not diminish its own power by harming itself. Cut the crap. I don't like staying here. Ariel stared at Doomsday as she started transferring energy into the Jean Lu sword. Buzz! The Jean Lu sword started ringing as odd energy waves emitted from it. God! God blade! Doomsday was nearly in tears. It was too heavily injured to move. An expert at the equal level was already sufficient to end its life. Now that Ariel even had the Jean Lu sword, it basically had zero chance of survival. I only want one of your tentacles. Will you give it to me? Ariel asked as she waved the Jean Lu sword. Yes. Doomsday answered immediately. As a level 5 expert could not be killed, it technically still had the right to bargain with Ariel. The worst that could happen was that it would get beaten up by Ariel. However, now that Ariel held the Jean Lu sword in her hand, it was actually possible for Doomsday as a level 5 expert to be killed. Therefore, with its life on the line, Doomsday had no choice but to surrender. Chapter 745, Rules of Level 5, Wham! Without needing Ariel to make a move, Doomsday chopped off one of its own tentacles and carefully used its spirit energy to carry it toward Ariel. You! That's so gross! If not for my husband, I would not even touch such a disgusting thing. Ariel said as she looked at the tentacle in disdain. Although it was only one tentacle, it was two meters long and was as thick as a human's thigh. Moreover, it was one of the thinnest tentacles on Doomsday. Despite that, it was sufficient for Jiang Fei to use for a long while. All right. Go back to sleep. I will look for you if I need anything else. Ariel said as she turned around and walked away. She carried the tentacle with her soul energy as she did so. Right then, Doomsday was close to tears. It had come to the Earth's core to absorb energy in order to heal itself. However, it had barely recovered enough energy for a single tentacle and it had lost it just like that. Therefore, when it heard that Ariel planned on returning, it had thoughts of killing itself. Clearly, these people were treating it like a poultry animal and would cut its meat off once in a while. However, it was still a beast that feared death. 
therefore, it did not have the courage to kill itself. Despite that, it was also too heavily injured to move around. Therefore, it could only hope that Ariel would not come by in the near future. Once it recovered enough energy, it would run away. Ariel soon brought the tentacle back to Jiang Fei. Husband, is this enough? If it isn't, I could get some more. Ariel smiled sweetly at Jiang Fei. It's enough. Jiang Fei nodded. Doomsday was very precious to Jiang Fei. He did not want to accidentally kill it. After all, a living Doomsday would be Jiang Fei's never-ending source of biosample. After keeping Doomsday's tentacle in his spatial ring, Jiang Fei relaxed somewhat. The rest was up to 0541. With Doomsday's tentacle in possession, there would be more than enough bio samples for the creation of level 4 bio humans on top of the bio potions Jiang Fei and Si Taing needed. Here, I'm returning this to you. I don't like this stuff. Ariel handed the Jean Lu sword back to Jiang Fei. The aura of Valium it emitted was very appalling for her. Hee hee, you must be the only level 5 expert who dislikes the god blade. Jiang Fei laughed as he kept the Jean Lu sword away in his spatial ring. Although the aura of Valium displeased metahumans in general, the god blade was the most desired possession amongst all level 5 metahumans. As it was the only thing that could threaten the life of a level 5 expert, owning a god blade would greatly increase one's chances of survival. The level 5 experts who did not own god blades chose to live in hiding because they were either bored of living the common life or they were trying to avoid the god blade. Moreover, the god blades were all left behind on Earth after Braveheart's crash. As the god blades were created based on Planet Namex technology, the designs were very odd and inappropriate for human usage. Therefore, they were not suitable to be used in battles. Normally, a level 5 expert would dominate another level 5 before he used the god blade to execute his opponent. Very few would actually use the god blade in a one on one battle. As the god blades were not designed for battles on Earth, anyone who used them would potentially harm himself during a battle, which only made things worse. The only god blade which was suitable to be used in battle was the one which Jiang Fei possessed. Therefore, that particular god blade was virtually priceless. The fact that Ariel was willing to return it to Jiang Fei without hesitation proved how much she cared for him. After acquiring Doomsday's tentacle, Jiang Fei could leave Tokyo in peace. For the sake of secrecy, Jiang Fei decided to bury the entrance which his earth mover had dug. After all, Ariel had already traveled there. She would be able to teleport directly to where Doomsday was in the future. There was no point in keeping the passage intact. 0541, can I reach level 5 if I drink another potion? Jiang Fei asked after he had acquired Doomsday's tentacle. He had already gotten used to the powers of Pinnacle level 4. Moreover, he had plenty of energy crystals to spare. Therefore, he naturally wanted to try breaking through to level 5. Captain, you think too much. It's not that easy to reach level 5. Firstly, we do not have a lot of energy left. It won't be enough for you to break through to level 5. Even if there was enough energy, I still would not recommend that you immediately break through to level 5. 0541 answered. Why not? Jiang Fei asked. Level 5 is a very special tier. It involves a set of rules that apply even to Ariel. If you do not comprehend the rules on your own and instead forcefully reach level 5 through energy infusion, it will be difficult for you to progress further. 0541 explained. I see. Jiang Fei nodded. Ariel was in such a state whereby she could no longer increase her capabilities. As her body once belonged to Phoenix who had been forcefully infused with energy to reach level 5, she did not comprehend the set of rules on her own. How can I comprehend the rules? Jiang Fei asked. I do not have related data for that. Level 5 experts are also a pinnacle existence in Planet Namek. Their related data would never be revealed to the public, 0541 said helplessly. Forget about it then. Well plan as we go. Jiang Fei shook his head. Although he was very eager to break through to level 5, he was in no hurry. He did not have enough energy to do so anyway. 
If Jiang Fei really could not comprehend the rules on his own, he could still decide to progress to level 5 after he had found the engine room. Let's go! Well return home. After acquiring Doomsday's tentacle, Jiang Fei had no reason to stay in Tokyo. There were nothing but ruined buildings and the survivors from the war against the major rice exporting country. All right. Ariel nodded obediently as she grabbed Jiang Fei's hand and initiated the teleportation. In the next second, Jiang Fei and Ariel appeared on the highest floor in Manda Square. Ever since Ariel appeared, Jiang Fei had not wasted any time in long distance traveling. The next day, 0541 had finished producing the first set of bio potions for sea tying. Although it was a single set of potions, it was actually only a small portion. The bio potion produced using a level 5 alien beast's blood contained a large amount of energy. Since this was sea tying's first time consuming it, 0541 only extracted a single drop of the primary potion and diluted it with water into a single bottle. This was to prevent C. Tying's body from exploding due to the massive amount of energy. This stuff doesn't taste bad. However, you will go through unimaginable pain afterward. Have you thought this through? Jiang Fei asked C. Tying with a serious expression. He had personally experienced the process and knew how much it would hurt. Chapter 746 Misunderstanding As long as you are by my side, I can bear any pain. Si Tying said as she looked deeply into Jiang Fei's eyes. Uh, that's so gross. Shang Guanqi could not stand the romance. She had been curious about the effects of the potion which claimed to be able to increase one's capabilities instantly, but she did not want to see the goings-on between Si Tying and Jiang Fei. Yikes! Sister Guanqi, you are horrible. You made fun of me. Although Si Tying was used to joking around with Jiang Fei, she was still embarrassed by Shang Guangqi's reaction. Come on. It'll be right by your side. Jiang Fei said as he tried to diffuse the awkwardness. He then handed Si Tying the bottle of potion. All right. Si Tying blushed with embarrassment. As she was also eager to change the topic, she immediately grabbed the bottle and chugged down the contents. It does taste fruity. Si Tying exclaimed. The sweet and sour taste of the potion was quite enjoyable. However, Jiang Fei knew that the true challenge had yet to come. Indeed, not too long after, Si Tying's facial expression changed. Jiang Fei, this feels horrible, Si Tying said bitterly as she squatted down. You must bear this on your own. If I tried to help you, it would only make things worse. Don't worry. I will accompany you until it's over. Jiang Fei held Si Tying's hand tightly as he spoke. Can we really not help her? Shang Guanqi said pitifully. Only those who bear the pain on their own can reap the rewards. Jiang Fei said without turning his head around. He was completely focused on Si Tying at the moment. Yikes! Shang Guanqi sighed. Although she could not imagine the amount of pain Si Tying was going through, she began to envision everything she had experienced growing up. If she had a choice, she would rather go through all this pain on her own than hurt the people around her. Ah, Si Tying finally shouted out loudly as she could no longer contain the pain within herself. Ariel, do something. Jiang Fei turned around to look at Ariel. All right. Ariel nodded as she created a seclusion to prevent Si Tying's sound from being heard beyond Jiang Fei's room. Although Jiang Fei's parents were not home, he did not want to risk them worrying once they returned as the painful process Si Tying was going through would not end anytime soon. Just as Jiang Fei did in the past, Si Tying would have to go through the pain. The pain was what strengthened her soul so that both her soul and body could handle the change in her powers. After some time had passed, Jiang Fei's mother returned from grocery shopping. Shang Guanqi and Ariel left the room to help her out in the kitchen while Jiang Fei continued to accompany Si Tying in his room. After approximately an hour, Si Tying's suffering finally ended. Jiang Fei, am I still alive? Si Tying was soaked in her own sweat. Of course, you are alive and well. Jiang Fei brushed his hand against Si Tying's pale face gently. He looked at her compassionately. 
Have I acquired new powers? Si Tang felt very happy when she saw Jiang Fei's look of concern. However, she was much more concerned with something else. Of course. You have obtained level 3 powers. Jiang Fei said as he kissed Si Tang's forehead. Really? Si Tang was in a state of disbelief. Although the pain had nearly killed her, she had acquired such a tremendous amount of growth in a short span of time. It was all worth it. Absolutely. Once you recover your strength, you will be able to feel it. Jiang Fei hugged Si Tang as he said, Jiang Fei, could you ask Shang Wanchi to come over? I would like to take a shower, Si Tang said with a blush. Due to the pain she felt earlier, Si Tang had rolled around the floor and was drenched in sweat. She was in terrible pain from the huge amount of energy channeled into her body. More importantly, she did not want to show Jiang Fei her terrible state. That was why she was keen to take a shower right away. However, her body was exhausted from going through all the pain. She could not even sit up on her own, let alone take a shower. Therefore, she could only ask for Shang Guangqi's help. All right. It'll go immediately. Jiang Fei nodded. He then walked out from his room and called for Shang Guangqi in the kitchen. Ah Fei, don't worry. It'll be able to fight with you in battles very soon. Si Tang thought to herself as she looked at Jiang Fei from behind. How's Little Ling doing? Shang Guanqi asked softly when she saw Jiang Fei quietly sneaking around. She's fine. The test of the potion is already over. She is completely exhausted now and would need your help to take a shower. Jiang Fei smiled. Has she really acquired a lot of power? Shang Guanqi asked curiously. Definitely. Once she recovers tomorrow, the energy level in her body would reach beginner level 3. Jiang Fei answered. As Si Taing was a girl, 0541 did not dare to give her as high a dosage as it had given Jiang Fei which allowed him to reach beginner level 4 immediately. Jiang Fei's body quality was unique. Although he used to be a geek with a weak body, he had a shocking willpower which surpassed anyone else's. One might also say that he has strong soul energy which was not apparent elsewhere except for when he had to accept a lot of pain. Basically, he was a tough nut to crack. That was why Jiang Fei was able to consume a large amount of potions to increase his capabilities swiftly. If Si Tang had been subject to equally high dosages, she might have fainted in the process. That was a dangerous aspect of consuming such potions. Once a person fainted in the process, there was a possibility that his or her soul might be destroyed. Could you give me a bottle of that as well? Shang Guanqi asked all of a sudden. Ah. Jiang Fei was stunned. If I train with conventional methods, there is little chance that I would break through to advanced level 4 before the age of 30. Since you have a shortcut, I would like to try it out, Shang Guanqi said as she stared into Jiang Fei's eyes. 0541, can she use this potion? Jiang Fei did not immediately answer Shang Guanqi. Instead, he sought for 0541's advice. Jiang Fei and Si Tang had both acquired energy through Planet Namex potions. Therefore, Jiang Fei was not sure if the potions would be suitable for Shang Guanqi. In theory, that is possible. However, as no tests had been done prior, I cannot confirm whether there would be any side effects. 0541 answered. That, Jiang Fei hesitated when he heard 0541's reply. He truly treated Shang Guanqi as his older sister. Therefore, he would not want to experiment on her. If something went wrong, he would feel terribly guilty. What's the matter? If the potion is too precious, then forget it. Shang Guanqi clearly misunderstood Jiang Fei's intention. Chapter 747 An Inexplicable Situation It's not a matter of whether the potion is precious or not. The key issue is that you are different from us. I can't guarantee that there won't be any side effects from drinking this potion, Jiang Fei knew Shang Guanqi had misunderstood him and therefore tried to clarify the situation. Different? Shang Guanqi was obviously still confused. I don't know if you have heard. 
Old Man High had previously checked my body and said that my veins have been sealed and would not be able to practice martial arts. However, my master used potions to create an energy recycling system in my body. That's how I am able to have energy like you. Zhang Fei said truthfully. I see. Zhang Guanqi nodded. Although she could not prove that everything he said was true, Si Taing was a living example before her. Therefore, Jiang Fei's explanation was very believable. Moreover, she had also spent a lot of time with Jiang Fei and knew that Jiang Fei was not a stingy person. He must have had concerns for her safety before deciding not to give her the potions. If that's the case, forget about it. Although Shang Guanqi was a little disappointed, she was not too bothered. Her body quality was already pretty good. Although level 5 was far out of reach for her, she could still reach intermediate level 4 over time. Therefore, she did not want to face unknown risks out of her own sense of urgency. Could you please help Lilling to take a shower? I will teach her a set of techniques in two days. However, I don't have time to practice with her. I'll need your help with that, Jiang Fei said to Shang Guanqi. As he already treated her as his own sister, he did not beat around the bush with his request. All right. Go help mother out in the kitchen. Shang Guanqi nodded. Be careful with her. She is completely exhausted. Jiang Fei reminded yet again. You're very annoying. Stop following me. Do you plan on taking a peek? Shang Guanqi rolled her eyes at Jiang Fei. Eh. Jiang Fei turned around speechlessly. He then shrugged and said in a soft voice, that wouldn't be a bad idea, although Jiang Fei spoke very softly, Shang Guanqi was a level 4 expert and the two were not very far apart. Therefore, Jiang Fei's words were clearly audible to her. You little bastard. Shang Guanqi mumbled as she walked into Jiang Fei's room to look after Si Taing. Husband, if you would like to see, I could sneak over at night, since Shang Guanqi heard Jiang Fei's soft voice. Ariel who was a level 5 expert could as well. Therefore, when Jiang Fei's mother was not paying attention, Ariel quietly sneaked behind Jiang Fei and whispered into his ear. Oh darn! My image of a being a gentleman is gone! Jiang Fei shuddered. He did not dare to respond to Ariel. He then quickly pulled Ariel into the kitchen to help his mother out. Clearly, Jiang Fei had thought about what she said. As a hot-blooded young man, Jiang Fei had physical desires as any normal young man would. Therefore, he was definitely tempted by Ariel's suggestion. However, as a true geek, he did not have the guts. Firstly, he was still living with his parents. If his parents found out, he would not know how to explain himself. Jiang Fei's mother may be quite open-minded but his father was not. Moreover, Jiang Fei had the key consideration of Isabella. She had not even been resurrected yet. If she found out that her man had lost his virginity to someone else, she might get very upset. Therefore, Jiang Fei convinced himself that he needed to keep his virginity. During dinner, Jiang Fei's parents noticed that Si Taing was behaving abnormally. Jiang Fei's father would glance at Jiang Fei occasionally while his mother's gaze shifted between him and Si Taing. Si Taing blushed the whole time and barely ate anything. Whilst cleaning up, Jiang Fei's mother whispered to him softly, Little Fei, I know you are not a normal human. However, you still need to look after Si Taing. Look at her. She seemed so exhausted. Why don't you be more gentle with her, mother? It's not what you think, Jiang Fei was close to tears. When he saw how Shang Guanqi had carried Si Taing back to her room, Jiang Fei realized why his parents had looked at him with such odd expressions. All right. Your mother isn't an old-fashioned person. I will speak to your father about it. However, you need to stop torturing Little Ling. Go ahead. Spend more time with her. Jiang Fei's mother spoke as she pushed him out of the kitchen. It's really not what you think. Jiang Fei felt as if he had been wrongly judged. Jiang Fei took a look around the house. Shang Guanqi and Si Taing had already returned to their room. His father was still sitting quietly in the living room. Jiang Fei had not even clarified things with his mother. 
If he approached his father now, he might get scolded before he even said anything. I should get out of their way. Jiang Fei finally decided to sneak back into his room. Ariel had originally planned on going with Jiang Fei into his room. However, Jiang Fei saw his father's angry stare as they were about to enter his room and instead brought Ariel over to where the other ladies were instead. Oh my god! I am in a truly inexplicable situation. Jiang Fei sighed on his bed. Oh, right. 0541, how is C. Tying's martial arts technique coming along? Jiang Fei suddenly recalled. After all, C. Tying had already drank the potion. Once her body recovered, she would have level 3 capabilities. It would only be appropriate if she knew some martial arts techniques as well. I predict that it would be complete by noon the day after tomorrow. 0541 answered. What about the technological equipment? Jiang Fei asked. They'll be complete in two more days. 0541 answered. All right, good. Good. Jiang Fei noted. Han Tianyu's tactic of delaying the war was working very well. The major rice exporting country had taken eight days to complete two duels. By the time the third duel was over, Jiang Fei would be able to hand over the orders. Once the major rice exporting country realized what was going on, China would have completed the preparations for war. Captain, we should produce some biohumans to expand your capabilities. 0541 said. How long does it take to produce one of the biohumans? Jiang Fei asked. An advanced level 4 biohuman would require 7 days whereas a pinnacle level 4 would require 10 days. However, there are 25 incubation rooms in the bioexperimental laboratory. Therefore, we could produce all 25 at the same time. 0541 said. If that's the case, produce 24 advanced level 4S and 1 pinnacle level 4, Jiang Fei said after some thought. As you wish, Captain. 0541 immediately started carrying out Jiang Fei's command. Chapter 748 how to choose a girl, after arranging things with 0541, Jiang Fei entered the game. Unlike the past few days during which Jiang Fei had a leisurely time in the game, he was now assigned with a special task. 0541 had started work in the biofactory. In 7 to 10 days, the first batch of biohumans would be produced. However, if souls were not transferred to those biohumans immediately, new souls would form within them. If that happened, the biohumans would be out of control like how Phoenix was. Therefore, Jiang Fei's primary objective in the game today was to select the man-made souls he needed. Although there were many ladies around Jiang Fei, none of them were as developed as Ariel and Isabella. Despite many of them having reached the infatuated state with Jiang Fei, they lacked love and willingness to sacrifice and could not be considered humans yet. However, According to 0541, these ladies were highly advanced artificial souls despite not being perfect man-made souls. China's military was able to start producing supreme androids because they lowered the standards for usage and not because they had found a way to create perfect man-made souls. At the moment, the man-made souls that the Chinese military used were not as advanced as the ladies around Jiang Fei and were far more inferior to Isabella and Ariel. However, they were sufficient to be used to operate the androids in battle. China could not afford to look into the details due to pressure from the major rice exporting country and the impending war. According to 0541's categorization, the only perfect souls amongst Jiang Fei's ladies were Ariel and Isabella, followed by Silphi, Huamolan, and Saint of the Light Nina. The Naga priestesses were classified as level 3 followed by members of the Saint's Guard and finally the female Yetis. Among these ladies, as Ariel and Isabella had already reached the perfect level, they were basically identical to normal humans. Silphi, Huamolan, and Nina had also spent a lot of time with Jiang Fei and therefore had very high evolution levels. As Jiang Fei had killed the evil god Solon, he won over the hearts of the Naga priestesses. Although Jiang Fei spent the least amount of time with these female Nagas, they had evolved very quickly due to their infatuated and admired states toward Jiang Fei. 
Although the female yetis had also reached the infatuated state with Jiang Fei, they were created with very little intelligence. So, despite the state they were in with Jiang Fei, they could not really think for themselves and therefore evolved the least. Hence, members of the Saints Guard were classified as having a higher level than the female yetis despite only reaching the admire state with Jiang Fei. 0541, how should I select the first batch of souls? Jiang Fei was feeling conflicted. I suggest you choose some Naga priestesses as the first batch of souls. Of course, you could also choose from the Saints Guard. There would not be too much of a difference between these two options, 0541 answered. What's the reason for that? Jiang Fei asked as 0541 had a completely different answer from himself, though they did agree that the female yetis would be excluded due to their lack of intelligence. Despite that, 0541 had chosen the lowest level females apart from the female yetis which differed from Jiang Fei's thoughts. Captain I have given you the suggestion based on the best plan I could come up with. The reason being, 0541 started explaining. According to 0541, it was very difficult to achieve a perfect soul. Each soul that had a probability of developing into a perfect level was very precious. Based on current circumstances, Nina and Silphi were most likely to evolve into perfect souls, followed by Hua Mulan. As for the rest of the ladies, they had very little chance of achieving perfection. Therefore, 0541 did not want Jiang Fei to bring the three of them to the real world immediately. If he did, their evolution would end prematurely. Moreover, Jiang Fei would need perfect souls to create level 5 biohumans in the future. If he were to use the three best options right now, he would not be able to create level 5 experts even if he found the engine room in the future. Based on 0541's opinion, evolving a perfect soul was even more difficult than finding the engine room. Jiang Fei was able to acquire Ariel and Isabella who both had perfect souls entirely due to his luck. If that's the case, Jiang Fei nodded. Based on what 0541 said, he should not bring Hua Mulan and the rest out too soon as it would harm both the women and himself. What about the Naga priestesses and the saint's guard? Didn't you say that the Naga priestesses had a higher level? Jiang Fei asked. That's very hard to explain. It'll show you the data, 0541 said as it displayed a table for Jiang Fei. According to the combined data, Ariel and Isabella each had 10,000 points, which meant full scores. Silphi was next with 7,000 points while Nina had 6,000 points and Hua Mulan had close to 5,000 points. Hua Mulan had the least amount of points as she was created to be a female commander. Therefore, her logical thoughts dominated her emotional ones which explained why her level of evolution was the lowest. Apart from these three women who were at level 2, the first level 3 was Mirage who had a score of 450 points. The High Priestess had 400 points while a few of the other priestesses had around 200 points. The rest of them only had around 100 points which differed greatly from the other level 2 females. That was why 0541 said these people were virtually hopeless in reaching perfection. As for the level 4 members of the Saints Guard, each of them had around 10 points, however they were considered close to the level 3 females. According to 0541, if Jiang Fei spent time to develop relationships with them, their overall figures would surpass the other group of women. Chapter 749, Special Training, All right, in that case. Let's do it this way. Jiang Fei decided in his heart after listening to 0541's explanation. Since you have decided, you should make use of the limited time to help these man-made souls evolve, 0541 suggested. Oh, right. Why did you not mention Akit Series? Jiang Fei suddenly remembered he had another lady around. She's special. She's not suitable to be brought into the real world, 0541 said. Special? What's special about her? Jiang Fei asked, curious. Sorry, Captain. This has to do with Top Secret 7014. You do not have the right to ask about it at the moment, 0541 said blandly. Screw me! Again? Jiang Fei was stunned. 0541 had previously spoke about man-made souls in such a way. 
Jiang Fei had only acquired the rights to ask about Top Secret 093 after Isabella and Ariel had died and completed their evolution. I am sorry, Captain. I must follow the rules. 0541 said. Forget it. Jiang Fei shook his head. Although he was very curious about Akatsiri's secret, he did not want 0541 to go against the rules. Jiang Fei knew that 0541 could only be a good intelligent assistance system if it followed the rules. If 0541 could go against the rules, Jiang Fei should be worried. After all, 0541 was the only fellow who had access to all of Jiang Fei's secrets and weaknesses. As 0541 was regulated by the rules of Planet Namix Intelligent Assistance System, its programming would be terminated immediately if it went against the rules. Therefore, it must fulfill all its responsibilities to support Jiang Fei who was the captain. That was why Jiang Fei felt very secure about 0541. Seeing that he did not have any matches for the day, Jiang Fei went directly to the Demon Dragon Fortress after entering the game. At the Demon Dragon Fortress, the players from Imperial Dragon did not seem to be bothered by Jiang Fei's presence. They would simply greet him if they saw him. After all, Jiang Fei rarely participated in guild events despite being the guild master. The guild's operations were mostly regulated by a few of the executive vice guild masters. However, Jiang Fei would occasionally bring some of them along to complete quests which rewarded them greatly. That was also why the guild members loved and respected Jiang Fei so much. After returning to the Demon Dragon Fortress, Jiang Fei went to the back of the fortress. He had been meeting his women there for the past few days. Husband, you have come. Silphy ran over immediately. Eh. Where is Hua Mulan? Jiang Fei asked. Humph. Husband, you are biased. All you think about is Mulan. You do not even miss me, Silphy said as she tugged at Jiang Fei's arm. Of course I miss you. Why else would I come over to you immediately? Jiang Fei had become skilled at flirting with women after such a long period of training. TSK. You are such a sweet talker. Silphy exclaimed. However, she could not hide what she felt as her facial expression showed how happy she truly was. Master, were you looking for me? Hua Mulan came over to Jiang Fei's side. Yeah. I have some stuff to discuss with you. Jiang Fei nodded. When he saw that the other ladies were arriving one after another, he decided to go right down to business. Otherwise, they would start disrupting the conversation and he would not be able to get his work done. Ah Fei, why are you looking for Sister Milan? Nina asked with a warm smile. She was like Ariel in terms of being liked by all of the women around Jiang Fei. However, unlike Ariel who was like a little sister to everyone, Nina was the exact opposite. She was like the big sister who looked after everyone else. Therefore, she was the most respected person amongst the group of women. Please choose 25 women from the Saints Guard and make one of them the group leader, Jiang Fei said to Hua Mulan. All right. After all, Hua Mulan was born into the military. She immediately went to work after receiving Jiang Fei's command. Husband, are you in trouble? Do you need our help? Silphy asked. I intend to bring them to my world to help me out. Jiang Fei did not hide the truth from them. What? I want to go too. Silphy objected. Master, bring us instead. We are much stronger than they are. We would be able to help you better. The High Priestess Chris chipped in. This has nothing to do with capabilities, Jiang Fei shook his head. It did not matter how strong these ladies were in the game as their powers had no effect in the real world. Jiang Fei had chosen the souls of the Saints Guard for a simple reason. The Nanda priestesses were excluded because they were overlords and could therefore assist Jiang Fei in the game. However, the members of the Saints Guard were only level 80 elites who could easily be destroyed on the battlefield. Therefore, Jiang Fei decided to bring them into the real world. Husband, we don't really understand what you mean, Silphy said with a pout. Let's put it this way. I have come to this world with my soul inhabiting this body. Likewise. 
you will also have to use your soul to inhabit another body in my world. Therefore, your strengths and weaknesses would not make a difference there. Moreover, once you go, you will never be able to return. Jiang Fei explained. Oh! I see. Silphi and the rest nodded. That's why I would rather those of you who are strong to remain in this world to help me out. Jiang Fei laughed as he spoke. All right. As long as we can help you. Silphi nodded seriously. Master, I have brought them over. Hua Mulan was very efficient. Right then, over twenty of the women stood before Jiang Fei. All right. Jiang Fei nodded as he looked at the female soldiers of the Saints' Guard. Master, this is my vice commander Hong Yu. I believe she is capable of leading the team, Hua Mulan said as she pointed at the first female soldier on her right. Great! I will need you all to follow me to complete some quests. Now, get ready. We will depart very soon. Jiang Fei said to the female soldiers. Yes. Master. As these members of the Saints' Guard had become Jiang Fei's private army, they were completely obedient toward him. In order for them to get used to my world, I need to give them some additional training. I won't be able to accompany the rest of you for a few days, Jiang Fei said apologetically to Nina and the other ladies. What kind of training is that? Can we come along? Silphi asked suspiciously. No! Jiang Fei shook his head and said determinately. As Jiang Fei's training was equivalent to deepening his relationship with these women, he could not possibly bring along the other group of women who would otherwise make things very complicated for him. Chapter 750, Completed Weapon, according to 0541's plan, Jiang Fei needed to bring the reputation level of these 25 women to the infatuated state. After that, he would have to spend more time with them to make sure they truly fall in love with him beyond the limitations of the system. That was the only way to stimulate the evolution of these women. Increasing reputation points was relatively easy for Jiang Fei. Although he could no longer complete quests to increase reputation points as they had already become his private army, Jiang Fei could still bring them along to fight against monsters which also contributed a lot to the point increase. Although the amount of reputation points earned through such a method was very little for others, it was not the case for Jiang Fei who had the title of Romeo. On top of that, Jiang Fei had also become very skilled in flirting with women after spending so much time around ladies. As such, all the women in the group had easily started falling for him. With the title of Romeo, Jiang Fei was akin to a celebrity to his female fans. Even simple questions like, are you tired, would make the ladies blush in front of him, unless of course if they were in any way like tomboys, then they would have rolled their eyes at him. In a few days' time, Jiang Fei had managed to bring the level of reputation of these women to infatuated toward himself. Everyone, including Hong Yu, was now looking at Jiang Fei with a loving expression. Phew! Thank goodness, when he saw that these women still knew how to control themselves, Jiang Fei sighed in relief. He was truly worried that these women would behave like the Nada priestesses who looked at him with a dominant gaze. It always seemed as if they would devour Jiang Fei in a heartbeat. Jiang Fei had chosen to bring the souls of the members of the Saints' Guard to his world partially because of this. After all, the Nanda priestesses were all too possessive. Each of them seemed to want to rape him forcefully. If he brought them to the real world, he was worried he might lose his virginity against his will. In comparison, these human females handpicked to be trained in the Saints' Guard were much more demure. Although they looked at Jiang Fei with an expression of love, they did not have any intention of invading his body. Come on! Phase 2, Jiang Fei scratched his head as he recalled 0541's plan. 0541's plan was very simple. Flirting with women sounded like a simple task after all. However, flirting with over 20 women at the same time was certainly no easy feat even a self-proclaimed womanizer like Han Tianyu might not be able to succeed at it. Over the next couple of days, apart from participating in matches, Jiang Fei worked on deepening his relationship with the 25 women. It seemed like Jiang Fei might actually have some talent in that area. They were falling more and more for Jiang Fei. 
Based on 0541S statistical analysis, the women's rate of evolution was much faster than initially expected. In just two days, their overall points had reached over 500 and were much higher than the Naga priestesses. Although Jiang Fei was having the time of his life in the game, he was much busier in the real world. Firstly, the batch of equipment he was meant to deliver to the Chinese military had already been completed. However, as the third aerial duel had not begun yet, Jiang Fei was in no hurry to hand the equipment over to the military. After all, he had told them it would take 20 days to produce. If he gave the equipment to them in only 10 days, the military might have stray thoughts about his capabilities. Since the major rice exporting countries' plans to go to war had already been delayed, Jiang Fei did not want to stir the pot further. Apart from the completion of the equipment, 0541 had also prepared the martial arts techniques specially designed for sea tying. Unlike Jiang Fei's harsh style of fighting, sea tying's martial arts techniques and skills were much more agile. Although the powers did not match Jiang Fei's origin force and thunder gale kick technique, they were much more agile, easily transformed, and therefore more appropriate for a lady. Little Ying, come with me, Jiang Fei said as he brought Ariel along into his room. Oh! Si Taing followed behind Jiang Fei. Shang Guanqi, on the other hand, walked into her own room. As a martial artist, Shang Guanqi knew that stealing techniques from others was a forbidden act. Although she was now Jiang Fei's sister, some rules still had to be adhered to. However, Shang Guanqi had clearly misunderstood Jiang Fei's intention. He had kept Shang Guanqi out of it mainly because he did not know how to explain the memory transfer technique to her. Within a few minutes, Si Taing would have had the techniques memorized thoroughly. Such advanced technology did not seem appropriate for martial artists. Although Jiang Fei had bared the truth about Braveheart to Han Tianyu, he was still not strong enough. Therefore, he did not want too many people to know about his secret. It was not that Jiang Fei did not trust Shang Guanqi. It was just too tough a secret to keep. The more people that knew about it, the harder it would be to keep it a secret. Ariel after Si Taing had entered Jiang Fei's room, Jiang Fei glanced at Ariel. All right. Ariel nodded as she waved her hand to create a zone of seclusion in the room. Bastard, have you been up to no good with Ariel? Tell me honestly, how many girls have you sexually harassed by doing this? Si Taing pointed at Jiang Fei's chest as she spoke. If you keep spewing nonsense, I will sexually harass you. Jiang Fei threatened jokingly. You're evil. Sister Ariel. He is bullying me. Si Taing hid behind Ariel as she laughed. All right. Stop fooling around. I have asked you to come in because I want to transfer martial arts techniques to you. Jiang Fei stopped smiling and said seriously. Oh! After playing around, Si Taing became serious again. After all, she treated the matter of capabilities with seriousness as well. Only after improving her capabilities would she be able to help Jiang Fei out. Otherwise, she would only be trapped at home with her worries and concerns. Relax your mind. No matter what happens, do not resist it, Jiang Fei said. What do you want to do? Si Taing suddenly stepped back, gripping her collars as if Jiang Fei was about to sexually harass her. Hey! Can you be serious, please? Jiang Fei said. Hee hee. Si Taing noticed that Jiang Fei was getting annoyed and therefore stood quietly in front of him immediately. All right. Do it. Jiang Fei nodded at Ariel. Thereafter, Ariel used her soul energy to hypnotize Si Taing in an instant. 